uh, the bracket here, continue on their run. And they're still on it, man. They're still on it, going strong, heist and simple. It's like it's it's like it's 2019. It's like uh, no, it's like nothing. 2020. 20, uh, 20. 2019. They weren't teaming yet, but it's just like it's 2020, and nobody wants to go back to that except to see except to see simple yeah, and heist. Can we go back to 2019? <laughs> can you imagine? Just for just for heist and for simple. no reason. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we've got plenty more tournament well, coming well up. Well fought, man. Well fought. Okay, what's coming up next? Speak, yeah, speaking of what's coming up next, it's TM and Delta versus <laughs> I can't see over you. It's a Ted and knees. Okay. Coming up next. Oh, and okay, I want your biased opinion. Who's gonna win this one? Well, if you look at PR, don't look at PR. We got a huge <laughs> discrepancy here. Don't Team and Delta, five is, and six on PR. Ted is clearly punching above his weight. He's on top of it, so yes. no, and nobody's worried about him. But uh, if I had to guess, dude, TM and Delta, and I'm not saying that just because of the PR. I'm saying that because they performed very you well in their last the, game. You were looking at the PR. Game. I was looking at the Ten PR. Ten of these performed excellent in their last game as well. Yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, hey, look, guys, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere because Winter Championship European Doubles is coming right back at you in just a minute. You find yourselves outside of town, but you sense danger. It's the Dark Warlock Volkov. A hero must rise up to meet this challenge. Who could it be? I will face this foe, the Great Jay Young. The Hero Blades levels up and unlocks new rewards. But the hero cannot defeat Volkov alone. I call upon my team of great adventurers. Sidra, the Beastmaster. Hugin, the Bard. And Kaya, the Cleric. They'll need items and familiars to succeed against the great Volkov. Now that the heroes are ready for battle, it's time to roll for initiative. And now the battle begins. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Adventure awaits in Brawlhalla's Battle Pass Season 7. It's all fun and games until someone rolls a one. Ah! Watch out! I got the cannonball! Ah! Oh, where's my cannon? Chad, ah! like, you have my cannon? Ah! Cannon? Ah! <laughs> you good? <laughs>
Welcome back, Brahala. The European Winter Championship Doubles Tournament is underway. We are in top eight. No, I mean, more accurately, like top four. No, top six. Top six. We're in top six right We're now. We're in the tippity top, dude. This, 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 is, this, is, this is the cream of the crop coming up here. And we've got TM and Delta versus Ted and Knees coming up right now. Thank you, Steve. We, let's get out of the way so everybody can see. Okay, TM and Delta versus Ted and Knees. Ted and Knees, they've been on quite a run here lately, but TM and Delta definitely got them beat when it comes down to the statistics. I'm yeah. talking about power rank number five and number six versus power rank 41? It's, yeah, don't, but Ted, don't dude, pay big, too much. Wait, yeah, yeah, wait where yeah, am no, I? No, no. Ted, big and we come know, up. Ted's big about to fly tournament. up in the power rankings yeah, 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 after yeah, this yeah. tournament no matter what. But Huge I, boost. I, I just, this could go either way. I'm excited about this one coming up. Personally, I'm a fan of TM and Delta on this one. I think they probably got this locked down. But I fully recognize Look that Ted and though. Knees have been kind of on an insane roll, and they, they certainly could win this. I mean, and you asked chat. Chat's, chat, chat's kind of split down the middle on this one. Yeah, 52-48. That's the tightest spread we've seen so far. Here we are, game one. Let's see who can come away with it. Delta, one of the last Bodvar holds out in the whole world, really, <laughs> at the top of the bracket. Oh, used, yeah. <laughs> it used to be, like, Man, dominated remember by when Bodvar's. Bodvar, yeah, Bodvar was, like, every pick, and we were like, what the heck? Every Bodvar tournament, was, like, the first legend. And every tournament was, seems to be, like, we get more and more legend and weapon diversity, which is great. That's, but that's a good thing. To see a Bodvar still holding it down, love to see that with the stop sign, nonetheless. Okay, yeah. Okay, off the yeah, side real of stage, Java blue fan. team. Oh, oh is that low? enough? And is that enough? To it. It wow! Is. Delta, what a knockout! <sighs> yes, he oh did that. Oh my gosh, Ted is in trouble. And two oh stocks no. go, just and like that. Down. 40 seconds in, we've got a two stock lead for Delta and TM. Delta Dude, and TM what? are pretty damaged, though. They, they, they are. They're, they're, they could get equalized here pretty quickly. Let's see if they can keep the lead going, push the lead further, or if they're just going to get equalized. Immediately, there goes one. It's all up to Delta now to push this lead. They've already got a pretty good amount of damage in, so not a too big of a deal if they end up uh, if Delta ends up getting knocked out here soon. But anything's possible. Whoa! Okay, uh, I... Nice was so prepared for that. Yeah, the ground was oh, a little bit too Delta far on the outside. Oh, Delta makes it back. Nice thought it was over. Delta makes it back, no problem. They're keeping this damage going. Dude, and Ted, Ted down to red in his second sock. It's not looking good. Oh wow, dude! dude Delta. Ted on his final sock. Delta still what with three. Happened? Never okay, mind. Yeah, you but, jinxed like, him. That's, that's a okay. lie. That's okay. Well, he, he needed to get. Oh, jinxed. what a nice uh, a flurry of well. hits there from the axe and the ground pound to maybe finish it off. No TM just barely has enough to make it back to stage. Touches, but loses his weapon. Has to find his way to a new one. Okay, nice. These was there to lock it down with the blasters, but TM rearms himself with the rocket lance. And let's see. Yeah, Ted, the most heavily damaged. Or well. He's the lowest man on the totem pole right now. He's on his last yeah, stock. He's getting into orange it. damage. He could fall completely off this map at any time here, but has to keep himself in the fray so he doesn't let uh, knees get run oh. over by these two players. And now they got the advantage, 1v2. Can they make something happen here, Delta? Okay, they pick up all oh, the team oh, combo. Oh, man, I saw the team combo happening. Yeah. I heard the, the, the start of the music. You know, like when you hear the first three seconds of a song, you instantly recognize right, the song. Right, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what happened with the sound effects of their team combo. Ooh, and oh my Ted goodness, in big wait trouble. a second. Knees I, down to his final stock. This is not looking good for Ted and Knees. I'm keep, keep your eye on Ted here. He's either gonna he's either gonna clutch super hard or get knocked out and cause the demise of his team. Well, well, either way. He's the focal point here. Ted playing way off the side, trying to avoid getting knocked out. Great follow-up off his teammate with a weapon throw follow. Come on, Ted, that's ridiculous. TM is now out of the match. It's Whoa. up to Delta. What a Wait play. Wait a second. Dude, what a play, Ted. Okay, huge swing here. Red team now in favor with two stocks to just Delta by himself. Has to fight his way to his weapon spawn. Starved out by Ted. Swapping out. Now he loses a weapon of his own. Couldn't Man. follow up there. Now he's got the hammer in his hand. Delta can maybe get the stock off Ted, tie up the game, make this a 1v1. Is it possible? He hits both of them there. Quick flurry, the down oh, air does it! Nicely done by Delta, and we are now in an even 1v1. Let's see how this goes down. Knees pretty good with the blasters. He's fighting with confidence. I, I could see Wait, the no follow up? Wait, yeah, <laughs> what? Wait a second. Gravity cancel down light into nothing. That's a mental break. He's trying to oh, just wear down his opponent. Maybe that's see? actually the hugest confidence. 
play. He's like, well, now he knows his reaction there. to that is to do nothing. So he can use that maybe for the future. But we'll see. Yeah. Delta trailing now in damage. Knees somehow has an opportunity to bring this back and turn around game one in their favor. Can he do it? Oh, goes for the double side light read. Doesn't oh. get it. Bounces him off the ground. Looking for a big hit here. Yeah, side Nies light. has barely taken any throw. damage in this exchange. This is looking rough for Delta. Okay, a weapon throw. That's two damage. Oh no, he lost his weapon now. This is not looking good. Wait, oh my gosh, Dang. what an amazing that weapon was... starve at the end there. Dang. He did the point blank weapon throw to just duff him away and then yeah. the immediate, getting that uh, blaster's recovery that low to the ground is a bit of touch, right? It's not that easy to do oh, and he picks it up perfectly. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. He picked him up off the ground with it. Dude, knees, okay, I'm gonna be real. Knees was in control that entire 1v1. Like it didn't even, not for a second did it look like he was in. Yeah, gonna and have here it is. Problem. Oh, and he got the dodge too. There was nothing he could do. He was fighting his way to the weapon. That spawn, was incredible. But. I mean, he got in the 1v1 and he, he and like to himself, he must have been like, it's over. Now, am I like, mistaken? I but like Ted and Knees were losing for like two thirds of that game, right? Like that was kind of a epic comeback that Knees yeah. pulled off there. Dude, how about the way we show which stances they were using with the icons next to their look names? At, look that's, at that's, TM's. That's super slick. Look at TM's stocks. Like, they're so scrunched up. <laughs> and then look at Knees' last stock. This flat it's so line, long. baby. <laughs> okay, well, we see how it fares in game two. We're going back to Apocalypse. And uh, we got a weapon or a character swap. TM off to a Koji pick. Let's see how that okay, works for Yeah, him. we'll see how that plays out here. Koji, popular pick, won many a tournament in the past. Yeah, Koji the Proji, I mean, uh, a, a <laughs> yeah. legend who is a legend in and of itself. <laughs> and let's see if he can make it work. I mean, Bo has been heavily favored in the meta uh, this season, I think. A lot of people talking about it. Yeah, people are talking about it. They like the Bo. I mean, Bo has always been good, though, let's be honest. But that might that might be a more one v one sentiment, you know? Yeah, two v two really is like how well can you kind utilize of its this own pop? thing. And the thing I wonder about a lot with uh, when you when you're swapping out like one legend mid uh, set is like how many team combos do you have in your back pocket for these different configurations? That's right? yeah, I think the same thing. Like, uh, what what level Ooh, of synergy okay. are you sacrificing by swapping your your character out? I mean. Some some teams out there, they got plenty in the tank. You know, right, no matter right, right. who, they got several options on many different picks, different team combinations based on which player is playing who. Okay, but uh, I got to imagine combo? they're losing a little bit by the big switch up to Koji. Okay, tied game. Everybody is at two stocks. But looking a lot better for Knees and Ted. Like they're 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 ahead of their pace in the last game and they won the last game. So it's gotta be a little bit scary for Delta and TM. Alright, Knees looking for a weapon spawn, gets knocked away. Delta swaps out, keeping knees unarmed, elevated in the air. The juggle, double KO. No, no wait a second, but somehow. Almost. Delta falls to his final stock. TM knocked on the side of the stage. Can he make it back? Delta claims the stock of his own. Okay, tied game yet yeah, again. Look at that. So tied up. Look at that top right corner. What the heck? How'd they coordinate this? Did they talk about it beforehand? TM barely survives that knockout. Oh, he claims Okay, and he comes own. right back. He nearly got knocked out, comes right back to the stage and finishes off his opponent. Now, everyone down to their final stock, and once again, the damage is even across the board. Delta does a great job surviving the 1v2 situation. He took a little bit of damage, but no big deal. Avoids the third glove. Smart play. Ted not, not having any mercy on this situation. Uh -oh. Great down six. Now, Delta's the one to watch. He's yeah, been just on he's the side trouble. of the stage. Nice move by TM to, TM, to move Ted yeah, out of position. Yeah, he saved Delta in a way. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, wait, what? Oh, no, it's over for Delta. TM in a very tough spot here. I don't know if he's going to be able to make it back from this. Knocked out the side. He got disarmed. Yeah, Ted and Knees have a lot of room to work with. They've got stage control. They're throwing weapons. They can do everything they want. Kitchen sink method is coming through. Has the axe rearmed? Can he do the down sink <laughs> the to finish off? Method. Is it possible? <laughs> okay, TM makes his way back to the stage, but just in time to get clipped up the top. They're up 2-0, man. Dude, I was pretty sure about TM and Delta winning this one, and I was wrong. I mean, it, I could still be right, but it's not looking good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not over yet. It's not over yet. But this is a very nerve-wracking position to be in in the bracket.
You know, you're, you're... Oh, yeah, on the elimination bracket, yes. down 0-2. This is when the pocket picks come out. Oh, and, and you're seeing and it. And here comes Zol. <laughs> the scramble, the mad scramble, blue team, uh, Delta and TM, trying everything they have. Now, I'm cur I, I'm, a, I'm a Zol believer, okay? Because Zol is a character that can really pop off. High force. You know, if you're landing oh, more you're hits so than you're right. getting yeah. hit by, it's just like getting hit by a train. It's impossible. Yeah, we're to joking about it like Zul's like a joke pick. But it's not like, a joke. Uh, it's no, a it's pick. how many tournaments has Zul won? I mean, on Sandstorm alone, the number two? is so high. Is it two? <laughs> two at least. <laughs> I think it might even be two. No, but it's something like seven, dude. Okay, well, we'll check the stats. We'll, we'll, eventually. Yeah, we'll do the math. All right, here we are in the game three. This could be the decider if Ted and these come away with it, but they're actually trailing behind in damage a little bit. Whoever gets the first stock is going to decide a big momentum swing for this game, and that would be huge for TM oh, and Delta. Oh, punished okay. by TM. He was so no, okay, ready no. with the best option. That was beautiful. What? Ted! Oh, I, no. You know, you'd see it. The gravity cancel side signature is so potent on Rayman. I know, I option. know. I can't stand getting axe skateboarded. <laughs> yeah, it's so like, like I hate how much he's smiling, how fun, yeah. much oh, fun he's having. Whoa, what a knees, huge edge guard knees. double. Oh, okay, wow. Was... Okay, Delta did a great job coming back there to save whatever Knees was doing to TM. Yeah, that, that was, was almost incredible. gigantic. Okay, now just as quickly, the stocks have been tied up yep. yet again. We've got one player on each team in the orange, one player in the white. We'll see who can swing this in their favor here on their second stocks. Edgar Ted makes it up through, and he puts the pressure back on the Delta in the no, side. No, Delta's comes in trouble. I don't think he can make it back from this. Oh, the chase off off his teammate. Teammate. That's that was awesome. nice. That was nice. Oh, uh, well, man. This saves him for later, and now he is down to his final stock. First one to be there. Delta and TM in dire straits in game three of this set. Dire Straits indeed, man. It's not looking good for these guys. Okay, but they've got some good synergy. They got a lot of damage built up on both Ted and Knees. They can take either one of these stocks and get the focus down onto one of them. Well, when you consider that the, the set count is 2-0 in favor of Ted and Knees, wow. you got to be Ooh. like, hey, okay, Delta I, and TM. Dang. Knees, I thought he was going to slip and fall, but his options were reduced, and a perfect recovery from TM's bow takes out the stock, and now it's a tie game. All right, TM. All right. Yeah, how, the how are they going to do this? Just, uh, you know, you just got to keep your mental. You got to just know that you're always in it. You have to believe in that fact. Yeah, play, play strong every time. Whoa! Oh, oh. Ted had the opportunity yeah. for the big finish. That was a huge setup. They did some good damage, though. That was still big. Delta yeah, is yeah. the... Yeah, yeah, still the, big, still big. We, we, just, we like to see the finisher, but... Oh, Ooh, Delta, huge. what a play. Low down air. Okay, he got now Ted down to his final stock. Stocks are tied up, but, man, the damage the is damage not... The damage is good. not... What a save by TM! That was a beautiful neutral air to There's help his teammates. EU is really good at saving their teammates. I don't know yeah. what it is, but they've got something different going on. Man. And they need some saves here, and huge ones. And now oh, I can't Whoa. believe TM even survived okay, that, to be honest. Yeah, that's the last one that TM gets to survive. Boom, boom. Okay, okay, that was Almost. actually correct. Oh, wow. that's it. Ted and Knees win what? the set. 3-0, clean sweep, GG. Okay, I mean, this team has really been showing off their stuff today, and this is a big win over uh, The team music Delta. really scores the situation well here. It's, you could tell that both teams loved each other. Um, Oh, is this the Valentine's Day music? Yeah, yeah. What a perfect the time to bring perfect. that out. <laughs> I mean, Ted Bravo. and Knees. Bravo. We got Ted and Knees winning that set. as oh. Dude, man. And, and nice job by them because I didn't think they were going to win. <laughs> I didn't, you didn't I think didn't they were going to win? I didn't believe. I didn't believe. I didn't believe. Game one, I, I was they, wrong. They came back in game one, but then after that, they just kind of – they just decided that this was their set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, game one was like, whoa, they did it. And then, like, game two and three were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, that's just, that's kind of the how we thought it would look there. Jeez. So, look, guess what? Fun fact, Knees has earned over $21,000 playing Brawlhalla during his career. Oh. That's um, 
There's a lot of cool things you can buy for $21,000. Like plane tickets to DreamHack San Diego, baby. Whoa. It's time to register for DreamHack San Diego. Are you going to DreamHack San Diego? You should be because it's the first LAN of 2023. It's going to be a really, really awesome LAN. Head over to start.gg slash Brahala to register now. Honestly, I was checking the flight prices the other day, okay? And they're really cheap. And I it's mean, exactly $21,000. <laughs> <No. laughs> well, as luck would have it. At some point, no, it was. It's seriously like 200 or less, all the way from Florida. San Diego's oh. on the other side of the country, and somehow we're getting flights for less than $200. Okay. Now's the time to buy, guys. Okay. Get your flight. Get your flight. Get. Your, if I hope I could at least convince one of you watching right now to get on to uh, DreamHack San Diego. Registered. This is the time. It's going to be so awesome, man. You're going to see Remy there, dude. You're going to see. You see. You're going to see. Okay, we're good to send to Remy. We're going to send it over to Remy right now. <laughs> Who's going to analyze the last match? Dude, I don't know. I, I need to, to, Tell me something about that last match, Remy. I got to learn. We're going to find out right now from Remy. Here we go. You got to learn, and I'm going to be your teacher right here for the TM and Delta. They kind of started off strong in the last game with some big momentum plays like we're going to show you right here. On this initial opening onto Ted, he gets a very beautiful uh, edge guard situation. He gets a very beautiful edgeguard switch on to Ted here with the hammer. And we were hyping up hammer. We were talking about that Bolivar finally making a comeback. Hits that nice edgeguard, gets down there to confirm. But it feels like for the rest of that situation, uh, we really weren't having, for the rest of that game, we weren't really having any plays like that. It felt like uh, most of the time, TM and Delta were on the back foot of Nee's blasters. Nee's did so much work with the blasters there. That beautiful down air, Ted just in vicinity to get that uh, side air follow up, send him off stage, and then line it up with that nice weapon throw. Look at that angle he sends it out, and it gets the early knockout, actually turning that game around where they started off in a deficit, putting it into their hands. The early game ends up not mattering because of the team play that Nee's and Ted can put out together. Continues on into the, the rest of the games, the series together. Knees with the blasters, like I'm talking about. Look at the Nair juggle. Ted applying pressure off stage, and as soon as he gets the chance, Downlight Sair keeps the down six going. Downlight recovery to get the top KO. And before he can even be saved, Ted is up there recovering TM before he can stop the recovery. That kind of team play and pressure is always going to net you KOs. You can see that uh, he went for the save, didn't have the time, didn't have the chance to get it. Continuing on knees, like I was talking about with these blasters, doing just so much work the entire game. Ted going for this edge guard here. And look at that blaster play, covering that wall just enough for him to get the side lights there. Seeing that Delta has no dodge, gets the side lights there, sends him a bit further off on that play there. And they kind of just kept Delta off the wall here this entire time, just gaining so much pres presence on the map. You can see that even in the next clip, when he finally does get back on, Ted is right there with the gauntlets ready to stare him back off again. He needs help from his teammate. Comes down, but it's not enough. They have so much presence on this wall. The end light isn't going to be the KO, but the stare just a second later gets it done for them. And then the last clip I want to look at here is just this beautiful interaction as a team. The side light gets to the read, goes for the recovery, and before you know it, double recovery on both of them, and the recovery from the blasters catches the dog out of that one. Just beautiful team play, awareness of each other, using every single move they have in their kit. It looks awesome. Knees and Ted, they look amazing today. Beautiful team play from Knees and Ted. You heard it here first from Remy. GG. Man, that was a great set. And Knees and Ted, Knees and Ted, <laughs> Ted and Knees, <laughs> they got their dub. 3-0, clean sleep. Was that the first 3-0 we've ever seen? On Ever. A, on, on, well, in the history of Brawl, that was the history. first. No, well, first one we've seen <laughs> the first uh, one we saw today. for our block on stream, for sure. So, GG. very decided victory for Knees and Ted. So, we're excited to see how far they can push themselves through the bracket. That's They're right. continuing They've on. All, they made it to top four. That's already farther well, than anybody thought they would ever get. How much further they can, that can they go? You're going to have to wait a little bit to find out. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back in, like, I don't know, five minutes? Super quick. We'll be back in just a little bit. Don't go anywhere because the European Winter Championship doubles bracket will continue and finish here soon. Top four coming soon. Be right back.
welcome to Brawlhalla Esports Year 8. One million dollars will be awarded across the season. And it's starting to increase right now. Down down there. Oh my God. With four seasonal championships. For the first time. <laughs> Four seasonal invitationals. We're trying to read that dodge diagonal down oh. in, and that's the rush of wow. Three in person oh. land events. Oh. All roads lead to BCX 2023, the open entry Brawlhalla World Championship. And he's going to put this one away. The weapon toss from Luna, but nothing else. Down line, recovery. So oh, many owls for Impala, but it's a dare to crown our new world champion.
All right, it's time for the final four here of the Winter Championships EU Edition. We only have four people left. One of them will be decided, of course, who gets to take it all home. But we have a more important thing to ask. I'm 12 out of like 120. Will I make it? <laughs> <laughs> points? Points? Am I going to get the rewards? Points? Am I going to get my rewards? What, sure. I don't know what the last thing is. Am I going to get the blasters? I don't know what it is. It's a, I believe it's blasters today. But also, uh, again, we have a pretty interesting thing going on here. You know, uh, team, uh, team France, all of France, has been so good in doubles lately. But here we just saw both of, essentially a couple of the strongest representatives this fall. We see TM and Delta going out. Uh, and also that insane game five of Heisen and Simple versus Coco and Spyrox. Uh, Heisen and Simple definitely one of the ones that you kind of expect to be here in the final three positions, but just barely did it. Uh, was about to not make it uh, in that 2v1, but they got it done. Uh, but this is the two teams that we all expect when we go to look at this. We got Fozy and Godly versus Akno and Blaze coming up. Yeah, they were kind of the, the two guaranteed expected to make it this far everybody kind of had them on their list of course in the community predictions it was always going to be those two at the very top but now that they're fighting against each other i'm very curious what people are going to be thinking of, of course that prediction is likely getting ready to go and uh, I'm, I'm curious because i know uh i think there's a lot of bias towards fozy and godly but at the end of the day acno and blaze they're, they're still that household name there's still a lot of kind of namesake power behind that 2v2 team yeah you're talking about the champions the the the, the, the reigning terror that they had over eu for so long you can't just overlook that and even with the incredible performance of you know fozy and godly of late you still have to take into consideration that acno and blaze also, just in general, have been picking it back up of late. They're not really letting people run away with their dubs. Godly, even though in once hasn't been performing as strongly of late, you still have to also think about the fact that it's Godly. And when you pack him with someone like Fozy, who's already been many times over to the podium, not only that, but the podium finish, you're going to have a strong two-piece core there. Yeah, definitely a, uh, a very powerful team. And one thing that's working really well for them is, like, I think they're leaning into whatever the current like popular meta is right now like you're seeing a lot of gauntlets come out even though gauntlets took a little bit of a nerf you're still seeing like a lot of gauntlets on the side on the other side acno and blaze kind of changing it up a little bit i think i saw acno on the onyx for a hot minute there kind of bringing out the cannon which was a little bit interesting to see but now you're seeing on the screen the stats behind acno and blaze of course two uh multi-time gold medalists 17 gold medals on each of their necks yes yeah, so that one thing i'm going to continuously think back on too is that bcx run there were multiple times where we all were pretty much in agreement that as strong as Godly is, Fozy was the more dangerous threat on that team at BCX for a good majority of the day. And then Godly picked it up, but all of a sudden they were near unstoppable except for Boomy and Snowy. And we're going to start things off here of winners finals of the first game of the set. And so far we're seeing Cannon come into play once again. Yeah, Akno sticking with the Onyx seems to be something that he's practiced for specifically this weekend. I think Sparky was talking about how this is his highest Cannon legend. Uh, is this Onyx, but high defense makes it really, really good for sitting inside the middle of the map. Yeah, that's kind of where, I mean, Akno's always in the fray, and then Blaze is, Blaze is just that incredible support who you always need. Also, I mean, Blaze is usually the one that's better at the back end for the 2v1s, but that is stocks flying everywhere as Godly and Fozy both removed quickly. They did put a lot of damage on, though, before they got those lost. Yeah, definitely in the red, and you see that double uppercut coming out from Fozy to clean that one up. The uh, gauntlet recovery, not quite enough, and Blaze actually thinking his lucky stars that Fozy slide charged that down sig and ended up going too low. There we 
of course, you got that KO power always available to you. Godly pulling the Rayman back out here with the Dalsim. Uh, it's uh, not too surprising to see it. We were talking about how the danger of seeing everybody with Cross could show up this weekend. We're seeing a lot of Axe as well show up for EU. It's something we were kind of lacking before, and uh, not, not too surprised to see it show up here. Yeah, this is kind of the place. If you're going to see an Axe, it's going to be EU. They love their Olgrims, their Brins as well. You're gonna see that Ensig actually KO for Fozy there. No, actually it was Godly who got it. A quick three-piece lineup right there. The blue team yeah, uh, has overall been getting better team combo strings compared to the others, but that defense, we talked about it before, that Blaze defense in twos is so difficult to deal with. Neutral like gonna go ahead and send him over on the side, almost catching the Sarah to take that stop. Yeah, Blaze has insane survivability. Olgrim and Onyx, of course, both have pretty high defense. Fozy trying to negate that a little bit. Cross comes in with a decent amount of strength behind it, and his six do hit hard. You're gonna see that recovery actually keep that stock count even. There we go. We're going to go ahead and get a wrench KO right back. Blaze still holding on to that two stock lead. But because of that combo consistency I've seen out of the blue team, I could see that disappear pretty quickly. Currently unarmed. Gets back in with the Lance to kind of separate them away from Akno. Yeah, their ability to do combos means that a 1v2 is definitely <coughs> a real possibility for them if they end up taking out Akno. Akno surviving right now, getting out to the left side. And you're seeing Blaze try to play a little bit more forward as it hits the ground pound, and now it's the red team's turn to go for the 2v1. That was a really good focus shift right there between the two of them. It's like, okay, you take front. I'm going to go over here. There's no reason for me to try and rush in, lose his stock, and allow them to get that 2v1. And Blaze did exactly what they need to do to deliver. He does lose that one, but they still have the 2v1 at the moment. Yeah, a little unfortunate there. He uh, he held that ground pound for a really long time, tried to get just really far away from Fozy, and Akno didn't want to risk coming in, trying to punish, and end up getting caught by Fozy because he was super far on the right side. So he ended up just doing a weapon toss and backing away. Either way, Blaze had that second stock. And Blaze catches him on the weapon toss there, and that's going to nice. go ahead and close out the game. Great job not missing the recovery route, and it's still something to be afraid of no matter which way you look at it. That it, 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 I know I've said it bears repeating quite a few people this weekend, but Fozy really is the one you got to keep an eye on so far because you can't, you just can't overlook the recent performance at BCX. And here was once again the one who didn't lo lose his last stock first. Godly did end up losing it first, but once you see Godly start to pick it up, that's where things gonna go south for Akno and Blaze. Yeah, but on the other side, Blaze putting out 736 damage. I like, completely missed that stat. Oh my god. He was in. And we're seeing Fozy make the swap over to the Zario. This kind of pocket pick that we've seen him do really well. That's actually the other thing that showed up. Uh, the, the range coverage that he has on the signature kit really was the biggest thing. Uh, just having to give respect to him desyncing at any given point in time. But you have the burst available to you on Olgrim to punish that. So I'm curious how often he'll do it. Oh, it might just be playing around these team combos right now. He's got those gauntlets, and he's definitely going to be looking for those signatures. Like he said, lots of range on them, those projectiles. And, of course, almost all of them kind of launch forward and down. Mm -hmm. Well, Fozzy oh, going nice. to get caught by the neutral air. Good punisher from Godly. Can he get anything out of it? it is, the reverse recovery doesn't get knockout, but Akno is just one of the most fearful people to see off stage. Uh, it doesn't matter who he's playing. I love the way Akno played that edge guard against Fozzy. Both of them were kind of sweat beating there. Oh, going for another edge guard immediately. But Akno ended up hitting that nair to deny that uh, touch so that he could get that uh, chase dodge up. Nice recovery from Godly. Will get a stock off the red team. Uh, Godly falls, but they, that definitely looked a lot better because Blaze is sitting here at that same window. One good straight hit gets rid of Blaze, even game. Uh, currently, Fozzy just trying to get it. I felt like he was trying to bait him over to the weapon spawn, but never, never really fell for it. Yeah, Nado. Uh, just one track mining for that. You saw Blaze again try to go for those weapon tosses to interrupt. One of the safest tools to help save your teammate, but Akno's in trouble. Oh, Godly just Nair? misses the D-like ground pound. Akno trying to pay, uh, make a pay for it too. Uh, that, that was really close to Akno sneaking, uh, excuse me, Godly sneaking one out on Akno. Oh man, Blaze again trying to interrupt that one. This one is very even. You can see both teams have one person deep red and one person orangish yellow. You already know, this is exactly what we expect out of these two teams. He's just the greatest core, but Godly falls first there. Just missing, but Fozzy gets punished anyways. Blaze is going to get the revenge KO. Yes, he is. And same position as last game, Duke. Blaze sitting at that two mark, a, a very healthy two stock as well. Yeah, credit to Blaze for converting that uh, trade into a 2v1, just completely edge guarding Fozzy with those axe down airs. Right now, everybody is, uh, well, they had a target shift over on the Blaze for a second, but I think, of course, the Wincon once again. Can we try to get rid of Akno? That's going to lead to pushing Akno off stage. Are they going to be able to get him? Oh, That's Akno. one. Oh, Akno. Blaze trying to help. 
Akno gets up, but Fozy with the coverage. Blaze still in position. Godly can't hit the down line. And Akno's going to survive, but it's a trade of Blaze's stock for it. They were jumping, my boy. Oh, my God. Akno could oh. not get out. And Akno still can't get out. So they were able to this time get that 2v1. Now, even with that credible play Blaze had, it is way more difficult. Yeah, this is a super challenging 1v2. Not only is it two people on the other side, but they're very healthy. Fozy's basically untouched, and the combos... Oh, just missing out on the dare. Doesn't matter, though. Still gets him punished afterwards. And uh, Blaze just hunting for an opener of any kind, but he's he's just been weapon starved out. There's nothing he can really do here. Yo, maybe blue team going to give him the edge guard opportunity. Nope, Godly gets away from that, and Fozy's still covering. Blaze has yet to pick up a weapon for a hot minute, but you can see him trying to take advantage of those little bits of team damage that the blue team's given him. Yeah, you saw how he was kind of floating between them, like bait a swing and then move. Get them to keep hitting each other, separate them away from the stage so he could get over to the weapon spot as quick as he possibly could, but it didn't end up leading to that weapon spot grab he's uh, looking for. I think you see right there, hits each other, puts himself in between again, but he already committed to going high. I know for a fact, though, that that last game, there's no shot that that doesn't end up on like the replay reel later, potentially from Remy. That coverage that they had on the right side of the stage was immaculate. I, they, I, the fact that Akno didn't get knocked out at the bottom and instead got knocked out at the top was credit to Akno's defense, but they had everything covered. Yo, but look at these graphs. Fozy, his whole third stock was untouched. That's why it looked like he didn't have a third stock because he just, it never got the damage tick to put it on the graph. Yeah, never got to actually do anything. <laughs> well, uh, here we go onto Miami Dome. Um, I'm not too, I'm actually not too, too surprised we moved away from Apocalypse. I feel like they were, uh, as that game progressed, they weren't utilizing the soft platform the same way they were in game one. And uh, they spent most of that time off stage. So you figured new landing options maybe to help get away from some of Zario's plays. Yeah, the way that Fozy was covering spaces with those signatures, talking about those side sigs on those gauntlets in particular, uh, I can't blame him for wanting to change it up a little bit. And you see an Akno actually change it up over to the Sidra, keeping that cannon from the Onyx. A lot of Sidra oh, this weekend. Oh, one person. He's going to be able to get away from him, though. Does not go high early. Fozy just also going back to stage as well. Godly uh, is not going to... He, he's definitely been picking it up. He's usually been the first one to fall on each stock uh, so far. But that's going to be a Seer that gets rid of Akno first. And also the double KO. So things are starting to slowly creep more and more into blue team. Seem like to kind of get in their footing. Yeah, they're definitely starting to figure out their answers, their responses to the way that the red team is playing. And of course, they're getting more conversions off of those team combos as well. Good defense again. Godly just holy. Godly actually holding on to this first stock for quite some time. Recovery's gonna go ahead and take out Fozy. That's gonna lead to a knockout right there. So double KO right back from Blaze. Yeah, good pickup for him. That Lance end line actually getting that KO there. Side light, side airs, Fozy. You can see them hunting for the edge guard there. Fozy actually getting away with the help of Godly swinging down towards Akna with those down airs. Yeah, I also just decided to take a quick look back, by the way, at the last game, and I see a big difference maker. Everybody was above 500, except for Akna, who was at 218. Yeah, he so, struggled in the last one. Uh, he is definitely picking up here, at least in this stock. Gonna go ahead and avoid that neutral light, but Gakno trying to cover him. Does not get the Seer. Godly just going high. Uh, and his, his defense around the two of them has also been way better in this game. He's still surviving on the second stock. Yeah, that's a really tough spot to play in. He was on the left side wall going for the 1v2 against Akno and Blaze while Fozy was respawning, and he ended up kind of out winning out against them. He was doing damage and getting away with it. Yeah, which is exactly what you want to see if you're the blue team. You need Godly to be able to get in, sneak in, get those hits, and dip out. And uh, Blaze and Akno, however, they have been hold. All right, so they're going to fall <laughs> now. But they held on to that those two stocks for a good amount of time, considering how early they lost them. Yeah, they did a great job getting some damage put out. They need to finish the stock off of Godly if they can. The falling there, not going to do it. But you can see, the second Godly gets launched, both of them try to collapse onto Fozy. They wanted that 1v2, and Fozy went high to avoid it. Yeah, and they, I feel like they're not playing as afraid of Lance this game as well, something I noticed. That is going to lead to recovery. That gets a knockoff off the top, though. Uh, I think Agno switching over to Sidra was the right call. The, the cannon is getting some hits in, but the sword has definitely been getting way more done. Yeah, there's just a lot of consistency behind that sword for Agno. Of course, he's had that time as the Koji as well. So he's definitely got a, a pocket sword. All right, Godly and Fozy trying to, uh, just trying to like suffocate Blaze's movement over there. But Blaze just, it's Axe. So you can kind of swing your way out of that Ooh. situation. And here goes Fozy falling first, a rare occasion. But if you ever needed someone to possibly make a 2v1 happen, Godly is definitely that guy. I mean, he's definitely been the hero of the EU region for a long time. He's 
trying to play this 1v2 out, but Akno catches him. Not Ooh. quite enough. Not gonna fall just yet. Meanwhile, has to get by the neutralized to the ledge. Does dodge past everything, and that's gonna go ahead and close it out. One singular mistake on the sidelight, they get the punish. A little bit easier, of course, to get that punish on it now, but Godly was making it difficult for at least a good bit there. Good recognition from Blaze there on the bounce off of that cannon end light too, so he does a jump side air instead of just going for like a sidelight side air, expecting it to kind of land down. It's really smart coming out from uh, the red team. Now going into the oh, what, what are you, this is game this is game four right? <laughs> Actually, uh, <laughs> these games were going by really quick. Yeah, I um, think this is game four. Going into game four here, uh, what do you think is going to be an approach from Godly Fozy? Because I feel like Fo like I don't even think Fozy really got figured out more so that he just didn't do damage that game, but. Uh, I think the stage actually, this actually might be a big solver. Right. They the played Onyx, around or, him sorry. a lot. The uh, the Orion swap. Really, what it feels like is like game one, red team had the lead. Uh, they took down Fozy early. Game two, blue team had the lead. They took down Akno early. Game three, red team takes it back. They took down Fozy early. So if the blue team wants to take the lead, might have to take down Akno early. Yeah, and you also just uh, you were mentioning as the game started, I was still chatting there. The, the Orion swap is here. Uh, so definitely away from the Zario. After putting out 248, it's it's, it's that time to possibly switch off. Yeah, totally makes sense. When you uh, do about 200 damage, you're, you're not feeling that character anymore. Actually, same thing happened to Acto too. That's when the yeah. Sindra showed up, and it made a big difference. That is a big punish right there, though. Neutral Sig is not going to allow Godly to get a follow-up punish, but the, uh, Blaze's defense from the early games Albeit he's still refusing to let go of these stocks as early. He's not sitting there with that two stock lead like before. I mean, you're talking about Blaze's defense, but look at Fozy's health. He's just now ticking into the orange. We're about a minute into this one, and he's still on that first stock. This is what I was talking about. Like, if Fozy can survive, if he can put out that damage, I think things are going to look good yep. for this blue team. I mean, I don't even lie to you. I, I, I My brain didn't even register that Fozy was still on his first stock because of how low his damage was. I thought he was on a second stock mentally for a second. But this is what I mentioned before. When Fozy picks it up alongside Godly, he was the biggest threat before. That D-Light recovery won't be enough off the top. But uh, he's uh, he's still holding on to this first one. I mean, that D-Light recovery was enough to make Akno scared. You see him playing on this right side wall. Follow-up, though, will put Godly onto his final stock. There's definitely a chance for this red team to to win this one out and go into the grand finals. Absolutely. Like you say, get rid of Godly. Now, all of a sudden, you're in a way better position. You got four stocks up, fresh stock for Fozy, and uh, that's going to be Acto falling, though, so we're back to an even game. Good dodge through from Blaze, recognizing Fozy wants to go for those GCN SIGs off the spear down light. Godly's got to be careful about how he tries to chase. You already know Godly will absolutely chase, especially with Axe, but the thing is that you can't afford to get reversal recovery yourself. Yeah, I mean, he is definitely kind of the linchpin right now. If he falls, then Fozy won't have that opportunity to kind of play this out. He's going to have to 1v2 as the downlight recovery doesn't hit. It's between Godly and Akno. Who's going to fall first? Uh, it's going to be Godly falling first off the left side. So all of a sudden, it's on Godly's hands, excuse me, Fozy's hands, to try and make this still happen. They have to get this W to force this to a game five. He's going to try to win this out. Fortunately, he does have a second stock behind this one, but he needs to take out Akno and Akno's not giving him any opportunities. He's playing so far to the right side. Yeah, absolutely. This is a, this is a 1v1 game. Well, however, that's going to go ahead and get save. a tough recovery right there. So that forces at least a momentary 1v1. Now, it's a great defense on Akno, avoiding all of that, getting away from the recovery. And there's Blaze body blocking him, too, to make sure if he does try to do something, he's going to be the one to take the hit. Yeah, you can see Blaze doesn't even care about a weapons. <gasps> oh, Akno, did he overcommit? The Nair, it's going to help them both get back up safely the weapon toss. Blaze hits the ground pound, still another stock for Fozy. And Nair definitely helping out Akno a bit longer there. So Fozy still has a shot here. If he could get access to, uh, to Akno, Akno's taking enough damage, and that is a lance. So at any point in time, he might get caught slipping. Yeah, Akno's playing far and away. Blaze with a great pickup there, that GC down light, getting that extra damage. And Blaze just making sure that he keeps him away as long as possible. Blaze can afford to just fight up close with him right now. It's just it's an extended 1v1 until you get things like that to get the team combo. Yeah, got close enough. You saw Akno go in, get that recovery. And Fozy's in trouble. Down light, doesn't hit the ground pound. Akno chases. Akno's going to go ahead and get, get back, back to stage. Very yeah. scary situation, but Neutral Light sending him back off. Weapon toss up, forcing him to have to burn his dodge because of that. He actually boxes his way out. Yeah, that recovery ends up giving him a chase dodge, getting back to that wall again, but a side air. And Akno and Blaze are going to win it 3-1 and go to the grand finals. There was a shift amongst people I saw this weekend who kind of put a few more pos uh, positions of putting Akno and Blaze back in that first place for EU. Part of that is because of maybe, maybe questioning where Godly was oh, after ones, right? You can never question Godly, though. He's that strong. 
But when you look at how they were able to adjust past them, that was phenomenal. They got a hold of Godly once they saw the lead was big enough. It's like, look, Fozzie's defense, fantastic. But look at how quickly Godly's stocks disappeared on that grab. He was gone. Fozzie had to fight for a long time by himself. Yeah, I mean, you can you can see that basically half the game was without Godly. Yeah, uh, and that's just that's such a tough spot to be in. Both like as a player, you're like you hate to like have to sit there and just watch your teammate for a long time, but also like if you're Fozzie. That damage again. They just constantly shifting back and forth between you do 200, I do 200. Uh, a big theme of every game's loss really was just that one of the two players only put out about just anywhere near close to 300 damage, mostly because of that early KO that happened on Godly. I think it was stock two, but still Godly. So you have to expect that he can make a comeback, but they didn't let that happen. Yeah, they really did a good job of shutting down one of the opponents. And like, it's one of those things, like, I don't I don't know, uh, you weren't really around when this became a thing, but there was like a 2v2 tournament where like, there was a stat. If you did under 300 damage, you basically were like considered not helping your teammate out. And that's kind of what's been happening in this. And in that last one, Akno did just enough. He did like 398, right? He was just yep. above that 300 threshold. I mean, I guess 98 is actually pretty good above that threshold, but still like, doing enough for the team, whereas on the other side, they kept Godly from doing it. Exactly, like is your positioning good? Are you lining up team combos for the person who is putting out 700 damage? That's the most important thing. And as long as you, even if you're putting out small amount numbers, the amount of damage you took is a big factor. So we're gonna go ahead and toss it over to Remy to see exactly why the champs of EU have returned and sitting on the winner's side of Grants. We got four of the best European 2v2 players in that match right there, and a lot of praise has to be given to Blaze for what he did on the all in that game. We saw a lot of plays with both weapons. 700 damage dropped in the last game. Let's look at how he did that. Starting off with his first clip here, we're actually gonna take a look at the blue team and their interaction on the right side of the stage that actually netted them this game. Very good coverage from both these players here. I'm gonna play a little bit slower. After that down stay came out, the ground pound covered the left option and then the follow up ground pound was so clean to keep Akno very low. He does end up getting the save back onto his teammate, as Blaze does. Just showing how good he's been playing, he does end up helping Akno there. But Akno still takes the short end of the stick, gets that end stick landed on him, and he gets saved one more time. Blaze doing a lot of work here, but at what cost? Akno has already entered Demon That Red. He loses that stock very soon, and Blaze just can't find the 2v1. But it was a lot of plays there from the blue team applying pressure, and Blaze doing his best to save it. Now back here, we have another situation with Akno offstage. Very good catch, actually, on that... Uh, on the interaction with uh, Fozzie, getting that Nair, that gauntlet there onto him. He continues forward with the pressure, trying to get that combo off, but Akno reads that crossover. He sees him coming through with the right dodge, gets his dodge out, knows he was in the air, has no options left, and you can see he runs right out there. He goes low to get himself back up, actually throwing him down with the Nair. That's gauntlet's priority there, and that's just something that's always gonna work out for you. You see Blaze applying that pressure onto Godly to make sure that he doesn't interrupt his teammate's recovery. Continuing on here, we have a nice play from Blaze here as he gets that beautiful, beautiful double side air onto his teammate. And as Fozzy goes to get that trade kill on Akno, it immediately gets shut down by Blaze, getting that double knockout on two ends there. Blaze is everywhere on this map with this axe, and he looks very, very good doing it. Uh, another play here with Blaze getting this Lance uh, knockout, charges up the first recovery, gets the second round on the turnaround, and immediately moves onto this platform, trying to bait out ops from Godly, lands on it. Godly thinks he has that breath of fresh air, that room to come back on, he immediately falls through, gets him with the end light. And it's just been plays like that from Blaze. He's, it feels like he's everywhere on this map, Akno with a nice ground pound there for the follow-up. And uh, this closing sequence right here on last game, very beautiful stuff, Akno. He goes low, he ends up, uh, Saving, getting saved by Fozzy. Fozzy Pasha taking the trade there, taking his own stock, put himself in that 1v1, have a better chance here. But because he doesn't, Blaze takes full advantage on that come up, gets the beautiful downer into the ground pound. Blaze did a lot of work in this set, even on the games he lost, he was looking good. And I want to see what he can do now that he's moved on to the grand finals. Yeah, that was actually definitely the biggest moment we were looking at too. When that, when he got Akno caught off stage. That could have been the difference between a 1v1 and maybe a push to game five. But the way Blaze has been playing, it's just it, he's been impossible to deal with. And that also, uh, a stat I was looking at after I didn't realize before, since 
the godly foes he pair up. Acton Blaze were 2-2 two and two with them, and that now puts them up 3-2. Doesn't mean that that can't get broken. If you get into Grants, you could get the two wins and take it back. But that's how even the sets have been between those two teams so far. Yeah, of course. Uh, not overly surprised to see, considering they've been vying for that top spot in the region for at least a hot minute here. And, of course, one of them is going to get into the Grand Finals. The other one going to be sitting in the Elimination Finals. But coming up next, y'all are already voting, and you can't decide. Ted and Knees versus Heisen and Simple. I'm kind of in the same boat as them. I don't know who to pick because Ted and Knees just came off a 3-0 uh, and looked the, the very, very good at it. Uh, and Knees has just been uh, on fire of late, too, so you can't even oh, look at that. Uh, he's second place at ones last week. But, of course, it is also Heisen and Simple. This is one of the most difficult teams to hit defensively, especially when you're looking Simple the other side. Uh, so I'm very curious to see how they go about this. But there is, once again, the cross showing back up and Raymond, actually. So basically the same team core we saw Godly and Fozy leaning into at the start. Yeah, Ted and Knees have been running this as well. We've definitely been seeing Knees on that cross. Uh, this is uh, kind of a tale as old as time when it comes down to these players, though. It's like the new bloods versus the old bloods. Simple and Heisen have been around for a hot minute. Knees has definitely been around, but he's kind of had these, like, pops of performance. And then Ted, of course, kind of this up-and-comer. He's still relatively young to the game. Yeah, if we look at Knees, like, over the last year or two, a lot of us saw him, like, on the upswing for that graph of results. He's been looking really, really good. But you're still looking, again, at, like you said, Heisen and uh, Simple. They've been around for a long time. Good defense to get oh. around that recovery, actually. And that's going to be a big reversal that should have been essentially a stock for the blue team. I think that was an exhausted recovery too from Heisen because it didn't have that much movement but had just enough to tap the feet of knees and give them that slight stock lead. Very uh, very dangerous stage also to start off, I just realized. that like Here on Demon Island, this is only this is only golden for Simple being able to fly across with Lance if he ever gets to it, but it doesn't seem like it's really needed. Uh, Ted, does it really get challenged just because that was a free opportunity to put some damage on the knees? Yeah, they want to just keep stacking that damage up on the knees. I love the target swap there coming out from Simple. He hit the side light and then immediately chase dodge turn around trying to get the counter punish. Oh, the stage spike off the angle from Heisen, giving him another stock. Duke, that is two stocks now that Heisen essentially should have lost and he didn't and instead got them himself. He got the reversal on Knees originally, now Knees sitting at one stock and uh, Ted just barely missing that ground pound before, so Heisen is playing phenomenal. Yeah, things are falling apart for this blue team. They got that early lead and they're just getting more as Simple with the save. Dude, sip, sip, they, that he is going for the three stock. <laughs> simple is right on top. He's like, no, I will hit my teammate and break him out of this combo anytime. Heisen still somehow holding on to this first one. Finally disappears, but man, he got so much out of it. Yeah, I mean, a credit to both Heisen for his plays, but also Simple for being there, getting those positional things to help keep him, his teammate alive. So we said, this is one of the most difficult teams defensively to deal with. They are always there to support each other, but there goes Simple just sneaking right through, making sure he doesn't pay any focus at all to Ted's. Like, look, that's cute, you're over there. I'm gonna go try and help Heisen, and instead they end up getting rid of Ted, both of them on their last stock now. Yeah, they're very good at being like, you know what, we don't really need to finish off this stock of one of them, as long as we're getting more damage onto the other one. And now, Knees is the one in that target position. He's got to be careful about where he positions. All right, they need a big capitalization here. And Eisen, again, still refusing to go down to the Sair. Eisen sneaking his way back on, avoiding multiple stairs from Knees there. And uh, doesn't really commit because he uh, immediately saw that Simple was in a bad spot. So instead of going for recovery, he dropped down to go help him out. Yeah, Simple was definitely scrapping as well there. Uh, Heisen does get past that down Sig knees. He's got to be careful, but Heisen's going to fall everybody onto their final stocks. There's still a chance for this blue team to get this one back. It's entirely on knees to clutch it out. He's uh, he's definitely been doing a lot better over this last stock. He lost some early, but that side air is going to get rid of the first one. 2v1 situation right now. Uh, Rayman definitely one of the better characters to have in this spot, especially with those low sides on Demon Island. You can sneak out a D-Sig maybe, but you got to somehow get them apart from each other. Yeah, it's going to be really hard to be in that position where you're on the corner and the other people are trying to get back up. But like you said, those D-Sigs are very effective at covering corners if you can get them. But it won't matter as a side air cleans it up. Game one goes the way of Heisen and Simple. I feel like after what I just saw, this is one of the most difficult teams to win a 2v1 on. After early, early on, Heisen was not losing his stock because of those saves, not only on his, his own self getting the reversals, but because of Simple. So when you have a situation like this, there's no shot. You hit one and the other isn't there to break it up. That, that, that happened many times throughout that game. Yeah, I, I just love the way that they're able to kind of double cover. They both sat on that corner, but you saw one kind of jumping just in case that Ted tried to go for those high recoveries. 
and they're just they're just holding down the corner. They're not over aggressing. You're not seeing the one kind of dash jump ground pound and hoping a prayer. Instead, they're just like we'll whittle away and we'll eventually win. Yep, and that was also a game where I expect you know I, when you go on Demon Island, I'm expecting to see Lance flourish, but it wasn't even necessary. 300 plus damage done on the axe. So the fact that you still have Lance available to be that problem is still there, uh, but it, it wasn't even necessary for Simple. Now we're seeing Knees make the swap over to the Tesca. The only one to play the Tesca in the 2v2 space so far today. I mean, it did work out of the pocket pick last time it showed up in ones. It was able to get that W against Godly. So, and uh, it is definitely a great setup tool to line up right for Ted. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting if he decides to go for some of those true combos, if he's got team combos to follow up with Ted, but it doesn't matter as he can see edge guard with that ground pound. Great job stalling it out too, waiting. You have plenty of time there. Side air going to go ahead and line him up right into Ted. There's these team combos we were talking about. Yeah, those horizontal sends, I'm expecting not too many of the uh, the chasing side airs to come out from knees just to pass over to Ted. Already a uh, much better position. They got rid of Heisen Ooh. within a minute, and also they got rid of Simple with two stocks essentially within a minute. So this is uh, th things are kind of derailing here for the red team. Yeah, things getting pretty dire for this red team. Not even able to save anyone. Taking apart that parachute that Heisen has had. It's crazy thinking about the fact that it's Ogrim and Val you're doing this to as well. Like, this is not easy characters to knock out consistently. And they, but these, uh, this Tezka swap has been phenomenal for Nice. Looking for the side six sneak, the jump scare, if you will, which would have actually gotten rid of him. Dude, also, like, Ted's blasters have been insane. True. Like, he's just been picking apart simple. You can just hear those shots ring. Actually, you are very correct. I, I, I've definitely not been giving enough credit to Ted throughout this whole game. A, he's still on his third stock. B, that the blaster sound effects have been going off the entirety of this match, usually being on accurate point. Does get reversed right there, but they did. he did so much damage before he lost it. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be a huge clutch moment if the red team can bring this one back. They need to basically not trade ever. If they, if they win... I don't think I have any will in me to believe that blue team wins game three if they come back from this. But it is possible because Simple and Heisen do have that ability to do so. Right now, Mike, they are getting pieced up. <laughs> they, they are getting, oh my oh God. My yeah, God. The knees. knees is piecing them up. Oh my God, yeah. So I don't think past this point, Duke, that we don't oh. see the Tetsuka stay out. <laughs> The team combo, Downsync didn't do too much there, but just the fact that he was ready for that is just, he's ready. He's got these 2v2 combos on lock, and uh, Heisen's right now just doing research. Heisen is uh, just trying to sneak through, get simple pokes, get some damage in. Tried to stall, and he got snatched out for it. Oh, Yo. but somehow, wait. We take those. We take those. Bro, no shot, right? No, sh no shot, right? Just do that again, like, three more times. Totally okay. Fine. <laughs> I, I was I was I was all of a sudden here for it. Like, come on, Heisen, <laughs> I, I want to see it. Uh, so Tezka will absolutely be staying. If I see that character switched off, it's only because it gets, like, it does nothing at all in a game. That yeah. was, not only that, but you mentioned it before. The blast just picked up a ton. He was always confirming off of uh, knees. He was always positioning himself as well to do what the red team did. He broke up any type of pressure game they had on knees at any point because of how well his spacing was. I think, like, uh, re-watching that um, boots combo that happened on the left side from Knees kind of indicated what happened that game, which is, like, Ted and Knees split Acno and Blaze. They yep. weren't able to be in position again. Or, sorry, not Acno and Blaze. What? I'm just reading the names at the bottom. <laughs> uh, Simple and Heisen. They split uh, Simple and Heisen, and they weren't able to get those saves, right? Like, Simple wasn't there to be that parachute for Heisen. And there you're seeing those blasters from Ted. 401 damage. I'm not going to lie. You made me scared for a second. Like, did we... Yeah. Did we, did we miss oh, yeah, a set? I was like, did, wait, what? Does, does my, is my memory that bad? Did we have a whole set? <laughs> but uh, that was um, a complete shutdown of Blaze. Uh, not only did Blaze get knocked off Heisen. early twice. Simple. Ah! <laughs> See, now I'm doing it. Uh, who, who was on it? Uh, Simple. Simple got shut down heavy. Uh, to not only start off the game, but in general, post those two early knockouts too. He was not able to apply any damage. We're going to see a switch off away from Apocalypse. We're also going to uh, see a switch away from Val. We're going to go to Hattori. Yeah, not too surprised to see Heisen make the swap over to the Hattori. He's definitely had multiple character picks to play alongside Simple. Uh, definitely seen them play together for a hot minute here, so uh, not too surprised to see. Yeah, I think uh, uh, Hattori probably has the current winning record of most swap two character this weekend after a loss. And has also had a really good win ratio of when it's been swapped to. So uh, the movement is king factor has played into it. I think he just wants to be able to get in faster to go hit knees when those combos get started. Ooh. 
Yo, and he's also able to rotate a little faster as the team combo comes out. Ooh, Keep ooh. it going, recovery. Not quite enough to finish off knees, but that's a lot of damage. That's a message set right there, but piecing him up quite a bit, putting him all the way up into the red. Uh, one good recovery from Lance should do it. As you saw, Simple was hunting for it, but here's that win condition again. You said it before. They separated the two, the two of them very well. Whoa. I love that move. The side sig comes out <laughs> from both of them. Ted almost got the handoff too. You saw him go for his own side sig, but it launched a little high there. Simple, not able to connect with that recovery, and Ted's gonna clean up the stock. He's still holding on to this first stock here as well. After they were able to get uh, able to get to Ted early, and he's just kind of positioning himself where it's like, good, go ahead, go go for it, go for a recovery, anything. I will punish you for it. Yeah, Nees has definitely been surviving on this Tezka. We saw that team combo, but finally that falling side air from Heisen will clean it up. And you're seeing Heisen go a little aggressive here. This could be trouble as Simple hits his teammate with the dare, the side air to make oh. it a trade at the very least. Yeah, you're lucky that was a trade at best because uh, that was starting to work pretty well uh, for uh, for Heisen, excuse me, Ted, to try and sneak one away. And it was Simple who was able to at least get rid of him. Actually, this is a dead even game. Yeah, this really... <laughs> was relying on Simple not getting caught by the recovery, and he didn't because he was high in the sky, and he's definitely taking a little bit more damage than Nees is. Oh, my God. I like the attempt there from Nees to try to catch him drifting down, maybe burn the dodge uh, drift low. That stair won't be enough, but that does allow 2v1. Try to catch him on the top, and he's going to be able to drift this way down, make sure he has the dare out just to try and keep him away. But, uh, did, you know, blue team is actually doing a better job now all of a sudden separating them, too. Yeah, red team might be looking for a KO here and maybe try to convert into a 1v2 combo real quick because... Simple, taking a lot of damage. Heisen needs to survive here. He's definitely the critical point. Yeah, Heisen on a very similar position at the moment. We're going to see one fall. This is now 2v1 opportunity for them. They do not get they do not get to Heisen, so that helps out. But Ooh. Heisen is taking a lot of damage. Yeah, and now he's starting to play timid, sitting on that right side wall, waiting for his opportunity to come in, just taps his teammate on the head, and he eats a recovery for his damage. Oh, getting, uh, again, another solid three-piece on the simple, but that is going to be knees falling. This could be a big opportunity if they could get rid of Ted. If was the Sair jumping up, tries to go for recovery, but knees breaking it all up. Man, that's a tough spot for Heisen to be in there. You saw the handoff opportunity where uh, Simple hit the side air and the, uh, that recovery will eventually finish off Heisen. And Heisen was like, I want to survive. So he dodges through instead of just going for that turnaround side air. Yeah, it's, uh, oh, wait a Combo. minute. Oh my God, that is going to be enough. Go ahead and get ready to get stressed if you're Heisen and Simple because the swap over to Hattori, it looked good, but they still haven't had a complete answer to this Tesco pick from Nies. Yeah, one thing that's uh, rough for this EU team of uh, Simple and Heisen is like, the last time we saw Knees on this Tezka, it beat out uh, Godly. Godly. Yeah. And then after that, the only thing that made him swap away from it was Machete being better yeah. at Tezka. Yeah. It's like, well, are you confident in your ability to out Tezka Knees? Also, what is this whole thing of, hey, you know, I thought Gauntlets were gone. You know, Gauntlets been doing just fine. That's what I'm saying. You know, one, still and a still great 2v2 weapon. Twos. Yeah, they did a fantastic job so far. Um, I'm very curious to see what we're gonna see now because I don't really, I don't really think we're gonna see a character swap. I think the Hattori was doing just fine, and uh, I'm wrong. Yeah, I figured it would be a swap. Uh, Bryn definitely makes a lot of sense. The spear, like you said, the Hattori had these moments. Uh, I thought the sword was kind of the thing that was doing a little bit better for Heisen, but overall can't complain I, the, too much. A very similar position. I thought that the the sword on Val was looking better too, but maybe he just wants that burst burst range. I, I, I think the thing is that Simple was so good at breaking everything up with the axe before, and he still was, but it's hard to break up boots sometimes when they're going off, and he hasn't been able to get in to help as often. Yeah, they really need to just find an answer to Knees, but a downlight into the GCN SIG. It might work out for him as Knees looking for the top of the map KO. Try to continue to chase, gonna be put in a weird spot after that recovery, Whoa, but that break up with his teammate ends up stopping it. Sarah will get them on the board once again. Team combo again coming out from the blue team. Ted picks up the handoff, but Simple's got some movement. The weapon toss makes it none. Yeah, make sure he solidifies that. But a revenge KO right back there from Heisen as well. Heisen and Simple trying to force that game five uh, away from Ted and Knees. There, my God, this, like everybody's swinging, but nothing is happening. But the thing <laughs> is, is, it's so difficult. Like these two teams, is he who strikes first will probably lose out, uh, being the one to commit first, especially against someone like Simple who's always waiting. Yo, but Simple is getting a lot of hits here. Heisen going aggressive again on that edge guard, throwing out that ground pound, got away with it, no punishes. 
Still here on the lance. Looked like he was trying to hover over towards that axe to try and get that KO power to get rid of the blue team. Knees chasing, but Knees so focused on to, uh, who was that? Simple. Heisen was able to go ahead and see all that stock. Nice, and Jess hits the side light there, ends up backing away. No GC down light attempted on the right side. It's going to be simple with the edge guard down there. They want that game five. Looking like it might happen right here. Knees going deep off stage. Look for a ground pound. Nothing really comes of it, though. Nair punishes the dodge, and that's going to be a free side air. Gets more damage on him. But ne uh, here comes Ted to get the help. He needed the help. He was getting oh, caught. Oh. Yo, but the hits hit. They get the KOs. It's last stocks. This is the decider between a game five or a podium. You love to see it. It's extremely stressful for our party, parties involved right now, especially for Knees. It's currently in a very awkward spot. There goes Ted to go block him. But here comes Whoa, the ground pound. Knees needs to try to get back. There's the save. But now Whoa, Ted's Ted. off. The pogo clashes out. Ted gets back safely. Simple. Reads wrong and ends up hitting his teammate. But the NSIG pickup. And now it's all left to Ted. Perfect switch over from Heisen immediately oh. as soon as you saw it. And now that Ted is going to avoid him. You have to back off. Yes, tries to get a side light, side air, uh, excuse me, side light recovery or something going. But he's going to have to dodge down, gets the Nair. Very weird spot, but this is not undoable. Man, if I'm ever in a plane crash, heaven forbid, I want Simple with me because that man is a parachute. That side light just to stop that ground pound force that was hitting Heisen, like just those minor moments. And then, of course, going back to that weapon toss from a previous set, like he is so good at keeping Heisen alive. I'm not going to lie. Instead of just thinking of a normal parachute. No, yeah, I want simple well, on you, my back. You, yeah, you said I that. I want simple on my back. I'm thinking of like, like when Mario would turn himself with like a big balloon when he was floating with his, <laughs> it's just, it's just him floating above you holding a parachute. All right, well, he was able to come in and get that save, like you said, and that is exactly what you needed as now you have saved your bracket life for at least one more attempt. It's game five. Game five. Either one of these teams, whoever wins, gets that podium, gets that top three knees. Already trying to play that edge guard, but Heisen gets back. Activate jump scare on Q, but it did not catch him. However, you still have to always be very wary of that, even at earlier damage windows, because it sends you far enough the way to line up free 2v1, but Heisen getting a lot, but there's Ted once again, always there to try and help him out. Not enough, though, as it's going to be Knees who falls first. No, but... The trade out as Ted does take down Simple. Heisen did a really good job just kind of walling out knees on that right side. Right now, Ted is trying to find ground, and it's been a bit difficult to do so. Currently getting chased out by Simple. Meanwhile, uh, Knees just doing his best to kind of separate Heisen away from capitalizing once Simple had him lined up. Yeah, now it's the red team that is kind of splitting up this blue team. Knees again. Going for these juggles. They're still hunting for that KO onto Heisen. Ooh, if he, if Knees was there to capitalize off that Nair, it might have been good, but it doesn't matter though. They get rid of the two people who were sitting on the third stock. Once again, very close game. Uh, bad spot for Simple. Well, weapon toss up does help him get out. Yeah, give himself some protection there as Ted kind of committed to that ground pound. This is, I, 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 Simple is currently running for dear life, but that is uh, that is the weapon I'd like to see in Simple's hand as well. That even though the the lance was looking good before, the axe was always was breaking up. They granted you need to go up there and break that up. Knees is currently keeping Heisen uh, nowhere near the stage. Yeah, I mean Knees was just juggling Heisen in the sky every time Heisen tried to get past. Started eating those nares and recoveries. Heisen does manage to get back onto the stage. Recovery not enough. Will take down Ted. That's going to be one. Neutral Light's going to go ahead and send him off stage. Weapon Toss does miss, but they still have access to the axe. So the knees can't be very, he has to be very careful when he approaches. The Sarah actually will just do it, but there goes Simple as well. Heisen sitting on two stocks, everyone else on one. Eyes on Heisen. Can he turn this into a bigger lead for the red team? Down like ground pound from Simple. Very possible. Heisen is trying to, I mean, the axe in hand does prevent them from just kind of rushing in recklessly. You don't want to take that straight hit damage from axe right now. As you see, Heisen's just swinging just for the sake of keeping them out. And simple. Utilizing those weapon tosses in those edge guards, trying to keep himself alive. Heisen going for those exhausted recoveries again. He's looking for access to a weapon, does get it right now. Ted's going to get boxed away. It's a free 2v1 onto Knees, but they accidentally hit each other, breaking up what was almost a good 2v1. Yeah, they got stacked up. Heisen going to fall. Simple needs to survive the scramble here. He's starting to take some damage. He's going for the chase. Recovery's going to catch Ted, though, and Ted's not gone just yet. Fade away Dare from Simple. He's just trying to hold on. Knees with the turnaround, the dare from Simple. Red team starting to hit each other a little bit more often than they would like. That's yet another one that's going to be a lineup that doesn't get the knockout onto uh, Simple, though. Simple sneaks his way back on, still not gone just yet. Recovery, not enough. 
So many people in the red. This is this is mistake territory for everyone except for Heisen. Heisen gets the Seer though. That's oh! gonna be the close as they stop them. They get the W. Heisen and Simple take that trip right back to the podium that you would expect to see them at and stopping this incredible run from Ted and Knees, but it was by no means not possible that might have gone the other way. That was so close all the way down to the end. Yeah, that absolutely could have gone either direction. We saw the double recovery from Heisen that got both blue team members. I really feel like that was the pivot point. That yep. was when the red team was like, all right, we kind of got this. And I love this final play from Heisen, right? He hits the cider, goes for a weapon toss to the left because he's already thinking about his opponent. Ends up being a neutral light that catches him and Simple's there with that jump side air to finish. Yes, and Heisen, even with all the trade-offs they had at the end, Heisen really picked it up. You see that damage spread across there. I believe it was over 600 in total for Heisen. Uh, on both weapons, it didn't really matter. He was right in the fray, saving him, but that... That's those two small graphs on the blue team right there. Those early KOs they were able to find really made the big difference. Uh, they got really, really close to them having a big lead, but because of those early KOs that happened, that kind of shifted things away. It didn't allow them to build on that lead they were looking for. And I believe you mentioned it around stock two, red team started separating them again. That's exactly how they were succeeding back in game one. They were able to find that once again, they, granted not so much in the last stock, but they were able to find it to force that game five. And now they have to go into the, uh, the arguably top team, one of the, like, the <laughs> favorites of the region. They now have to go into Godly and Fozy. That's yep. just uh, out of the frying pan and into the fire situation right there. P PRs one and two, but it's also like PRs one and two and three, four could just be interchanged because you got Acton and Blaze sitting on the top end of that. So like you said, you, you won, but did you really? Uh, because now you have to go up against Godly and Fozy. Uh, they also have, in this uh, history they've played against each other, currently Godly and Fozy are up 2-0. Yeah, kind of makes a lot of sense there. Um, again, this has kind of been the story for EU doubles is like it's Godly Fozy, Acno Blaze, and everyone else scrapping for a third. And you know what? Heist and Simple, they got that third. But of course, they're hungry yes. for more. Also, just to kind of skew the votes for everybody in the chat. Look, I know a lot of y'all, not a lot of you haven't really picked this, but Underdog gets you a lot more points. So you should think about the fact that Heist and Simple just clutched out a really good set. And it's possible they might get the W. So make sure you spread them, spread them apart. Hey, Dude, I, hey it went up a little bit. All right. That's working, how I working. do predictions. No lie. I just like, hey, the, if I put in only like 10 channel points, I could get back a million. Like, let's do yeah, this. Yeah, this like, is a pretty good exchange. Like, I hold the L at least for that, but I only lost a little bit where everyone else lost a whole bunch. So I'll, I'll, I'll take that. But still, uh, again, we're talking about the strength of Godly and Fozy. This is a very difficult team to take out. Uh, they did get taken out by Acno and Blaze, but it doesn't mean that they're invincible. We're going to get into game number one here on Demon Island. And we're seeing Fozy actually starting this one off with the Zariel. No cross for this one. Saw that it didn't work out too well in that last set. I mean, I'm not going to lie. After what I was watching with the Zariel when it showed back up, I want to see it more. I, I think that his accuracy, especially we talk about that offstage play before, where he caught, I believe it was, I want to say it was like two to three neutral sigs just off of an edge guard. Like, you don't feel comfortable in that position oh. ever. Right now, uh, it's going to be Godly, who thematically has continued to be at least at the beginning of the set, the first person to lose his stock. Well, I, I can't blame him. He was going for a big edge guard there, and you saw Heisen make that rotation over, hit that ground pound onto Godly, and Fozy just wasn't able to deny that edge guard opportunity. But thankfully, trades have happened. Yeah, Godly uh, answering right back. Uh, this could be a big opportunity. They do miss the ground pound. Simple going for a big play right there, and they try it 2v1 up, but Godly only taking really one there. Bozy holding it down for the blue team. Can't get that follow-up there, but you see Godly really hunting hard. Double there, catches uh, Heisen. And Bozy trying to catch Heisen as he sneaks above him, but can't really get Whoa. past the recovery, but that's a double KO strike. And that is Godly now down two. Dude, that's what you want with that spear side zig is like line up and get both of them with it and it leads to KOs. That's now Godly onto his final stock here and Red Team might just want to take him out. Yeah, Heisen is, uh, I mean, this, this switch over the Brin has been working very well, too. But here's a 2v1. Free punish right there, so that's one. You can never count out the blue team because of the danger. We said earlier that team combos they had. Uh, Godly sitting here on Val. doesn't really matter who he's playing. He's going to get it lined up. You know, and some fantastic edge guard play coming out from Godly. Just getting good damage. Simple has not fallen for that end sig once, but that time he doesn't have a choice as it was a follow-up off of Godly's setup. All right, and they've brought this right back. Not only did they bring it back, but they've taken the lead. Uh, Godly is, this is where Godly is working at his best, even though he's behind. Sometimes he can be dif difficult to knock out. Granted, I might be just completely wrong. Ooh, Sneaks away. Uh-oh. Godly gets past it. Heisen's just taking damage from Simple. Like, he's trying to get out of the way, but Simple is still swinging. 
That is, uh, I mean, we did see them kind of hit each other a bit more in that previous set. I figured maybe it was just nerves in the close situation. But you have to make sure you trade off. They do they do end up getting godly, but they took so much damage amongst each other, too, that Fo Fozy just needs to get rid of Isaac. Yeah, you can see him swinging, throwing out all these signatures, because he knows if he catches one, real possibility of closing out this one, or at least going into the 1v1 with that stock advantage. Right now, he's still the healthiest person on the screen. Yeah, he took a bit. He wasn't trying to commit to anything either. He was trying to get simple to hit Heisen. He, you saw the spot dodges in the way. Just like make sure he avoids it. Uh, and he still hasn't committed to anything. He's trying to make sure he catches that one straight up mistake. And he's separating them immaculately at the moment. Yo, he's doing such a good job making sure he is not taking trades. He's just putting out the damage. Fozy is. Fozy is. Oh, the, oh the there's the save. My God, Fozy has just been so good at this point. They, here's where things get bad. Uh, now Simple uh, has the ability to try and cover, but that recovery won't be enough. Wait a minute. Tyson was not able to interrupt. Fozy one hit away. The neutral light will do it, and Fozy is going to clutch out the 1v2. That was a bait and a half. Just stood there so like weapon toss in front. Okay, you think you're going to do something? No, I'm just going to go ahead and neutral you again. Fozy just continues to be the theme of like, similar to Akno and Blaze. When you look at the history, it's like, oh, Akno, right? Akno, Akno, Akno. No, Blaze is the one that's been getting the job done. And as strong as Godly is, Fozy has been, like, the ace of the staff for that team so far. Yeah, he's definitely been holding it down, putting out the most damage. 588 dealt from Fozy in that one. See right there, those early KOs that happened once again for Godly, but they were able to bring it back. A big part of that, of course, was they were so hyper-focused on trying to knock Godly out, they started putting way too much damage on themselves at one point. We're going to switch it over yeah. to Miami Dome, though. They definitely, like, saw the opportunity, right? Like, they took down Godly so quick, but they also took a lot of damage in that hunt, and uh, unfortunately, it did not work out for him. Left side, though, simple. Went for the turnaround. You saw that ground pound, but he actually backed away afterwards as the combos are swinging onto Simple. And Godly, even in disadvantage, still pushing. He's going to get him potentially. Yes, he does. Eisen? Eisen's going to get the save. Oh, oh there's Fozy to say thank you for lining that up for me as they never let him get back. Yo, that was Fozy playing safety. Like, he's already in the end zone, and he's just waiting for that pass. It's beautifully executed by them. And uh, currently, uh, this is a very rare instance where A, Godly wasn't the first one to lose his stock, but B, simple falling that early. It's, it has not been, it's not not been easy to get uh, the KOs on a simple. Yo, but simple with the turnaround. Dare is going to take out Godly. Right side, Fozy avoids the ground pound. Might get the turnaround, and he will as Heisen's going to fall. All right, now here's the big thing. Last time that the red team had a really bad match was when Simple fell two stocks early, and it's looking similar as we see Fozy fall, but there's only Heisen, uh, there's only so much Heisen could do to contest along with Godly for a long period of time. Yeah, that's one thing that is uh, a bit of a rough patch for this red team, right, is like Simple's a fantastic uh, parachute. But can Heisen really play that role? Because when the blue team starts barreling down onto Heisen, or uh, onto Simple, things get a little rough. He, misses, he dodges away from the recovery, smartly going over to the left, but that was until Heisen got hit along with the recovery. He couldn't get in the way to stop Godly. Oh, Simple. He's down to that final stock. Godly's already putting out the damage onto him as well. Simple can't follow up off the neutral light. Simple, they're, trying, they're looking for Godly right now. Godly's gonna sneak his way over there. Does fly a ground pound in the midst of all that. Godly that was his looking. teammate. Wait, try again. Nice, chased out jump. Simple's gonna get away from that. Will survive for a little while here as both Fozy and Godly are trying to swing onto him. Fozy oh, Fozy acc accidentally falling offside of the stage there, so that brings things a little bit closer here. Uh, Godly completely unarmed and somehow still just playing right, <laughs> just playing right in the <laughs> middle of both. He's gonna get knocked out most likely for this here. He's uh, whoa. whoa. Wait. Okay, good movement. Okay, all right. <laughs> you saw Simple really duck underneath the map because he's like, I don't want to give you this nair for the chase dodge job. I'm just gonna get away from you. Fozy almost converted that into a KO, which would have been dire for this red team. Speaking of Simple, by the way, as well, Simple fell early. And now we're at an even game. He really picked it up on defense. Uh, hasn't really been getting hit too, too much since. Heisen and Simple both did similar damages. And all they need is maybe just a few straight hits to completely even the damage on Godly, too. Yeah, he really turned up the evasion the second he got down to that final stock too early. But it won't last for long as Godly hits the ground pound. All left to Heisen as the team combo is attempted, but Fozy wasn't in position. This time, Godly is. Well, definitely got a lot better because of that pickup from Simple for sure, because uh, all, all Heisen needs is to think about the next game, because instead of being able to find Fozy, they end up falling, pushing them, uh, 
Wait, who's who's up in the lead? I, <laughs> it's, I think it's 2 0 Fozzy Godly. Okay, all right, I had to think about that. It's yeah. 2 0 Fozzy Godly. But um, still, at least Simple and Fozzy were able to bring it back towards the end. Simple in particular picking up that defense, but um, Godly, at least for one, didn't fall super early. That definitely made a huge difference. One thing I wish we tracked, which I don't know if we do or have the capability of, is like the damage that you deal over time. We have the damage taken over time, and we, we kind of saw like, if you look at those graphs that like, he took a lot of damage really early and then it kind of slows down, but like he only put out 268 damage, something like that in the, in the last game. And I really want to know how much of that was like that final stock clutch up moment and how much of that was like yeah. uh, early. I, I definitely think that I think a majority of that was the last stock. Uh, I, I for sure I think you're right on the money with that. So even though it was a small amount, he helped get them back into the game. We're gonna turn back to Demon Island though. Currently looking down the barrel of a 2-0 lead and possibly the end of their bracket run. Yeah, and we're seeing Simple make the swap away from the Ogrim that he's been playing all day to something with no carryover and no survivability right now as he's uh, making his way back to the stage. Yeah, trying to uh, avoid getting knocked out at the oh. moment is a very difficult task as Godly has been so quick to get those immediate slide off ground pounds between the last game, this game, it's just, he's so hard to avoid. Man, he is uh, setting up Asana, trying to get everyone to go to Yoga because he's throwing out those end sigs and he is putting out the damage. Side sig this time connects on a simple and oh. Simple's got to avoid the ground no, pound. No, Simple, no, you can't have it happen twice. And Heisen also has just been getting beat down as well. This is a Bro. very bad, very, very bad deficit that they're looking at right now. Dude, Godly's edge guards. Okay, Fos, he's the one who's like, stop it. You're too good. <laughs> they got double KO'd, but it feels like it was because of Fos. It's yeah. like, look, 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 look. Okay, we need to slow it down. All right, we can't have you dominating this much with gauntlets. Okay, slow it down. You're like, you're, you're, you're too, you're too much of a highlight reel right now. Down light into the recovery comes out from Fosy. Simple. Holding on for dear life on this final stock. There's still two stocks left on both of the blue team members. Yeah, I mean, if they can, if the, well, I mean, obviously, you need to play perfectly. Uh, if you can find an early edge guard, this is the stage to do it here on Demon Island. What toss down. Did they get a hold of him? Oh. No, instead get caught by Fozy just chilling at the ledge. Whoa, and Godly ends up following down with the ground pound as well. That Fozy end sig. Uh, like, it's super good. We yeah. already all know that. Nobody's, like, surprised by that. But one thing that's really helpful for it is it's a grab stick. Nice grab pound. That was simple. actually really good. This, I mean, you are in nightmare scenario case at the moment because you're staring down a 2v1 wall, so Godly has access to D-Sig at ledge if he could get to the gauntlets. But, I mean, fo Simple's mi all right. Simple's efforts <laughs> were, were valiant, but it is over. As we see another... W go into their lead. They are now up 3-0, not only in this, but lifetime record against them 3-0. That is now going to force Heisen and Simple to sit on the bottom part of the podium, but they do get that top three finish here in Winters. Godly's ground pounds, his edge guards and everything in between. His ability to pick apart this red team at the very end was just like, he turned on God mode. Yep, that's the problem with fighting Godly throughout the set, is even at the start when it looks like things aren't doing well, it's about as the match progresses, because his ability to adapt to what you are doing is second to none. Uh, and also a very fearful thing of him that we've always uh, touted is the fact that his movement hovering right around you in particular is so good. When you start seeing that happen in twos, when you have someone like Fozy backing you up, there's no shot you're going to hit him. Uh, so uh, that definitely made a big difference as the match progressed. I mean, uh, when you look at the graph, and uh, maybe maybe you're a little smooth brain like me, and you see the triangles, no. and you're like, is this is the triangle really small and pointy, or is it really short and flat? And then you look at the graph, and you're like, oh, there's a lot of really small pointy triangles on this team, and there's a lot of really flat long triangles yeah, on the other and, team. And then you had that, the, you have the, the the real small one this, that this, happened oh, over look, here. We, we got it in big oh, form. Oh, we got it. We got look, hey, we got we got another one. tiny so, triangle cringe bad. <laughs> Big triangle, cool, strong. Man, I left you all alone when you decided to go and say smooth raid, and I, <laughs> that's my fault. <laughs> Still, you can see, like, the, the defense from Godly for one just picked up a ton. He took, like, no damage towards the end, but it was those early KOs that happened onto uh, Heisen, and also specifically Simple again. The theme of uh, most of those bad matches was Simple falling early and often, and that happened three separate times. So... and. It's, it's tough because, like, when you fall twice really quickly, like, people are going to look at that and be like, oh, you're the problem. You're the one yeah. who messed up. And, like, 
I, I'm not saying that he wasn't struggling, but also like when you swap the roles and it's Heisen the one who's kind of getting hit early, Simple's a really good person to like take some of that pressure away. And on the other side, Heisen wasn't capable of doing that, which again, I'm not like, it sounds like I'm just really bashing Heisen right now, but like it's just kind of the way that they play. Heisen tends to be that front position and when he can't do it, that's when you see this team fall apart. I mean, I sound foolish at the very beginning. I said, I said, man, Simple's really hard to knock out and then got double KO three separate games. So, uh, I mean, that's just, the, that's just the thing though, when you look at this team dynamic, Fozy is very explosive. It doesn't matter whether he's on Mazzario or not, he gets the job done. But then when you have someone like Godly, who's able to, I, th I think we saw three separate times where he won an edge guard simply by sliding off into a ground pound. Most people are usually pretty reactive to that. But Godly mixes you to the point where you just get caught. It's like, oh, well, that's actually really bad. I was expecting maybe to dip around him, look for maybe another dare attempt or something. But it, he just kept it simple. And that's not that's not really godly as Godly likes the style. Yeah. So the fact that his simplicity is key, it's like, oh, well, I wasn't expecting this. Well, I think there was there was definitely a stylishness to his edge guards, right? Like there was a lot of these moments where it was like this really brief pressure situation where he's just hitting these ground pounds. Like he had one ground pound that like came out of nowhere and was still a follow up off of Fozzie. Like he's doing a really good job of like adding in a little bit of flair to yeah. his ground pounds. And like it's it's so funny because again, looking at the numbers of that last game, he did less damage than Fozzie did. Fozzie was the one who, who was still putting out more damage, but Godly's the one who's just like being this big old threat. He's just scaring opponents time and time again. Yeah. As long as you're working together in unison to make things work properly, you can get the job done, which is exactly what they do. And we're going to go to a very short break as we have the rematch of the top two teams at EU coming right back. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
It all comes down to this. Is this the start of a new dynasty of Godly and Bozy, or is this Akno and Blaze 2 Electric Boogaloo? We'll find out in this grand final set because, of course, we're here in the grand finals of the Winter Championship. Absolutely. Doubles. Like you said before, this is now a just one game favor of Akno and Blaze, but they've been going back and forth every time they fought against each other. Currently sitting up on a 3-2 lifetime set couple. That could change as it could possibly go to a 4-3 if Godly and Fozzy get that reset. They're going to need it, too, because, again, they're coming from the elimination side. They just took the L in the winner's final moments ago, but maybe they've learned something different in the meantime. Yeah, and this is also Godly and Fozzy, who just came off of a really dominant set a second ago, picking it up a ton. It seems like their, uh, their synergy is right at point, and also the most fearful factor, it seems like Godly woke up. Well, we'll see if he's awake enough. I think it's time for a little bit of a clip show. I keep hearing the audio cut out, so I'm honestly not sure. I am th then possibly we're going to take a look, uh, a little, little showcase back at what has led up to this point. was above 500, except for Axel, who is at 218. Yeah, meanwhile, has to get by the neutralized of the ledge, does dodge past everything, and that's good one. I mean, that D-Light recovery was enough to make Akno scared. You see him playing on this right side wall. Oh, that recovery doesn't hit. It's between Godly and Akno. Who's going to fall first? Way out. Yeah, that recovery ends up giving him a chase to dodge, getting back to that wall again, but aside... Is he still covering? Blaze has yet to pick up a weapon for a hot minute, but you can see him trying. Heisen is, uh, I mean, this, this switch over the bread has been working very well, too. Here's a 2v1, free punish. Bad. Uh, now Simple uh, has the ability to try and cover, but that recovery got a lot better because of that pickup from Simple for sure, because uh, all, all Heisen needs is down. Did they get a hold of him? No, instead get caught by Fozzy just chilling at the ledge. But, I mean, Fo Simple's, all right, Simple's efforts were... <laughs> All right, well, it is time for the Grand Finals. As we were just talking about it, it is that rematch. And this is what everybody expects to see from these two dominant forces. The BCX lineup that happened before as well was phenomenal. Here as well in Winters, it is not unexpected. And this is the tone setter for the year as Godly and Fozzy try to continue to hold that PR number one and two in spot over the normal dominant force that is Akno and Blaze. I mean, Akno and Blaze, again, household names, dominant forces in 2v2s, but I think they've got a little bit of a chip on their shoulders. Mm -hmm. By and large, everybody was saying Godly Fozzy. They're the ones to win this. They're the ones who got second place at the World Championship. Championship. Now, Akno and Blaze are like, well, they're going to get second place at the Winter Championship, mm -hmm. too, because they are coming in winner side of the Grand Finals. We're going to find out right now if Akno and Blaze are able to get that W, and they are a massive threat at that, of course. Uh, definitely why I leaned into them potentially going into winning this whole thing today is the fact that you don't just have something like BCX happen and not have a massive chip on your shoulder going into this. You know the preparation was high, and they are coming in here hot. Yeah, they've definitely practiced a lot of things. In particular, the cannon has been that thing that Akno has been trying the most. And you're seeing him started off with that Sidra pick. On the other side, no messing around on Fozzy. He is going in straight into that Zariel for game number one. But the damage is definitely in the red team's favor. Yeah, just missing on the KO there from that D-Sync. But they do get a KO instead onto Blaze, who had Woo! amazing control. But still, uh, excuse me, Akno not falling. A good dip away and amazing punish right there from Blaze to make sure he punishes him for that. I love that follow-up. Up from Godly into the Eden Sig. I also love that side Sig from Akno to get back on the stage and swing onto Fozzy. Of course, we expected these two teams to be evenly matched, but you can see their health even as well as Akno hits that recovery. And Akno swinging right back. This is, uh, I mean, this should not be a long set by any means. These matches should fly. As you see, the stock's already flying right now. Akno currently at the bottom. It doesn't Ooh. matter though. High, excuse me, Akno sitting on this third stock still for quite some time, refusing to give it up. 
And you got to give credit to Blaze there. Fozzy had the signature on Akno when Blaze comes in down airs and keeps the teammate alive. Akno putting out extra damage, thanking his lucky stars that he can swing more with this first stock. Even with, the, yeah, that first stock finally falling, they instead still get Godly first. And look at how much damage they applied onto Fozzy too. And even before, when Akno was in that deep red, he was still off stage trying to catch that double dare. He was pressuring, but this matters a ton. They got rid of Blaze when they needed to as well. So even with that defense, we're back to an even game even though Afozi is damaged quite a bit, it's not as bad of a lead now. Yeah, they still are playing from behind, but they got to find a way to get that damage advantage or at least tie up that damage department. Fozzi, you're seeing him play very safe. He does not want to fall and leave Godly in that 1v2, but it's already kind of risking that 1v2 by playing so far back. And Godly is that big threat, of course, to just pop off at any given time. Well, they need it right now. Godly needs to find something soon onto, onto Akno, but... Blaze is also a massive menace to keeping Acto safe, as you've seen, but he does finally get caught going around. for the anchor in a way closer game now. Oh, and the team combo, but I don't think Godly Sidesick connected there. Might have released a little too early on that one. It was enough to get this damage basically back. This could go either way. Is it going to be Godly or Blaze who falls? But Blaze with the edge guard. Akno eats the ground pound. Fozzy going out there too. The weapon toss gets him out, and Godly still holding on to this stock. Blaze has been taking a decent amount of damage, and so has Akno. So Godly picking up exactly where they needed. Godly completely unarmed, trying to get through. But there's Fozzy just body blocking at the moment to allow him to try and sneak on. Man, Fozzy must drive a manual because he is hitting that clutch as he hits the side light. Doesn't hit the recovery, though. Akno going for the turnaround. Godly with the down air. Who's going to fall? It's going to be Godly. Fozzy makes oh, it a trade. Oh, my goodness. He has shifted it into final gear at this moment. Blaze sitting on that last stock, and he has a lot of damage applied because of how well Fozzy kept Godly alive. They were able to apply enough damage to get Akno first. Yo, he's got everything going for him. He's got the damage. He's got the health. He's got the neutral lights, which we saw him KO with earlier. But Blaze now has that lance in hand. Fozzy continuing to just play. I mean, both of these players right now in a beautiful spot to try and get that W when Akno and Bla uh, Blaze, excuse me, Akno is usually the one you talk about. Godly's the one you usually talk about. But these two are that defensive 2v2 player of the year category players. As we see the KO come through, Fozzy once again getting yet another W for the blue team when they needed it most. It's so funny because, like, the discussion has shifted to, like, which one of them is the best EU 2v2-er, and that's them, like, kind of battling for that title. Yeah. Like, the tug of war also between the greatest support that you could ever ask for between Blaze and Fozzy has been incredible, going back and forth between the two. Uh, Fozzy really picking it up a ton, and Godly refusing to give up that stock made a big difference because if he didn't, then we're looking at a 2v1 on the Fozzy, but instead it is game number two with Godly and Fozzy in the lead. And we're seeing the change over to Fortress of Lions. No character swaps on either side though. Akno still sticking with that Sidra. We did see the Onyx earlier and Godly's already going in. The team combos starting to put up the damage onto Akno. Akno just trying to sneak his way above, but at the moment, uh, that is a pretty awkward spot for Godly. Going to sneak his way back underneath, though, because of Fozzy being right in between the two. Couldn't really commit to a neutral light, and it's going to be Akno who falls first. Oh, Fozzy just off the mark with that neutral air. Could have seen that team combo convert into a KO, but they're still getting some great damage put out onto the threat team. Fozzy's in position. Godly with the Nair into the recovery. Fozzy backs away. That was like max distance off of that Punisher with that neutral eye to get a combo going. So they're Whoa. still getting them. Meanwhile, here's a Blaze in a weird spot. Both of them in a weird spot. Missing out on the ground pound. Fozzy <laughs> gonna box his way out. Gets back up from the recovery. Akno does fall. Excuse me, Akno did not fall. Godly fell, but Akno's taking a lot of damage. Meanwhile, take a look at the Blaze and Fozzy stocks again. They have been holding it down. Dude, they are finding the stock extensions. I was just baffled by the unarmed plays from Fozzy, though. Like, he was sweat beating, and rather than go to the stage, he's looking for ground pounds, looking for hits, looks for a nair to hit Godly back up so he can get back onto the wall. And he's still living on that initial stock. This is my mode. This is my game, and you're trapped in here with me. Fozzy doesn't care, but Fozzy does finally fall. Meanwhile, Akno sporting only one stock left. Akno, however, is one of the more difficult people to edge guard. So I think if he wants to try and play that sidewall camp game to allow them to get some damage on uh, the blue team, it might not be so bad. Yeah, we've definitely seen see him take that backline role before and let Blaze kind of go in, be that initiator. Interesting options there from Akno as he hits the downlight, which is a combo starter, but he is going to convert into a side air on a godly. There's that backline gameplay right there. As soon as he saw the ability to blitz, he ran right through, got a godly, and now we're at an even game. 
Yeah, when you give him the ball, he can make some plays, and he's keeping that stock count even. Akno is still the most damaged, though. He's still the target of the blue team. You already know those rushing yards are picking up for him a ton, but currently the defense is picking up for the blue team. They haven't taken too much damage in a while. That's not going to be a KO off the top recovery just yet. Gets Godly by accident in the middle of that, though. Doesn't matter as they recovery does get rid of Blaze. That's still keeping the lead in favor of the blue team. Akno eats the weapon toss. Blaze is in position. Gonna try to help out. Akno taking his time. You saw him just kind of hold as Blaze comes in. He can't hit the Sair to keep Akno alive. Rare miss, m like, movement management from Akno. He kind of just jumped right into that. But you oh, take man. that every day. And now this is three stock lead. You got to deal with two weapon tosses over. Gets away. But that, after the sweat feeds, it was pretty much a free guaranteed punish. And Godly and Fozy one game away from getting that reset. The two big things to call out for that game right there. Fozy, so good with those bow and zigs. Leaded to both of those KOs, right? That one on Acto and this time on Blaze. You see it in both clips. And then, of course, we've talked about Godly's walk off ground pounds, but he does it again. He's so good at pulling those out at the last minute when you get just a little too close to the corner. You know what's going to happen, and you still get hit by it. That's how good these players are, no matter which way you do it. But that one, of course, perfectly positioned by them. And wow, wasting no time. We're right back into it swinging, but we have switched off. You mentioned it earlier. It's something we're not unused to seeing. We're going to see Akno go over to the old faithful Koji. Yeah, this is um kind of a scary position for Akno, though. He's the one who came in with this kind of new pick with that Onyx, with that Sidro, with the cannon. And now he's kind of going back to the old classics, and it makes me a little nervous for his mental, because if this doesn't work, he's going to go to the Brin, and if that doesn't work, then things start to get scary. <laughs> and it's really, that is the, the engineer's blueprint. Like, did you put enough duct tape on? No. Okay, did you switch the Brin? No. Okay. And uh, they do have data collecting time, at least. They are currently down two games, so that depends on whether they feel reserved to just give up Ooh. this first one. But Akno not feeling that way as he gets the first KO, not only on Fozy, but the double KO as well on Godly. And that's why he swapped over to the Koji, proving me wrong. Utilizing that bow to great effect. Had the side air for the edge guard and the distance with the down light, but does get called out there by the side air from Godly. Blaze, meanwhile, holding on to this first stock, and this is uh, this is axe swinging win uh, ranges right now. When you are currently that deep in damage, you have two. Swing, make them try to get hit just to get that uh, slight damage on. Yeah, those neutral lights are going to add up to a KO onto Blaze, and they're keeping this one even. Akno able to get over to the sword, immediately box him away. There's Blaze to try and volley off, but doesn't really have too much to follow up. Meanwhile, they're swinging again. Akno in a weird spot. Godly going out there trying to capitalize, but Blaze got in the way to Ooh. make him have to change his mind. Akno hits the side stick. He even charged that one for the little bit of extra force on that second swing. Team combo connects onto Fozy. Fozy gets launched up into the air, and he's taking a lot of damage. Nice three piece. There goes the save from Blaze, getting him out of, uh, getting Akno out of that combo. Meanwhile, Fozy's getting right on. D-Light Crown Pond just to separate him. The launch from Blaze, immediate rotate over towards Godly. Yeah, everybody who's in the two stock windows currently deep in the red. That's one, that's two, and Blaze could join them very soon. Godly, meanwhile, is currently sitting at that one. He needs to he needs to just get his damage in, which is exactly what they did last game. Even when he was behind, they're all at one stock apiece here, and he clutched up when they needed to allow Fozy to get the uh, to basically win that game. Yeah, the question is if he can do it twice in a row. This one would lead to a reset and a final best of five. Edge guard opportunity. Akno comes in, but it's on to Fozy. Godly putting himself right between the two, sandwiching himself so they can uh, uh, maybe hit each other. But uh, Fozy's defense avoiding the recoveries. That recovery will find its mark, but not take out Godly yet. Not quite enough, but Godly cannot afford too many more of those. Hits a side air, backs away. Fozy trying to be that middle man. Blaze with the punish, Akno with the follow-up, and now it's left to Fozy in the 1v2. Akno switch over to Koji, he's been looking phenomenal. They are currently one stock away from stopping what would be a straight-up 3-0. Start the possibility of reverse 3-0 here, but it's looking way better. Dude, Fozy is threading needles. He is diving between everything. Turnaround side sig, Bro, Blaze with the soft punish, but the Nair! Finally, 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 somebody was able to shut down Fozy in that position. It seems like when he's in the 2v1, it's like, come on, bring it. It doesn't matter. He's swinging right back. He's made people feel more <laughs> uncomfortable when he is the only one left than them being in a 2v1. But it is Akno and Blaze. Once they saw the burned resources, free punish with that Nair that puts him on the board here 2-1. to one. Yeah, uh, a Fozy trapped in the corner is a scary Fozy, man. He is just like starts swinging. He is windmilling his arms and just he, if you get in the way, you're going to get hit. But we're going into game number four. 
no surprise to see Akno sticking with that Koji. Not at all. Yeah, it was. Uh, that was the difference maker uh, for sure. The KOs were way more on the money. Not only that, but look at the anti-air game he's had. He's just prevented them from getting any safe movement in. Yeah, he's been hitting those juggles, and he controls a lot of space again. That bow downlight so effective, and he's also utilizing those sigs like that to yeah, cover well, you, a lot of you space. You gotta pump the brakes, dude. Yeah. You literally can't do anything. That does allow Blaze also to position himself on that soft platform to cover any jump overs. That uh, in, I think that's just one of the most dangerous parts about these two. Their positional control, especially since the switch to, uh, over to Koji, has just gone up so much. Oh, Fozy catches the teammate with the N Sig, and the follow up from Blaze leads to a two KOs in favor of the red team. Oh boy, all of a sudden things are starting to derail a little bit. Not a lot, but when you have moments like that and you give that to a team like Acto and Blaze, they're going to capitalize with a lot of damage before they give up these first ones. N Sig from Fozy, side Sig from Fozy. Yeah, looks like they're making me a whole liar at the moment. If they could go ahead and catch Akno, does not get the dare. Akno trying to reverse it right now. Recovery at least sends him out of there. But uh, they were they were swinging right back. Yeah, and you can see Akno. He's like, you know what? You're right. I'm going to chill out here for a little bit. Sit on that right side as Godly sneaks underneath with the ground pound. But the damage is still being done. Look at Godly's health as it ticks closer to red. And Godly is always in the fray. That's why he takes so much damage all the time. He's always right there boxing with everyone, but Godly getting sent super far away here, Duke. Uh, he's not gonna get caught up, but he does get caught by the D-Light recovery. Not enough yet. Oh, but the end stick from Akno actually catches Blaze there. Godly gets past all of it, hits both with the sideline, and ends up going for a chase dodge recovery. Nair from below oh. from Akno. He was chasing below Godly. That was so good for a chase from Godly for so long. He was target shifting, he went to the opposite way, recovered the uh, other way. So even though Blaze got the knockout, look how much damage he was able to apply to Akno at least before he did fall. Yeah, Godly making sure he's extending these stocks, trying to make it so this one stays close as Fozy goes for the edge guard, doesn't hit the ground pound. Akno eats the end sig, but he's got enough health. And Fozy sitting there just trying to sneak his way over towards Akno, but Akno boxing him away. Meanwhile, they're looking for some straight hit damage. Does that catch him at the bottom? But here comes Blaze chasing oh. him as well, going all the way up there trying to catch him, but Godly smartly going to the left. Blaze's, Blaze's axe plays just popping off onto Godly right now. Team combo opportunity into the NSIG. They need as much as they can get, but Fozy can't get the follow up. Oh. Godly eats the bow and it's all left to Fozy. All right, this is exactly where Fozy has been before. It falls here, but take a look at the damage markers. You have Akno at straight hit territory. Blazes within maybe one neutral loss to getting into KO windows. That's one. Can he get some damage on the Blaze right now? Blaze, try to sneak away and he does. Yeah, Blaze gonna make sure that he doesn't fight without the teammate there as Akno has so much health to play with. Fozy with a great spot dodge, avoids the side air. All right. Oh, that's a oh, the interrupt. Oh, if Akno did not get in there quick enough, that would have easily been a free punish and possibly a stock against Blaze. That's one thing that's really tough for Zariel in those 1v2s is Akno oh my with God. a big edge guard. That was like surging in the ER saying, all right, we're done here within two minutes. That is the person you want to pay to get the job done. That was so well executed by Akno. And also, once again, they stopped Godly and Fozy from getting the reset. They have now forced us to a game five. And to be honest, Duke, when we see these two teams show up, we usually start preparing mentally for the fact we're probably going to a game 10 in many aspects, but that depends, of course, if the reverse 3-0 just doesn't happen. Yeah, I mean, uh, I know I was critical of the Koji, but Akno really proven me wrong. On the other side now, it's on Fozy and Godly. Are they going to make the swap? Is Fozy going to go back? It's crazy because you can't even what? you can't even say like the meme though. I'm sorry, I wasn't familiar with your game because yeah. the Koji for <laughs> so long. It's like, you know what? I was familiar. But I was hating, I'm sorry. <laughs> and sometimes you need that hate. But you're right though, considering the fact that the cannon was so good all day, it makes sense to stay on the cannon legends. He didn't play this at all, but the Koji swap has really made such a huge difference. It, it really has. I mean, his bow plays in particular have just been on point. Sure, he's got the sword that he was using on the Sidra, but really it all comes down to this bow play. But this is game five. This is the decider between a champion title or a reset. We're on lines. It's time to show if we got some courage to see who's going to be the one to take the whole W here. Fozy, meanwhile, going for a ground pound right in the midst of everyone. Doesn't really get punished too hard. And also, speaking of Fozy with that ground pound, he has swapped back over. We saw the swap earlier, too, away from the Zarya when it wasn't working. 
Yeah, he likes this Orion. He's so good at utilizing those signatures of both characters, but now he's got that big swing and hitbox. Nice follow-up, goes off stage for the down oh line, and the end sig to finish it off. Akno took so much damage that the second down sig closes it out. Where was the Orion before? You should have just switched shooter. They are already up massively. Fozy doesn't fall right there either, so Fozy holding on to this. One, one straight hit essentially gets rid of him, as it will do it right there. But now it's on the red team. They, they have to speed run a stock. Yeah, they have to find a way to steal a stock away, because the blue team have already done one. Godly just getting in the combo? middle, just simply breaking up combos. That is the most key factor right now. You know the win condition for the red team is A, minimize damage as much as possible, or B, try to make one disappear fast. And that's what looks like they might make an opportunity here. Godly sneaks his way out. There's Fozy, though, the body block. Yeah, good rotation from Fozy to make sure that it's not just a 2v1 on the edge guard. Everybody makes it back safely. Very rare occasion for these two, but that is a a lot of follow-ups on the Godly, and that damage has been minimized a bit. There goes Godly. Blaze is taking some damage, but look at Akno, who hasn't been hit too much since those early stocks. Yeah, he's uh, definitely extended the stock. He knows that he needs to keep this one going to keep the dream alive, but he gets away from it. Bozy just trying to get in the middle of the fray. He is the one on borrowed time here, so he's just trying to get some extra damage while he can. Akno boxing him off with the neutral air, and, and now all of a sudden you're at D-Light Recovery, so you can't go try to challenge him too much. He's got to pick and choose when he wants to go in, but he can't let Godly take too much damage there. Blaze swinging on Godly as Fozy has to make that long trek back. You can see, like, the, the main focus here is Fozy's trying to get to Akno, and Akno's trying to bait Fozy. Godly! While they're trying to fight, but that is a huge drop! All of a sudden, for Godly going down, and now they have a 2v1. Fozy forced once again to show that he's capable of clutching this out. Dude, Akno went down to his final stock so early, but it's Godly who ends up losing it first. You gotta respect those edge guards from Akno. Fozy looking for the DC at the ledge. Akno just making sure he gets back up. Target shifting, trying to catch Akno jumping, but he won't. Akno's still not jumping in front of him, and they don't find the combo starter, but that's a lot of damage on both players on the red. Yeah, there's definitely a real possibility here. Fozy's got some help to play with, but he's going for some risky plays there with the ground pound. Team combo, it's just going to be the side sig. Fozy starting to take some more straight hit damage, but Fozy just needs one good play on either one of them. Blaze can fall here if he makes a mistake. Blaze sneaking his way around. Akno getting back access to the sword. Fozy hits the Sair. It's left to Akno in the 1v1. Fozy eats a Sair from behind. Weapon denied. This is the difference between a reset or Akno and Blaze taking it all right now. Spear is in the hand, tries to get the anti air, but does not find it. Fozy waiting for Akno, but Akno weapon toss is away. He wants to get access to that Sword Duke so he can try and simplify the KO options. Recovery won't be enough, enough. yet. Enough. Fozy's gonna deny some weapons. Where's the weapon spawn? Akno goes in. Side air, not enough. Akno is living so long, oh. but it's not long enough. We've got a reset. Fozy continues to prove that he is a contender for best 2v2 player in all of EU and potentially the game. He brings it back one more time. Multiple 2v1 comebacks throughout the day, and this one being the most important as he now forces that reset here in Grand Finals. Somebody's got to check this man's garage because every car has got the clutch. He is clutching those 1v2s time and time again. That drip game about to go up higher as well because the money in the bank is looking a little bit better. Possibly might find that grand finals victory and the switch over to the Orion. Look at that 511 damage done on that spear. It was a massive problem and a big amount of damage done for Blaze too. Blaze was so well, he, you could not have asked for better from Blaze when Akno fell twice early. You got to think back to the fact too, when you look at that graph Akno fell so early really quick but then look over at Godly too in a very similar position it feels like Akno and, and Godly are just right in the middle of everyone throwing hands but you can't do that in front of Blazer Fozy they are just such strong support on these two teams the thing I'm staring at is that graph of Akno in particular that really short stock where he got team comboed and got taken out and then he holds on to that third stock longer than Godly, longer than Blaze. And now it's the reset. Fozy ends up clutching out. But uh, this is what I was talking about, right? Once Akno loses that Ko uh, loses on the Koji, does he make the swap over to the Brin, which is kind of like the deepest pocket mm -hmm. pick he can go? 
I, I mean, to be honest, after that last game, it was mostly just kind of got caught off in the beginning, but he brought it all the way back that I don't, I don't want to see it switch. I don't really want to see it switch off because it looked really good towards the end. I feel like you might be on the money. If we do see that switch, that's where the mentality is starting to kick in. It's like, oh, it was, it was the, it was this. I, I have to go to a different game plan. I don't think you should. I think you should absolutely stay on that, even though you lost that game. It was down to the wire, and that was after you losing very early two stocks to still hold on the whole time. Yeah, I, I would definitely respect any decision he makes at this point, because, like, the Koji looked amazing. Actually, okay, not any decision. I would not <laughs> respect the Bryn pick, because I'd be like, why? But, I mean, not that Bryn's a bad pick, but it's just, like like we said, kind of a mental boom if he's going down to the Bryn. But if he goes back to the Sidra, I'd respect it. If he goes back to the Onyx, I'd yep. respect it. You know, good picks all around, but uh, I, I think the Koji's looking solid right now. Yeah, I think if, uh, if anything, you go to what was working for you before. But to be fair as well, the decisions being made by this man who has uh, sported so many Ws in the past, sometimes it's just the way he feels and that's going to work. And uh, there's a good reason why you saw in the graph earlier how many championships they have won together. So could be a bit of a difference as they're currently taking some time to try to figure out what they're going to do next. Remember, this is reset time, everybody. So if you thought the tournament was over, it is not. That has now knocked Akno and Blaze into the elimination side of bracket. Godly and Fozy looking like they might get yet another W on that win record try and move it back to their favor out of that uh three two range now it is three three so one of these two gets that win record but no switches which i'm pretty happy about to be honest i think it was phenomenal on all parties involved and i'm very glad also to see that fozy is staying on the orion because azario got figured out the orion has not yet the orion was interesting uh in the sense of like in winner's final when he made the swap to the orion didn't really work uh, but this time it did. He was hitting those SIGs. He was hitting those combos off of Godly. I'd be curious to see again, like, what happens on loss. That's where you see those big decisions being made. And so uh, right now we're taking a trip into Miami Dome. So we have some soft platforms in the way to try and mix up some of those landing options. Maybe that might uh, help out. Act on Blaze get away from some of those team combos blue team had. And it's still crazy to me to think thematically that Godly is always the one who takes the most damage to start off the match. Yeah, he just kind of runs in there and just lets the damage fly. And uh, Akno with the Tatami mat. Godly goes deep with the ground pound. Ends up hitting a lot of people, but nobody falls All just right. yet. Uh, Godly, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I wasn't familiar with your game. This man was able to put on a massive amount of strike back there, and it was instead Akno and Fozy who fell first. Yeah, trying to uh, maybe change it up. They both kind of got into a voice call and were like, hey, how about we let them be the ones to try to clutch this one new one at the end? <laughs> and say, hey, look, we've done enough, all right? But uh, there's that consistency of defense from Blaze again. He's just been so good at minimizing the amount of damage he does take, allowing Akno to try and play up front because he knows that he's going to have the support of him in the back. Yo, Godly comes over for that rotation, though. Put some threat on the Akno bullying him away from Fozy. Right now, though, Blaze is the one still sitting on that first stock. There's Bla yeah, and Blaze is right in the fray, too. It's not like he's, like, hiding. He is swinging and breaking up any combos, but Akno falls again. So once again, very similar situation to the previous game, Akno falling early twice. Now we got to see, will he do the extension again? Will he be able to survive again longer than Godly and Blaze? But... There's oh. Fozy. There's Godly. You know, to be fair, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to show that I, I'm going to apologize for this. I wasn't even paying attention to how much damage the blue team had already taken prior to Akno falling. So it was actually a lot closer. The big thing here is that Blaze is taking so little damage that it's you kind of look away from the fact that Akno fell because everyone else is playing an even game except for Blaze. Yeah, and I think Fozy started to recognize that. He was really putting out the hurt onto Blaze for a second there. Team combos again coming out from the red team. Just some quick burst as the NSIG hits the teammate. Yeah, you thought that Godly was going to line him up into it, but you were right. Fozy target shifted over to Blaze, and they obliterated that stock. Now, all of a sudden, everybody's back to an even playing field. Yo, but Blaze comes back just in time to eat the ground pound from Godly and keep Akno alive. Akno trying to get in there, break that up. But, of course, there goes Fozy. NSIG going to separate them again. Godly... The, the biggest fear factor for everybody so far is how good Godly's been on last stock in the red. It's not the first couple stocks. It's where it's when he's in this position. Yo, Fozy, he, he's playing like a man on fire. He is so hungry to just put out damage. He wants to make sure he is the most damaging person on the screen, and he is, he's doing it. Wait, first and second place, difference between potential steak or McDonald's. Just depends on what you want to do. Right now, he is hungry for that dub as he gets the coals out. Amazing job from Godly again. I cannot believe that it's like... He hits slow start. Anybody who knows what I talk about, uh, Reggie Gigas, the slow start, nothing happens at the beginning. 
half the attack power, chill time, sadness. But then all of a sudden, becomes the most powerful force on the screen. So how do you deal with that when he continuously picks up his defense and racks up that damage the way he does as the match goes? We're staying on the same characters here. And uh, so far, before I said I like seeing the, Ac uh, the Acno Koji stay, Acno needs to survive, though. He's losing these stocks early and often. Yeah, one thing that's tough about the Acno Koji is it comes in base four defense, likely going up to five, but eats down to second stocks as it falls oh boy. quickly on the left side. Oh boy is literally all I could say to that. That was within, what, 10 seconds, uh, 15 seconds tops to have one go away. And they're already chasing Blaze that high up in the sky. Blue team is waking up a ton. We might, it, it, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, what are, you, <laughs> what are you seeing about the difference with the blue team so far that's making them play so dominant of like, over these last few games. Yeah, it's gonna sound really dumb, but like Fozzie's just swinging and hitting everything. Like he is not missing many attacks and Akno oh, falls no. again on the right side. So uh, I'm glad you said it by the way, cause I was looking at it's like, I feel like Fozzie is, is swinging a lot, but the coverage that he has from his weapon kit, like Orion just covers so much range. So it still works. But then you have Akno who's giving up early. Meanwhile, Blaze just kind of going to town on Godly. But of course you have momentary relief with that recovery, but still he's not able to get oh! away. Fozzie again with the neutral sync. Fozzie is going off. Dude, he is dominating and you can feel it in the gameplay. He is looking so stinking good as Akno is done for game number two and Blaze is gonna join him. 2-0, and that's five stocks left on Godly and Fozzie. Everyone, BCX Fozzie has come back. This is what we saw out of B, uh, out of Fozzie at BCX when he started popping off. Literally, the only teams that were able, the only team that was able to shut him down was Boomy and Snowy. That's it. Everyone else could not stop Fozzie. His clutches were on fire. His team control on fire. Now he's essentially playing by himself in a four-person game. The damage numbers don't give enough credit. 77 damage <laughs> done on act 70. Did he even get enough for a stock? Then Blaze only did 200. Meanwhile, that 400, it may not seem like a whole lot, but that's because the match went so fast that the KOs were super early. I mean, like to, to further contextualize the absurdity of the damage that Akno did, all, all 77 of it, uh, Fozy and Godly almost did that much in team damage to each other. 55 on their side. Like, oh Akno did not get to play Brawlhalla. Yes. Uh, so now my st my statement earlier of where I said, man, don't switch off the Koji. I am now going to rapidly retract that statement as we do see the switch. Uh, it was, not only was it figured out, but it was not getting, it, it just wasn't doing anything. Okay, Kaya, I, I understand the reasoning. Of course, Bo, again, worked really, really well for him until it just wasn't allowed to play in the offstage. Kaya has a little bit more defense than Koji as well. So yes. a lot of good things working out for this Kaya. We'll see how well it goes as this is game number three. Also mental damage to Godly because Godly has had not the greatest win record against Kaya uh, in ones. So having it show up here in twos, that, also the range that Kaya could cover. I feel like you can more safely go for a big play read at the side with the side cancel neutral sigs. And uh, it's also, actually, you know what? I'm just going to go back to simple. You're <laughs> right. It's the defense. You need to survive right now. <laughs> the defense is definitely helping him out as Fozzie's right now, the one already onto the second stock, starting to swing with those down sigs. Godly's throwing out all sorts of sigs. Trying uh, you, to take out these red team members. Godly, uh, Godly, Godly uh, joining Fozzie in the party of kind of swinging his own, but Fozzie, rare, uh, rare occasion, like you said before, on his second slot already. Meanwhile, Blaze joins him. That neutral light is going to take him out. Godly, for a change, on his uh, first stock before everyone else finally lost it. Or actually didn't lose his first stock. Y'all yeah. get what I'm saying. He's <laughs> the one holding on to the stocks for once for the team. Doesn't jump into the end sig. And Fozzie comes in, swinging again onto both red team members. I, that was frames off, by the way, of that dare hitting. God, God, feels like Godly's got plot armor going all of a sudden. Just missing, avoiding getting a KO'd. Team hit right there, does not get punished for his whiff recovery. That side sig off the soft platform as well, just chasing after Akno. Little bit of beef between the two of them and Godly trying to squash Akno. There's a whole lot of beef on these uh, these two teams right here. These are the two contenders for best in EU and contenders for one of the best teams in the world. So uh, it's been fun. Oh. going back and forth. But here goes Blaze uh, trying to get back down. Uh, very rare. Blaze doesn't usually get put into these bad defensive positions throughout yeah. the set. It is rare for him to struggle, and it's rare for Akno to have to be that person to give the reprieve. He did a great job coming over there with that spear recovery to keep the teammate alive. But Fozzie with the end sig 
We'll put Blaze onto the final stocks here. And there's a real possibility of Godly and Fozzie just closing this out and being crowned the winner champions. It is possible. There's definitely still doable for Red Team in a small fashion. Granted, uh, Blaze wants to get Chase hides in disguise. There goes Fozzie. Can they get the reversal onto Godly? Godly sneaking his way back on with recovery. Reversal Sare. And that won't nope. be enough yet. Godly with plenty of movement to get back. He has survived so many of those offstage engagements. Akno, downlight recovery, not quite enough. Remember we said slow start earlier. Godly was always the one who fell first, and now all of a sudden Godly has activated God Mode again. He's oh. finally has to get taken out by his own teammate. Yo, that's going to help out the red team a little bit here, but they're both in the red. This is looking like a blue team dub unless something big comes out soon. Yeah, there is a world where you catch a really good early offstage play with Kaya and maybe sneak one out, but that depends on if you can find openers first. Currently, the game plan Duke seems to be separating the blue team from each other. Yeah, don't let them stack up. But the N6 from Fozy, it's all left to Akno. Deep red as the end light connects, and Godly and Fozy are your winter champions. Once again, where it mattered the most, they got the W over Akno and Blaze. They Even though they fell in winner's finals, there's still an opportunity to get a run back. Not only did they win in the run back, the most crucial time for Akno and Blaze to win was that game five, 2v1 against Fozy, and they were not able to get the job done. And after that, everything started to derail. Not only did Fozy pop off game one, but then all of a sudden, Godly remembered, like, wait a minute, I am him. And he ended up bringing it into not only a dominant fashion W, but he looked good doing it as they sit there on the top of that podium. You got to give so much credit to Fozy for being able to clutch up in so many situations. Of course, Godly, like when he's left to his own devices, he's going to pop off and he had amazing offstage plays throughout today. But like, you got to just give credit to Fozy for being that rock yes. on the team. Yeah, that's that's my MVP of, uh, of 2v2s right now. Uh, Fozy continues to just prove that when you talk about the category of best 2v2 players, period. I'm not even talking just about just EU. When you talk about 2v2s in general, he has become something different of late. Uh, and you did, that was just perfectly on showcase today with how dominant he was. Anyone, I think, what was it, two, two V1s that were super crucial to the set? Yeah, he definitely was the one to like finish out some very uh, tough spots and still, he was, he was there, he was holding down the stocks, he was getting those hits that he needed to, and again, uh, also playing his role within, uh, outside of those clutch situations, where he's getting yeah. those follow-ups, he's in the middle of those fights, throwing out those spear down sigs, or uh, whatever else he was throwing out, like the Zariel bow end sigs. Yeah, and uh, when you start getting momentum like that, when you're playing that solid, you start to get your teammate fired up, because if they're able to perform that well, then they're constantly making comebacks, then I, that means I could do it too. And you know that you could do it because you are one of the, the best players in the world. And Godly started to rekindle that fire real fast. And now that's the last thing you want to see as the opposing team. And uh, not only was it, a th uh, you know, the 3-2 win, but they ended up pretty much kind of cruising through that reset uh, where Acton and Blaze just you could see they were just kind of gassed out and that was the end of it all yeah they really started you could see agno was kind of digging deep hoping that something with the bow was going to work out he had the koji which looked good pre-reset and then after the reset it just fell apart i think the orion from Fozy really helped to uh lead to that downfall yeah but uh either way congratulations Fozy and godly they are your winter champions for eu in second place act and plays of course and then in third simple and heisen yes uh definitely i mean when you talk about predictions that's pretty much a, a lineup of the top three that you'd expect to see but that of course does bring us to a close of eu it is now time to go over to fan favorite time it is south america up next for winter champs yeah, it's going to be the South American region. We are, of course, going to lead into a short little break. And this is our final reminder. Well, not necessarily exactly final, but like this is a, a late reminder that if you want that winter championship merch, if you want the hoodie, if you want the blanket, you are running out of time. Brahala.com slash winter merch if you want to pick up any of that goodness because uh, stores close tomorrow. Yeah, literally one more day left with the 12th. Do not miss out. And also, do not miss out on South America. Like you were just saying, we're going to go to a very short break. But when we come back, we're going to have the pre-show ready. Sparky and Duke to bring us in for South America. <laughs> Now this is a three stock lead. You got to deal with two up and is over. Gets away, but that. Sider backs away. Fozy trying to be that middle man. Blades with the punish. Akno with the Everything. Turnaround side sig. 
Bowman plays with the soft punt. It's with the near. He's the bow, and it's all left to Fozzi. Right. This is exactly where Fozzi has been. Not getting there quick enough. That would have easily been a three punch, possibly a stock against Blaze. That's one thing that's really tough for Zario in those 1v2s is Akno. Oh, my. He likes this Orion. He's so good at utilizing those signatures of both characters, but now he's got that big swing and hitbox. Nice follow-up. Goes off stage. But now Fozzi is going to deny some weapons. Weapon spot. Akno goes in. Side air. Not enough. Akno is living so long, but it's not. Again, longer than Godly plays. What? Well, Bozy there seems to be separating the team from each other. Don't let them stack up. But the N6 from Bozy, it's all left to Akno. Deep red as the end light connects. And Godly and Bozy are your winter champions. us where we need oh yeah, oh yeah. I've been dreaming for so long time to wake up and make it happen forget yesterday oh yeah, oh yeah. tables are turning my heart's been burning ever since I could remember used to sleep on the cold ground dreaming about right now
Demon Island. Small walls. Who's going to take the best advantage of it? Oh my gosh, and that oh. might be as Modi with a oh. savage start oh, to the no, game. No, 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 no. Oh my god! Oh, that was amazing! Cleanest stock of the whole tournament. That oh, was impeccable. Oh, oh my. Ooh, I'm, I'm feeling it over here. I'm hurting. That is a rough start for game lead here in game one really good follow-up from may just kind of babysitting the movement of luna then going in for the recovery as luna goes to the right side and gets <gasps> oh, oh may with the zero to death on luna off the top the three of the gravity cancel side like into the recovery luna down to one stock in a second and he's getting team comboed off the fresh stock yeah hit all, at all in that stock though nice I feel like Faison was playing that game with that mentality of like, if I believe hard enough, all my buttons are plus. Like, I, everything is going to work. And that's exactly what you need, and as you go all the way to the top, and he gets him with the recovery, and he gets another dominant early lead. Bro, this man says I only know one direction, and it's up. Because he's definitely going up from here. I mean, he's going up in, in stock. But experience was still confident. Still was like, you know what? I don't think he's going to dodge off loose. I don't think so. I'm just going to wait. I'm going to play patient. And look at this lead. You have no dodge. There's no way, experience. Come oh on, give him on the lead. That's a three stock. Those Stone are like cold. two. Th th those are like, th those are like two zero to death. Well, the first one was a clean stock. Two zero to death. And a three stock. How in the, so in so the same game. How you that to Fiend? PR7 in South America versus PR13 in North America. This is the level of game that you have to expect. Seems to take this stock away from Dog, and he can take, he can take this to game number three. Off stage opportunity, hits the dare, hits the snare. Oh, hits the recovery! Yes. Dog, does he have the movement? No, the ground pound, the weapon top, the ground pound, and Fried is all, forces it to game three. I like it, the crowd likes it, and you know Fried is all likes it. There's only one thing that can be done here for Dog to close this set out. Go to that character select screen. Just starts hitting him with the card neutral lights. Cut him up there, getting that down light right afterwards. A ton of damage coming through his three neutral lights, double recovery. Luna chase dodging up to Baby and Radish on the right side of the stage. And look at that. Radish trying to get the reversal. Luna comes right back. Recovery. Sarah, weapon throw. Is that going to be it for Radish's last stock? Of course it is. Down air. D light. Ground pound. Luna, two stocks. Radish in game number three is one game away from top four at PCX 2022. That's why Luna is so difficult to fight, because there was a moment in that game where it seemed like, all right, with the way Rage is playing, I mean, he was getting orb sequence after orb sequence. Luna was struggling for a bit there. I mean, he's definitely the Doombringer. I will say that. Radish right now is definitely the Doombringer in this set. He has been able to shrink so many things together. Both of his weapons looking good. My man is still sweating. He's oh. dead. He's dead. My goodness. And that wasn't on TK. That was the gauntlet. That's his supposedly weaker weapon. How did you? He, wow. I, I mean, like, little legitimately carried him from the left side of the stage to the right side in full sweat beats. And you are not allowed to actually touch the stage. Can he get the top? Yes, he does. Somehow getting through all of that. Getting back to center. Is he going to get the weapon? Yes, he does. the situation and knock Lors out this is looking difficult for Lors but if anyone can turn something like this around it's gonna be Lors but Godly's gonna get another massive spring and another one right what after that this what is Lors going all the way down to red and that is going to be the three stock to put this set to an end three to one with Godly coming out yo Katanis are you good Godly are you good he was bad he played bad. That was such an excellent last stock. And honestly, if you think about it, a, a weapon like Katari's requires what? You need like a lot of situational awareness in the moment to know like what kind of follow-up your opponent's going for. Best for time to knock out. <laughs> 11 seconds was a little too long for Reds, I guess, but he doesn't get that knockout here. 
but going for the neutral sig into the backswing of the nair. Nice positioning, waiting out that weapon throw to the neutral oh sig. Weapon gosh. throw forces another jump. Electrifying goes down, and the reason for that is is that he opted to go for a very quick double jump, ending the distance on that first jump. Not getting nearly as much and not being able to touch the stage afterwards. And Wrench with the weight after that down air is really starting to take this lead into his face. Oh, bow ground pound. Oh, oh, no, the gravity canceled for the second knockout in under a minute. He gets the down to get spikes underneath Brawl Haven, riding just around the corner of the stage, making sure he gets the distance, but also getting the touch. Chase dodge down to Dare. Wrench definitely the one who innovated that kind of guitar strategy. And Ooh, then Dare gets a stuff recovery and electrifying down. One. Back to center stage, has the gauntlets in hand. He gets that side air, side leg recovery. That is basically going oh to steal the damn a three is not impossible. Oh, there's the D sig from Wes. Kyrie holding on the down air. Oh! 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 He this guy just did that the first weapon toss bounce would have been nasty enough and then he was just like oh wait that didn't Bro. lead to the stock oh let me Bro. go back again he's he's full well on a milli saying all right i'm going back Salve galera, meu nome é Nicolas, conhecido como Yus, atualmente sou Power Rank 2 do jogo. É... Acho que, tipo, tem algo a falar de mim, eu só me esforço nisso e é isso, galera. Então, como qualquer camp, acho que nada é demais, eu fiz o, meu, o básico, né? Tipo, me esforçar, jogar ranked, é... pensar sempre em estratégia pra vencer meus, meus oponentes e, tipo, se manter o um treino, sabe? Constante, con é, constante, nunca parar. Só isso. Então, assim, um, um dia antes do torneio, eu durmo, assim, no horário não cedo, pra acordar perto do torneio, sabe? Porque eu acho que acordar cedo é ruim. Te deixa com sono no final, então eu acordo perto do horário do torneio, é, tomo um banho e como alguma coisa leve. E, tipo, não como mais nada depois. Só isso. Então, não tem nem o que falar, né? Tipo, o cara é Fiend. O cara joga bem, 2018, grande nome aqui da comunidade. E, tipo, agora falando o que eu acho que, te, que faz a gente jogar bem junto e que eu admiro nesse cara, é que, tipo, desde o início, ele é um cara... Eu vejo muita a mesma vibe em mim nele, tá ligado? Tipo, ele sempre se esforça e nunca desiste. Isso é o bagulho mais foda. Tipo, o cara nunca desiste até o final, tá jogando. Tá na Stock Red, tá tentando, sabe? Teve muito game que a gente já ganhou em situação precária e tipo saber que alguém consegue ter esse mesmo pensamento que eu em camp é de nunca desistir sempre dar seu máximo e tipo além disso a gente se esforça junto joga todos os campeonatos que tem pequeno grande é, e faz de tudo para ganhar tipo é o bagulho que eu acho que faz o nosso do ser forte entendeu Então, eu acho assim, sempre tem a chance de aparecer alguém e amassar, sempre tem, tipo, a chance de aparecer um cara muito bom do nada. Só que, tipo, do, do meu conhecimento atual que eu acho, que os caras que vão bem aí, que a gente tem que sempre se preocupar, é Wesley Power, os caras muito forte. É, tem Bem Tranquilo Ian, Loris e Kaina, e é, Vecina, Saki e Lily Junior, é esses daí. É tipo, é o top 8, entendeu, do campeonato, eu acredito. Só que sempre tem a chance de... Chega algum, alguma dupla, algum, algum cara jogando muito bem, sabe? Você tem que estar tá preparado pra isso. Então, eu acho que na América do Norte a dupla vencedora vai ser Luna e Snowy. Assim, que eu acredito, né? Mas sempre pode ter uma, algo, alguém surpreendendo naquela região, sempre tem. E na Europa, eu acredito que seja Godly Fosse que vai vencer. Meu mano Godly, gosto muito do cara aí, torcendo por ele. Então, galera, eu agradeço demais a todos que me acompanham, assim, que, tipo, eu sei que no, eu não me mostro muito comunidade, mas eu sei que tem pessoas que gostam do meu jogo, gostam da minha pessoa, assim. Então, eu agradeço a todos que, que curte eu, assim, como jogador, tal, talvez até como pessoa, 
E, mano, não tem o que falar, tipo, fico muito feliz com isso, tipo, mesmo não mostrando, é, faz diferença pra mim, entendeu? Tipo, faz toda, totalmente diferença tá? saber que tem alguém que pode se inspirar em mim. É algo que me motiva sempre a jogar, então valeu a todos aí. É nóis, mano. Welcome back, everyone, to the Winter Championship. It's South America edition. Oh, I thought you were going to give us more there. Yeah, I was thinking about it, and then, like, there was this part of me that was like, what if my mic wasn't unmuted? And so I, like, paused for a second, because I can't hear myself. So I was, I was really dramatic and tense, but now we're in South America for doubles. And, of course, uh, it's, it's a fun region. People love South America, love to watch the chaos that South America can bring. And, of course, just the chaotic team shifts that's been happening in South America. It's not the expected teams for the most part. So the default, I'm glad you used the word chaos because I love that word, because mm -hmm. the default of 2v2 is chaos. Mm -hmm. There's four people on screen, there's moves flying everywhere, there's weapon tosses everywhere, team damage happens all the time, team KOs happen all the time, but the best teams are able to dissect that chaos and organize it into a way that they can find their way in, their way out, the way to save their teammate, the way to do that without falling themselves, when it's right to save your teammate, when it's not right to save your teammate, when you actually put your attention on the opponent versus your teammate, all of that. That's something South America has always been really good at because even back in the day when some of the other regions were sort of slowing down the gameplay, that's why we love South America. That was before South America was really developed as a top region, a top three even a top two region like we talk about today is they were always going all over the place. They were always going crazy and that gave them an innate ability to be able to thrive in those crazy situations where your attention is being pulled in a hundred different directions. They're able to focus in on where your attention needs to actually be in that moment. Yeah, they're really good at like picking apart the important parts of a fight and really recognizing, you know what, like maybe I don't need to use brain power to watch this guy over there come back to the stage. Maybe I can just turn into this 1v2 instead or like threading those needles or like even adding to just like the sheer ferocity of actions that are happening, right? Like Fiend is known for utilizing these weapon tosses to just kind of add to that mental stack and make it harder to keep track of everything that's going on. So now that we're moving into South America, we have some players to watch today. I don't know the order. We don't have one because oh, we didn't, we didn't no make one. I don't know what we I can't it, know. We get it, we get we're, we're making it up on the fly. Okay. Because that's, uh, you know, in, in true like uh, energy of South America, of just like, it's all just like, we, we just, we like to have fun. We just do what okay. we want to do. So I'm going to just say, say a, a team and then we'll see what happens. And the production's got to get ready for that. Uh, Sack and Vecina. Sack and Vecina is an interesting one because Sack really kind of broke onto the scene right alongside Kaina when Kaina broke onto the scene as a 2v2 player because they were together on the exact same team. Then we saw that team break up a little bit. Kaina went with some other people. Sack went with some other people. And then we saw Kaina and Sack come back together. And then now we are at the point where Sack is playing with Vecina, a very strong 2v2 player. You can see some of the earnings behind, you know, some, some of the more humble earnings when we look at like the story players in the scene, like the Wesses, like the Powers, like the Fiends out there. But definitely Sack has accomplished quite a lot for a relatively quote unquote new-ish player in the scene, especially the way we've seen the scene develop over the past couple years during the online time. Yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting because like, uh, kind of like you mentioned, there's been a long period of South America kind of being focused on like one or two names, right? Like for a really long time, it was all about Fiend and then Pla. And then you kind of like start to talk about Wes and it's like, okay, Fiend and Wes are the main two things. And now we're talking about Kaina as well. And we're starting to see like that, that region develop beyond just kind of like those one or two pillars. And it's kind of spreading out and you're starting to see all these kind of younger players come in, start to do well. Of course, Sack and Vecina, they're still kind of on that fringe. Like we saw in those stats, they haven't really hit those strides where they're consistently podiuming. But just like we were talking about some of the teams uh, breaking up, aside from like Godly and Fozzy and Acno and Blaze, and even like TM and, uh, and Delta to a degree, is we are seeing new teams forming for this specific competitive season. If we look at last year, some of the best South American 2v2 we saw was like Fiend and West, but all of a sudden Fiend is playing with Yuse here, Sack is playing with Vecina 
here. They don't have any tournaments officially under their belt whatsoever. Even though Sack has two silver medals and a bronze medal to his name, Pacina hasn't podium before in 2v2. So this is sort of their main moment, their proving ground, like we always talk about with the Winter Championship. And even just throughout the year, new teams in general, this first tournament is going to be a major proving ground for Sack and Vecina to see if this is going to be the recipe that they want to stick with for this year. We've already seen teams like in EU. Zyder was talking about earlier today about looking for a different teammate aside from Cressu because Cressu is not going to be able to travel and Zyder is really looking into that traveling teammate that he can get really good with this year. That's something that a lot of players are looking at. That's something South America should be looking at and certainly is looking at as well. So this is the proving ground to be like, all right, do we want to take this and use this team moving forward or do I need to look elsewhere? Yeah, it, it's um, interesting because I think we're uh, in a position where we might see more South American representation than we've had in the past. Oh, I, I hope so. Like, like we, Fingers like, are crossed. We kind of mentioned like uh, two, three years ago, it would be like Fiend and maybe DB who would show up to these events. And now we're kind of seeing like at the World Championship, we saw like at least four or five like South Americans like really came there to show There were a lot up. of South Americans It was a here. lot and it was really, really cool to see. And again, South America is one of those regions that are really fun to watch. And again, uh, before we get too far, I do want to give credit to Estesal. You saw some of those matches that were happening. We got to see some gameplay. That's Estesal and shout outs to them because they're amazing. They're the ones I think who made that video that you saw just before the break where Yuz was talking about mm -hmm. his, his pre uh, prep and all that stuff. So again, a huge shout outs to them. Um, but I think one of the big things, one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this team is uh, Sack's performance in 1v1s last weekend was impressive. He really kind of showed like, you know what? I need to be in this conversation of people who can can play at that top level in the region. Like he beat out Wes, who was again, like one of those more established names in the region. So I want to give a lot of credit to him. So he's one of the ones that I, I'm like really keeping my eye on right now. I'm very curious to see what they're going to bring to the table today, because I think we have a potential major tug of war that's going to happen this year bet between some of the teams that we're eventually going to talk about in the rest of this pre-show. Do you have anything more on Sack and Vecina? No, I think it's time we talk about another team by the names of Wes and Power. I'm so happy to see them back together. Obviously, we saw Wes and Fiend at the midseason championship because they were some of the few South American players that were able to make it there. So it's only obvious, really, that they ended up shacking up together as a 2v2 team, and they, they, they blew everyone away with what they were able to accomplish. But really, my heart as a fan of the South American region, like, I go back to the old days of Wes and Power. I really like this team together. If we look at what they've been doing in some of the offseason, Wes coming in at PR3, Power at PR6, they're number four on the global ladder, not just South American ladder, but the global ladder currently right now. This region, we always say this, they be grinding, but like on a different level, they are 421 and 115 on the ranked ladder. They have a 3.66 win-loss ratio. They have the second highest global peak, and that is massive. Yeah, South Americans, they are grinding that ranked ladder. Um, I think one of the big things about this team is that like Wes is kind of like the known entity. He's kind of the big force that most people are gonna be looking out for. Coming in likely will be playing some sort of Lance character, which we've actually seen do really well, right? Like Fozzy just played the Orion in EU. We saw uh, Asmodi uh, play uh, the Vector earlier as well. Like we've seen uh, quite a bit. We've and seen then, Olgrims all over yeah, the place. Olgrims, of course. We, uh, we also saw double Orion from um, Australia as well. Um, so we've seen like a lot of Lance potential. So I would be surprised to see Wes not come in with that Lance, although like, like, the meta in South America kind of shifted in ways that I wasn't really expecting. In 1v1s, we saw a lot of Katars come out. So my big question mark for this team is like, how is Power Ranger gonna do? Is he gonna be able to be that like kind of secondary force alongside uh, Wes? Or is he gonna be something that like, not to say this in a super negative way, but like, is he gonna be that thing that maybe is like the, the weaker link that people are gonna target down? So the, the reason we talk about Wes and Power so much is because at one time, they were kind of like the Acno and Blaze of South America. They were completely running this region. They had a stranglehold on South American 2v2 Brawlhalla. Their run, it wasn't quite as long as Acno and Blaze's, but let me look here. I have all of the tournaments that they won. So they won seven of the eight official tournaments they entered in their career, according to the stats. That includes Spring 2020, Combo Breaker Online 2020, Summer Championship 2020, South American Online Worlds in 2021, Winter, Spring, and Summer 
of 2022. It was only in the Autumn Championship that Fiend and Yuuz were able to interrupt that run. Even though it wasn't necessarily a consecutive of every single tournament, it was all of the tournaments that they entered except that one. That is seven of the eight tournaments that they entered. An incredible track record. That is, that's definitely very impressive. Uh, anything else you want to talk about this team? That's all I've got for them. Okay, well, you already mentioned them. Let's talk about Fiend and Yuuz. Uh, and I'm going to reiterate what I said earlier. This region uh, do be grinding. If we look at what they have done, they are number two on the global ladder currently right now. It's not going to surprise anybody, but South America has the top number one, number two, number three, and number four spots on the global ladder. An incredible effort in the ranked grind. They have a 4.24 win-loss ratio. If I had that in any of the competitive games I played, that would be, uh, I, that, that's the gamer I wish yeah. that I could be, but they're actually doing it in this. Their peak elo is 27-28. So I like Fiend and Use right now because I think they're probably the two best individual 2v2 players, and then you're adding them together to create an amazing team. We already know that Fiend has so much chemistry with virtually anybody he's played with in the past. Yeah, Fiend is uh, an insane 2 v tour. He's able to kind of take that mantle of being that main front runner, front runner. He's also able to take that position of being that support player. He's able to kind of mix and match depending on the opponent. And he's had a lot of different 2v2 teammates and done really well for himself. One thing that I really like is that he's kind of settled into this team of him and Yuuz. Yuuz did incredible last weekend in the 1v1 space. So I think there's a lot of really good things going for this team of Fiend and Yuuz. Now, we haven't seen Wes in power for quite some time. Even though it was just in terms of official tournaments, it was only a few tournaments ago in the 2022 Autumn Championship. The actual calendar time between that and where we are right now is such a long period of time where so many things could change. But I think this year is true going to be the tug of war between Fiend and Yuuz and Lores and Kaina. The last two community tournaments that were in South America, that is Braltala 39 that happened on January 15th and then Braltala 38 right before that on December 18th. The, the December 18th tournament, Lores and Kaina came out on top with that over Fiend and Use. January 15th, about one month later, Brawltala 39, Fiend and Use came out on top with second place finish of Lores and Kaina. I think these four players are gonna go back and forth, back and forth. And I hope, I truly hope that all of them get to travel to land so we get to see the way they are online. We might get the chance to see how they are offline in the Royales and then especially in the actual LAN events, the open tournament LAN events as well. That is that is my dream for this region is to have this tug of war. Maybe Wesson Power could be in that as well and that would truly be this amazing triangle of incredible Brawlhalla play. Yeah, I, I love when it's a, a, a battle between the top three and, you know, a, a, a battle in general where it's not just like, okay, this team is going to guaranteed win and everybody else is just kind of playing with their food. Um, you always love to see that, but you already kind of mentioned them. So let's go into it. Let's talk about this team of Kaina and Lores. I'm loving this team. I love Lores. I love Kaina. Uh, when, when I look at this team, I, my, my, like, my analytical commentary brain is like, this is arguably the best if not the definitive best team in this region and then like my my fan i look down at my heart and i'm like i love this team i love both of these players i love to see them in twos i love to see them in ones i think kaina is an incredible talent i think he is a game defining talent maybe not not quite on the level of like a sandstorm out there but i think we will one day mention kaina alongside players like sandstorm like boomy like some of the old greats like dobrain and especially as sort of a uh, a pillar a representative of the region like we look at Fiend now currently. I think Lores is also poised to do really well. And I'm gonna say it one more time. And I'm gonna say it harder than I said before. Whoa. This region do be grinding. Number one on the ranked ladder, 387 to 62 losses, 6.24 win-loss ratio. They have the absolute highest peak ELO on here. It's peak 2830, and it's not even close. Fiend and Yuuz are down all the way 104 points below that at 2726. Nobody's touching them online right now. That is, uh, that's insane. Dude, their win-loss is like, 
it's unreal. That's that's above GPAs. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. That's that's the like <laughs> 6.0 GPA that Kyler wants to get this year. That's <laughs> one of his goals is to get a GPU that matches the win loss ratio of this team of Kyle and Lawrence. They are uh, they're a scary force. It's it's cool because again, kind of he like you said or like kind of you implied is like kind of has this aura. He has this potential to kind of really be a big face of the South American region. He brings his own kind of sauce and flavor that's really, really cool to see and it makes people want to root for him. And then you have Loris, who's kind of like consistently this underdog who's just kind of like He's like almost little brother to a I, lot I of the I was just going to say, like, not in a disrespectful way, he feels like low bro. Yeah, but I, I just, he's been progressing time and time again. He's been able to make it out to a lot of stuff. Like, he was one of the few who made it out to the midseason invitational for South America. He's, he's like really like on the tail of being amazing for the region and, and I love to see those two team up and, and see where they can go. I'm really hoping that they are going to stick together as a team so that kind of I mean we saw from kind performance at the World Championship is there are still things to learn. He's an incredible talent one of the best if not the best in the region but there are still things for him to learn. I want to see him mature as a player and that's just going to come with time. You can't learn that overnight. I think Lores is going to be the exact same thing. And I think being alongside someone like Kaina, both of them elevating themselves in the scene, both of them learning, it's really going to do wonders for this team, the chemistry that they potentially have, and their just overall trajectory as Brahala players. Okay, well, I think that means that it is time for y'all to start putting in your predictions. Odin's Journal will potentially be opening up and giving y'all opportunities to put in your predictions of what you think will be the top three and that gives us time to influence your opinions as we get into our predictions so i started off this morning with europe so you get to take the lead on south america oh snap okay uh i think i remembered this correctly so if i'm wrong it's production's fault um <laughs> we, just, we just heard from, from <laughs> the other room with a big no <laughs> Uh, Sack and Vecina is my third place pick. Uh, a lot of my uh, decision making today has been based off of the performances last weekend. I think that 1v1s can kind of spell how well people are playing in 2v2s. And I got a lot of, of hope in this team of Sack and Vecina. In second place, I am going to go with the team of Fiend and Utes. Uh, again, really strong team. I love watching Fiend. Uh, I am almost never wrong when I put Fiend in the top three period. So. Got to put them in there somewhere. And then in first place, I'm going to give it to the team of Kaina and Loras. Absolutely think there's a lot of potential in this team. I don't know if it's going to come to fruition right here and right now, but I think there's just a lot of potential built into these two. You and I have been thinking very similarly on our predictions for, you know, a, a few different tournaments now, not just the Winter Championship this year, but even towards a little bit of the end of last year as well, where we both kind of picked the, the, the same first and second place, but the third place is where the difference comes in that happened with EU this morning, that happened last week as well. I am coming in here with Wes and Power in third place. I think this is going to be a return to form for these teams, but I think second place is going to be Fiend and Use with Kaina and Lores also, just like you said, coming in first place as well. These are the three teams I'm looking at, but I think it's going to be a tug of war between Kaina, Lores, Fiend, and Use. And I would not be surprised whatsoever if Wes and Power turn that tug of war into a three way tug of war between all of them. Yeah, I think there's there's real potential. And then kind of like you said in the break is like there's always potential for somebody to come in sneak and sneak a set out and suddenly up and the entire bracket. Um, I'm not sure if they're still tallying the votes on their predictions, but we already gave ours. So let's see what the chat thinks is going to be the uh, the outcome. Wait, let's let's do a guessy again. Okay. Let's do a guessy. Who do you okay. think is in third? Um, kinda. Okay, I think it's going to be West and Power in third. Okay. What do you think of second? I think second is going to be. Oh, Ooh, let's see. Okay, West they're just going to copy you. I'm crushing. I'm crushing it so okay. far. I think second is going to be kind of Loras. Okay, yeah, I got to agree with that one. And then Fiend and using first. Yeah, I, I just I think Fiend is going to be top. Come on, give me three for three. Yes. Oh, he's too good on it. He's too filthy. He knows what the people want. This thinks what the people thinks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you were you were absolutely right. You you got the the chat prediction correctly. It's really just like who is the most popular. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's I, people I look for name recognition. I figured the West fans were going to be a little bit more on the voting game than the kind of fans. That's what 
I was thinking that it was going to be Kaino fans and then West fans and then Fiend fans. I think if Wes and Power stick together, I think that might change it just a little bit. But like Wes and Power are the old and busted. Kaino Lores are the new hotness, given yeah. that we've had career defining performances from Kaino already, given that he's such a young player. I think he's like 17 years old. So he has a lot of room to grow. And I think people are already loving him, not just because of the way that he plays, but he can also have the tournament placements to back it up. So I think currently the way it is right now with the explosion of the Brawlhalla scene online through we had those of those all of those online tournaments kind of really came out on top in that and I think that's why people are responding more to kind of right now than Wes okay well uh, that is our predictions that's y'all's predictions as well one more reminder about Brawlhalla.com slash winter merch before we get right on in to the doubles portion of this winter championship. Again, we've got South America on the line, getting ready to get into the top eight of things. So uh, you don't want to turn away because there's so much good action coming at you in just a little bit. Sparky, any final words? Uh, make sure to put your predictions into Odin's journal. I think Ice Pingu is on the top of the leaderboard right now, and we cannot have that, He's ladies cheating. and gentlemen. He we does cannot. The he actually does the seating. We yeah. have to unseat the demagogue that is Ice Pingu. Get your predictions into Odin's journal. Make sure you are voting in chat as well. That's a way for you to engage with the stream. If you want to do it on social media, make sure to hashtag BHE. Esports, and I don't know if we do tweets on stream anymore, but it's a fun way to engage. Make sure to tag me at who is Sparky. Make sure to tag Duke at Duke, the letter X fam. That's P H A M. When you're putting your predictions on Twitter. Well, let's go to a short little break, and when we come back, we'll be bringing you that winter championship doubles South American region. So grab some popcorn and grab a seat. We will be right back. Salve galera, meu nome é Lucas, conhecido como Fiend aí na comunidade. E só isso, pô. Deixa eu falar mais alguma coisa não. Nossa, é muita meditação diária aí. E muito treino, muito esforço. Ah, eu tomo aquele banho. Hum, geralmente eu nem tomo café da manhã, só tipo, eu levo minha água e vou pro computador jogar. Levo, vou, pra, vou pra rank de aquecer e depois vou direto pro campeonato. Acho que só isso. Então. Ah, o moleque é, tem um reflexo apurado aí, né? O moleque é muito jovem e, sei lá, o moleque tem muito, muito talento, assim, muito esforço. Bem esforçado pra idade dele, assim, alguém querer algo, tá ligado? E admiro muito, tá ligado? Isso dele. Da hora. Eu acho que é a mesma vontade, tá ligado? Tipo, nós dois temos a mesma vontade de ganhar. Tipo, no campeonato, o que não falta é isso. Eu acho que é um dos bagulho mais importantes da gente, assim, tipo, de não desistir em nenhuma situação de jogo. A gente já virou tanto jogo assim que é inacreditável, tá ligado? Isso vem muito da nossa vontade, da nossa <coughs> resiliência, tá ligado? Dentro do jogo. Nossa adaptação. Acho muito foda. Hum, acho que eu acredito que a gente tem que ficar de olho em todos os times, tá ligado? Não subestimar ninguém, mas... Como favorito, eu acho que a gente enxerga mais o Wesley Power, Kaina e Lores. Eu acho que Ia inventa aquilo e Lili e Juniror. Consigo citar esses quatro fortes assim. Hum, no NA, pô, eu não tô acompanhando muito bem as duplas não, pra ser sincero assim, mas... Sei lá, eu acho o Bumi muito forte. Com quem ele tiver, eu acho que vai ser bem difícil. E na Europa, quem tiver com... Acho que é a Acne Blaze, né? Acne Blaze tá muito forte. Bom, então o Godly, eu acho que vai ser a final entre a dupla do Godly, que eu não sei quem é aí, e a Acne Blaze, talvez. Se pá. Ah, rapaziada, oh, segue eu no Twitter lá, fim de BR. E agradeço demais aí quem torce por mim e tem me apoiado aí. Isso me motiva cada vez mais a estar tá jogando o jogo aí.
Welcome to Brawlhalla. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Winter Championship. Here we're getting into South America doubles, getting into top eight. It's me, Taza, joined with Sparky once again here to round out the beginning of this part of the Winter Championship. Sparky, how are you feeling about this coming up? I'm really excited to see these teams paired together, going up against each other. Yeah, it's always a given that everybody is excited to watch South America. Europe had some incredible gameplay earlier today. Yeah. But, I mean, I think Ajax said it whenever they were finished with their block that fan favorite South America is coming up. Mm -hmm. I'm an NA boy. Duke's an NA boy. We talk about how we love NA all the time. But, man, South America is always such a treat because they always surprise us every single time. Even if the results are expected, the journey to get to that point, everything in between is always a surprise. Yeah. And as we're getting into the Winter Championship here, I'm realizing more and more that the results aren't as expected as they've ever been, right? Like, looking into this championship, I'm realizing that there are about four teams now in South America. Normally, I could say, like, two that I would be like, these are the two that I expect to win. But there's much more than that going into this bracket. And we can see them in the schedule right behind us coming up. We've got Fiend and Hughes versus Lores and Kaina. And then Saka Vecino versus Ian and Vemton Kilo. These are names, Ian doing really well in singles last weekend with the Asuri. Um, these are names that now pairing together, I'm looking at this like, okay, are these going to be the teams that are going to be pairing with each other going throughout the rest of the year? Because that's something that we're, we're looking for here in Winter Championship. And I honestly am having trouble calling out who's going to do it. I mean, you had the, the fan favorite vote, but I mean, let's face it, kind of kind is becoming world class, if not already there. I really love how this scene is developing because it seems like our top four teams, I feel like there's, as we get through the development of the scene, we yeah. add more and more into that top four. So it feels like there's seven teams that are technically top four in this region. And I think learning about those like four through eight teams are gonna be something that we're gonna have to do more often because they're gonna push deeper into that bracket than before. We have to start thinking about them like maybe this is the one they break into the top four. Maybe this is the one they break into top three. Vim Tankilo is a name that we've seen before, mm -hmm. someone who appears on stream, but we could have a serious competitor here for the top Top three. I mean, a victory here from Ian and Vim Tankilo puts them in a guaranteed top three. Yeah, yeah, that's incredible. The, the, the performances that are going to come from these uh, players is going to be really exciting to see for sure. So, Taza, give us this schedule preview. You already mentioned a few of them, but we kind of got off on a tangent there when we saw that Ian and Vim Tankilo were in this point. Yeah, so the schedule of the upcoming matches, uh, Fiend and Hughes, obviously, are right behind us, but in the elimination bracket, as we're getting further, I mean, I guess we just talked about it. We didn't mention uh, Wesson Power and then Nagi and right. Maxi right. are going to be there when we make our trip down into the elimination top eight. And then we Wesson also have Elzo and Minexo and Lily and Junoror. Now, Lily and Junoror were one of the teams that I can't remember who it was mentioned it in their South American interview that we saw in the break. But they did specifically mention that Lily and Junoror could be one of the teams that they're looking out for in this bracket. Yeah, even Fiend was talking about it in, it the, was Fiend, in, yeah. in the video right before this was like okay there's four teams they want to call out they were the ones that punctuated that sentence where they're just kind of like these are people that we're looking at because you were talking about it in the pre-show right when it comes to grinding on the 2v2 ladder south america is doing it better than any of the other regions holding those top three spots globally now even though we are in south america currently right now i just walked outside and it's mighty chilly taz that means i it's might cold. need a little hoodie to put on maybe a little blankie that goes on top of that if you want to grab either of those things make sure to go to brahala.com forward slash winter merch you have to order by tomorrow or it will be gone and you will be a sad gamer is it less than 24 hours now i think it's I a little bit more i don't know how that works it's probably so like 30 ish I'm, hours i'm not gonna give there an might hour. be a time zone thing where it's weird i don't actually just, know just just don't, look, don't risk it. Don't look, risk just it. Just get it right now, please. Just get it right now. But we are ready to move into these games. Let's get some stats going up on the screen for Fiend and Hughes versus Lores and Kaina. This, according to Duke and I and many other people who have made predictions for this region, this is a grand finals caliber match, and we're yeah. getting it in round one of top eight, ladies and gentlemen. There you're seeing Hughes. Of course, the vector coming up on screen. That's a legend that we've seen him play plenty of times, one that we love to see Hughes on especially that lance his lance is so good his spear is so good think about the double spear potential that comes from that team of course fiend one of the best spear players in the world yeah i'm really curious we see it we see the tori here represented for Lores, but as well like what, what we saw from south america 
like this hover over on Kaina was a massive amount of Qatar's representation in the, in the singles top eight. But what we're finding as we go through each region is that the meta in 2v2s and 1v1s is very different. There's some there's some crossover there where it comes to like the players that just, this is the legend that I play all the time, but there are players that are playing very different things in here, and Guitars has not been very popular with it. And going into this, yes, we're seeing that Fiend, much to my surprise, breaking up the knife for game number one. I mean, this is a this is a pick that he he does play. I often feel like it's very situational, and something that we're gonna see as we get into this bracket is like these teams are probably fighting each other 80 times. Both okay? of these comps are the expected comps from what we've seen to them based on Brawlhalla 39 that okay. happened midway through January. It was Fiend on the Queen Nai, Yuz on the Bryn, it was Kaina on the Luke, and then Lores on the. Uh, the uh, Kaya here, but also sometimes locking oh. in the Pearl, which is, of course, the Kaya crossover. So these are 100% expected comps that when I was looking back at Brawltala 39, because I didn't know what they were going to play. Yeah. Kind of normally came out all the way back with Sack coming out with the double Bodvar. Of course, Fiend has played any legend under the sun. Yuge usually oh. has a spear in his hand. Well, and what's awesome about that as well is that that was a tournament that happened even before. Oh, that was such an amazing team combo. Yuge decided to follow that through, and Yuge is gone Bro, in what? an instant. Yeah, yeah, that was that was like... It's a... We're not... Tazza, we're not even a minute in the game. I'm still giving context. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Yuge gets knocked out immediately, then gets uh, zero knockout there immediately, and now we're a minute in, and it's six knocks to three. They, yeah. Okay, like, okay, now you can start going crazy. Like, I did my long winded exposition talking about previous oh, tournament oh, placements. Oh, Lores oh. taking use out of the game oh with a beautiful God. ground pound. Oh. Look at the pickup there. Fiend completely batting kind of away with the spear down there. Almost ready for that one. Almost ready for that one as well. You're already seeing amazing world class follow ups coming out from this team. They're going to look like, like, there's. Surely, gonna we be six stock. Surely we don't get a six stock. You're, you're, it's Fiend. When's no the, shot. When's the last time I've seen a six stock? It, it was, it's been in a stream. pools match. It had uh, to be in a pools I, match. I, but I'm saying like hey, like a pools match at LAN. It's going to yeah, happen. Yeah, that's tomorrow. the only time oh, we stream. Oh, the spear no way. side light into the ground pound. Fiend makes that back. Fiend had a chance to stop it from happening. Okay, Kaida is coming back to the stage. Weapon toss means he has no dodge. And Fiend, thank goodness. Saves the six stock from happening, Sparky. And, it like, was a JV6. Really just barely. It was a JV6, <laughs> but like, I cannot believe my eyes here. Uh, look at this. So this is the team combo that happened while you were giving the exposition 50 seconds in, right? <laughs> like, that, 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 was, that was amazing. Um, so what I wanted to say before we like looked at the screen of disbelief and Lores was just uh, destroying yous, Um was that it was impressive. It was interesting to me that the comps from both teams were the same from that tournament because that tournament was pre-balance patch, right? Yes. So, so it was one of those things where they went through into bracket and they had it prepared for that bracket because we had that community tournament. For, oh, go ahead and <laughs> please finish what okay. you're saying. I, and, and, I physically couldn't contain myself, so I had to recoil. Uh, okay, 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 finish yeah. what you were saying. So, so and, and what was I saying? <laughs> oh, I, I was saying that. Team despite uh, with patch notes, despite the patch notes, despite the balance changes, for better or for worse, they're like, "This is what we prepared. We showed this at the bracket before. We feel comfortable with this, and they're going with it into game number two. And that is after Yuz did not play the game. Yep. Uh, in game number that one, that is what we were both physically recoiling yeah. once we saw that Yuz did 86 damage total wow. compared to the 212 that Fiend did. Meanwhile, Lores putting more damage out on his team, 562 oh. compared to Kynas, 450. If you want to look at those stats at home, make sure to open up Odin's journal on the left side and go to those live stats. All right, they've got a little bit of a rhythm going here on Demon Island. I like this. Yuz has been batting up, uh, batting up opponents towards Fiend. Fiend's been pivoting the side sig, and even though it's not knocking out, Queen Nice sigs are pretty damaging. They were doing a ton of damage, and Laura's and Kaina now both trying to save each other back to the stage. Fiend does go down, but a much better opening here. They just have to get those alley-oops to actually take out a stock instead of do damage, because so far, blue team has been doing well, avoiding getting hit by the attacks that matter. And Laura's putting out the Akno there with the gravity cancel neutral signature. Fighting his way back to the yeah. stage with it. Now, even though last game was disastrous, for the red team, I didn't expect the rest of the games from these two teams to end up like that one. I, like, like I talked yeah. about in the pre-show, talked about it on this desk sometimes, as well. Sometimes you just are like, ah, I was still cold, right? Yep. <laughs> like, like it, oh yeah, definitely. Sometimes that happens, and it happens in a bracket match. And yes, it's a bummer to go down a game, but best of fives are, are good for a reason. You get that time to warm up, to adapt, and to be like, oh yeah, I'm fighting Lores. I'm gonna get ground pounded by Spear and by Bow. Uh, Yuz finally goes down, and that's already a much better scoreline for Yuz than last game. 
Now, since we just saw some team damage coming out from Kainas, I believe, Neutralite onto Lores, I do want to point out last game, there was zero team damage from Fiend and Yu. So even though it was a horrible game for them, zero team damage is impressive. Oh, no this way. combo! Kaina doesn't get the side air follow up afterwards, but that was an amazing pickup from Kaina on the neutral light and Lores to be able to get in. The the, the combos coming out from Lores and Kaina here are phenomenal. They've got some follow ups that are just unbelievable. Yuz tries to go in, but Fiend doesn't pivot the neutral signature and Fiend doesn't get the landing. Is that the double knockout from Yuz? No, somehow they're barely living. There we go. That down tick will finally do it, and Kaina gets sared away as they're trying to take a lead here. Yuz being the stock tank this time around. Fiend so good at the follow-ups perfectly centers that recovery to send him straight up the top and take the lead. Now, one thing we saw or we, we really didn't see from Kaina there was deliberately putting your stock into the blast zone yeah. because he was so much in the red. So he's going to have to fight the 1v2 while Loras was spawning back in. That means if Kaina gets knocked out, likely to happen, that means Loras is again <gasps> in a 1v2 on his own rather than both of them spawning oh. in it at exactly the same time. But they're looking at Fiend. They want to take out Fiend or at least both of them focus while Fiend is playing defensively. Yeah, Fiend finally picks up the guitar. Gets a neutral land to Loras and a recovery. Switches back over to help use. No! Recovers Loras again. Kinda gets the side sick. Use in the 1v2. Action hand could fall with the side airs. Hits both Kaina and Loras, and Loras jumps right out of the way of that neutral sig. And that downlight side air, despite hitting his teammate, is absolutely what he's looking for here. Is use? Okay. That was. That was pretty creative for Muse to turn around with that down air there in that situation, but a much closer game two, despite still being in the hands of Lores and Kaina at the end of it. Look at that down sig. And then he catches. And this was beautiful. Yeah, the dash forward down light. Oh, Kaina just barely just got barely. caught. By this. I was like, why didn't Kaina stare? The second hit of spear down light hits. Yep. And it hit in such a weird way that Kaina didn't even get like carried into it. It was delight into side air there uh, into the victory. Wow. Really well played. And we're running it back. Same legends all across the board. That was really mostly what I saw when I was just scrubbing back through the VOD. Shouts out to SSL BH for putting on that tournament so I could look back through the VOD. There was kind of changing over from the cross onto the Val, but that was only towards the end, and that was probably only because they were losing, which yeah. they eventually went on to lose that tournament. But it was mostly this comp. Same thing for Fiend and Yuz. Even though Fiend has very deep pockets in terms of legend picks, same thing for Yuz. Not quite as deep as Fiend, but still. Nice. Nice pickup there. That's going to give them overall stage control. There is a weapon spawn in case they wanted to swap out their Ooh. weapons. Oh, Kaina! His follow-ups are so good. I just, I could sit here. It's hard to do commentary for this team. Neutral sig. I, I just want to make noises, Taz. It's I mean, so hard. It is pretty unbelievable how, how Kaina and Loras can make literally any win in neutral look like some big brain team combo play. And I'm, I'm. They're just kind of that good at doubles. <laughs> like, like, I'm having trouble really explain. Like, he was getting set up on the platform on Fortress of Lions like three seconds before kind of even hit that that attack. And that side air follows through, down to comes through, and kind of was getting ready to dash forward, yep. side light yep. on the down to. He was like, how do I make this do 10 more damage? Yeah. Like, that's, that's all he's thinking. That's that, that, that's all he wants is like more. He's greedy. He's like, I'm more. I can get more. Give me more damage. I and, want more. And, and he's doing it by dashing through his teammate in a in, in what looks like an incredibly risky way. But he's not getting hit. And if he does yeah. get hit, it's it's by a little piece of the light attack. It's not it's not that big of a deal. You, you you lose nothing going for it. And that's exactly it. We talked about teams getting lost in the sauce earlier today and then playing a little bit reckless. That uh, has not happened at least yet from this team of Kaida and Loras. Their follow-ups truly are second to none right now, looking like oh, the yeah. absolute oh, best team so, in the world. They were so ready. Okay, that was the first time that we ever saw uh, okay, you you had to say they were getting lost in the sauce because that's, 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 that's absolutely what Bro, that was. Bro, it was a minute 45 I, I, in. Kaida was almost barbecue it was a, sauce. It was a rare case where he did not think Loras was going to go for the double delay. Yeah. And, then, and then Loras was kind of like, hey, I got his dodge, though. And then Kaida was like, I don't have any jumps, bro. <laughs> he's just, and he just falls. They are now fighting off the side of the stage. Lots of nares coming through. Those down sigs from Loras, every single one's hit. Fiend just falls. I didn't really notice what happened to Fiend. I saw him on the wall. I, I, I don't th I, he didn't run out of anything. He didn't have wall slip. I, I don't know. I, I, I I was I was really looking at what was happening to use. Either way, unfortunate for the red team here in game uh, game number three because if Kaina and Loras win this, it's just done for. Use and Fiend have wow. an edge guard scenario here. Whoa, that pivot neutral light was was nuts. That what was that? Okay, good neutral sig. Man, Still they, in KO. Fiend has gotten about seven hits that just barely didn't knock out into them struggling to get the knockout afterwards, and it's been so unfortunate. 
Oh, spot dodging just barely to get through that ground pound that used pulled out of just a little bit early. So he didn't keep it going. Did you see that dodge down from Kaina? Down diagonal right dodge to get behind Yuz. Can't remember whether it was Yuz and Fiend right there, who was going to punish Kaina. So the way he's like, I want more, I want more, but he's never too greedy. Yeah. He is definitely uh, on a fine line there. Oh, that's such a great side stick. Doesn't even stop him. Just jumping around and I use. can't. I, I can't. Taz, I truly cannot believe this. I truly cannot believe this. Before we actually did our predictions today, and I was like doing my research kind of like a couple hours ago, thinking yeah. about what I wanted to put in first place, it was like, I actually don't know between Kaina, Lores, and Use Fiend. But I mean, based on what oh. we're seeing right now, uh, I'm thinking I made the right choice, Let's but we can Fiend never here. count. Oh, Fiend, Fiend did get wall he slip. He did get wall he slip. He got wall slip. Yeah, so he just did it. That's that's actually wild. Uh, yeah, he just he just wall slipped. Um, okay, so yeah, Fiend and use they go down. Uh, oh three to Kaina wow. and Loras, who are now in my eyes very clearly the favorites. Dude, they went down. Oh. Three. Yeah, yeah. That is brutal. This isn't a tug of war anymore. This is what it looked like at the Twitch event where it was Tyler one against all of the other streamers on the other side. And Tyler one's trying to pull as hard as he can, but he's not like 15 people. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty tough. Uh, I, I, I'm realizing that kind of after, after Worlds has gotten like 10 times better. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. And that's, he was already really, really good. Uh, any other thoughts on that? Um, uh, I'm just going to sit here and stutter and make noises because I'm still floored. So we're going to send it over to someone who is a little bit better with words than I am. Take it away, Remy. All right, life is great. Kind of lore is also great. They came through with the basic weapon set we all love and know, spear and gauntlets. The gauntlet changes change how you're supposed to follow up on that. We were talking about that last night with the Bryn and Sig and the side Sig comparisons. This time we have some follow-ups here from Lores and Kaina. They were playing really well around each other. Some really good team plans and pressure applied onto the opponents. Uh, just, this, just this first play on the edge guard here shows that new gauntlet angle, that end light goes for the down light. Usually you look for your sig there to get the knockout or whatever you're gonna do. He goes for the down light, gets the side air. Uh, nothing too creative there, nothing too crazy, but it's that timing, that positioning that allows for that team to be great. Another thing here, these combo starters shows that it's not just the basic combos. They're able to improvise. They're able to go even when they run out of stage. Very beautiful GC. They get the down air and it is a GC side light that is the follow up. Not a lot of things you can do there, but they did find something that works and just a second too soon on the weapon throw, they would have gotten that KO, but he does end up making it back to the stage. Now this is a position I really want to look at and I'm going to slow it down a bit uh, just to show you exactly what I'm talking about. And it's this kind of wall and pressure that happens right here after that initial play, right? He gets one side light, he doesn't back up, he gets the next side light on the opponent. And in this entire time, Loris is standing peacefully behind him waiting for what's going to happen. We're talking about how good Kaina is. The third sidelight is so extreme. This area of pressure just allows for Fiend to have nowhere else to go. That down stick covers the edge. And as he tries to go up, Loris just completely covers that option as well, getting them that early knockout and f giving them another stock lead up on their opponents. It's plays like that the entire time. Another really good situation here where they kind of just cover every single dodge they can. Uh, Loris applying that pressure off stage kind of does make it back and he watches use sees that he's gonna run out of options here the dodge comes through and almost immediately he's backing up gets that side light, gets the recovery another early stock and just the lead they're able to play with it doesn't even matter that kind of loses the stock here early just beautiful stuff from them as a team uh the spear is looking great the gauntlets are still looking amazing phenomenal and uh yeah they're looking like a team that can take this entire tournament so really excited Thank you, Remy, for that expert analysis. That was a quick one, man. And we're going to be moving on to our next set. We have Ian and Vim Tankilo against Sack and Vecina. It's anyone's game here. Yeah, I'm curious what Sack and, uh, and Ian on either sides of the team there are going to be locking in going into this one because I think that traditionally, like, we, we did saw Fiend lock in the Katars with the Queen Nye, but I do think the Queen Nye is just a specific Fiend pick. It's not like a Katars pick. I'm wondering what they're going to lock in here because we saw so much guitar play from them in singles, but really 
When I think of doubles, I don't think of all the cool guitar team yeah. combos you're setting up. That really is a single specialist weapon. So we'll see what they've got prepared for this head-to-head -head coming up because the winner of this has got to be prepared for a very tough opponent in Kaina and Lorez right afterwards. So Sack really broke out onto the scene like we mentioned in the pre-show. Same time Kaina did it because they were teammates and it was that double Bodvar. But it turns out Queen, uh, is, uh, Taza, is Queen 9 I, meta in South America? There's one on each side. I am just... Uh, flabbergasted by this. I this has to be Fiend's doing. I was going to say, <laughs> is this the Fiend so effect I, coming I will, through? And so and so we talked a little bit about this and then so so here we are being pretty ignorant about the state of this, the, the meta in South American doubles for sure. Um, uh, you he had looked up what what Fiend and Yuz were using in and that was a great knockout there on Ventankilo, but they, what they were using in the in the tournament prior to this. But I do really feel like a lot of the legend decisions and the strategies that come through are basically decided by whoever's winning the most in doubles during that week, right? Okay. And that, but that could possibly be the case because I have, have we've seen three unique queen knives in a row. In our I, first two sets. I, yeah, I, <laughs> we've seen more queen knives than we have sets, Taz. No, there is no state of Brawlhalla where I've ever said nope. it. Nope, that's not true. There was a time. No, there was it. Queen Nye's never really been nine meta. Doubles, it's doubles. been like the handful of Queen Nye players, but it's a Queen Nye player thing. Like Fozy yeah, has yeah. a Queen Nye, but that's a Fozy thing. I had, to, I had to dig really far back in NA to even get to a Queen Nye pick. Yeah, this is nuts. Uh, wow, Vemtekilo taking the big beating there off the side of the stage uh, to Vecina. So we've got, on the other hand, besides the Queen Nye's, uh, Amethyst and Olgrim. So we've got our Axe standard into the best legend in the game. Queen Nye, okay, side sigged into the Qatar weapon throw there. That's a ton of damage despite no knockback. Yeah, this, um, this red team is going to be swinging because they have the high strength Zal and, of course, the high strength Queen Nye as well. Yeah, yeah. Queen Nye, uh, one of the few legends in the game whose stat is sacrificed for her relatively high stat line is movement speed, um, which is something that most players, in my experience, value very highly. And is oftentimes the only reason not to pick the character. It's just because it, they might not like how because the, the movement speed affects your grounded sprint and your air drift as well. It affects everything. Um, but we're seeing that for the, the the choice of moves coming through here, the heavy hitting moves are working out. Sack gets the recovery on the Ian, um, and Vem gets hit by that guitar in air, gets spiked towards the side, and now Ian and Vem are holding left side of the stage trying to take down Sack's second stock. That's going to be tough because that means Vecina has the option for all of these follow-ups, all of these punishes, picks up a two-piece onto Ian, but that is a Queen-9. What do we always say, Taz? A Queen-9 never gets knocked out. Yo, that ground pound could have led to a huge stock loss there, but the momentum was stopped. I believe it was a weapon toss Ooh. that came out from Bim Tank Kilo. Unfortunately, oh. that would have taken Vecina possibly oh out goodness. of this game. A very dangerous game state here right now. Okay, there's the neutral. Like, okay, sack. While the scene is recovering, totally just focused on cannons airing back to the stage, gets a double knockout on stage and says, like, look, you could have been knocked out here. I would have won the 1v2 regardless. I got you. Uh, what a great finish there coming out from Sack on the Queen Nye. We're going to see this offstage exchange right here. Guitar, neutral sig lands with Dare, neutral sigs again immediately. That now, is that awesome. signature is not a great signature if we're talking about 1v1 because it is highly punishable. It has a really slow oh, startup. But in 1v2, it's. It, hey, he's making, he's making it work. I just, I mean, I, I, I'm okay. saying the raw frame data on it is yeah. not a favorable but there move. But there was no team combo coming in there. He just dare neutral sig. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm telling that's sack difference. Th that, okay. That's all sack right, difference. All right, all right. All right. That sack is sack difference. succeeding with that signature I was wondering where you were going spite. with that because I was kind of like, yeah, the conditions are even harder than 1v1, and he landed it twice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay. telling you, that's okay. that sack difference. That's okay. him overcoming the drawbacks of that signature to use it in neutral, which is not know, something you see. I don't see. know why I just assumed that you were saying, but in 2v2s, it's good. <laughs> you can get away with more in 2v2s, yeah. so I think it's better, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I don't think it's miles better to yeah. where anybody other than sack is going to be doing stuff nasty like that. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was fantastic. And look at the setup. Oh, that is... That coverage is so, disgusting. So I, th that sort of coverage, I mean, sack does go down there, but that's something that I will just give straight up credit to Boomy and Sandstorm for doing first, where they did like the Zol down sig at the edge while Boomy stayed right above him with Blaster's down light. Yep. And they just modified it with Queen Knight side sig. And honestly, it was more terrifying to me, to be honest. That that's uh, that was really cool to see. Vem still on three stocks. We've seen the same case. Edge guard opportunity here. Vem going all the way off of that downer. And Ian with the friendly fire. It doesn't matter about the knockback reduction if you're hitting him with a force as hard as Queen Knight side sig. That's going to do some damage. 
Messina still living on this first stock. You know, we haven't really talked oh. too much. Oh, just ended up falling there. That is Ian put on final stock. They're already down 0-1. Yeah. Let's see, and now they're all on the left side of the stage, and Vam trying to take control over the top plat. Vecina and Sack are very well aware that they have complete control over game number two. Even that Nair comes through, we were talking about how Vecina was still on first stock. That's still the case, uh, even after getting hit out of stuff recovery effects. Do he chain dodges through the Queen Knight side stick after hitting the neutral light to avoid that hit, and Ian is just letting a rip there. Uh, even, even getting the double knockout despite hitting his teammate and does even up the game in stocks, albeit barely. But he ended up hitting Vim Tankilo, adding a little bit more damage on to that second stock from Vim, who is very much in the red. Oh, Vecina, they're starting to add up that damage very quickly onto yeah. him. He's already orange on the oh, second stock. Is Ian but done? Ian might be done. Oh. Just barely missing, but in comes Vim Tankilo! Oh, and <laughs> there he goes. He that, straight up that, said, Mr. President, get down. <laughs> that can of recovery. Uh, he was blasting off after that one. Ian does make it back, though, because of Vem's efforts. And that makes this much more possible to win here, as opposed to having that 1v2 at the state that he did. Ian does go down. But Vem, Lance, I, I feel like with how it moves you when you hit the stairs is the most doable 1v2 weapon at times. Because he can just stare through, hit an opponent, knocks him away, chase dodges after the momentum. That that that's gonna be tough to come back from though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially when Vecina is out there. Dude, he's dabbing. <laughs> he just straight up did a dab on that on that frozen screen. I'll have to see that in the replay. <laughs> I didn't catch that live. Yeah, there was that recovery coming through. Great finisher here. Uh, coming up from Messina with that axe recovery. And that Boom. with no dodge coming through, he's just gonna hit him right there. Are we gonna get a freeze frame Boom. on the dab? Where is it? He's dabbing. Oh, yeah, there it is. Look at the camera. Really <laughs> just playing nicely there. Zooming in on Messina, who just picked up the last stock. Now, you talked about that movement speed earlier. Sack is opting into the movement speed stance. Of course, so is Ian, Ian yeah. is as well. That is a standard Queen Nye option. She's not hurting for defense. She's not really hurting for decks. She's not hurting for strength. So, obviously, put one more point into that movement speed. Yeah, if you have an experience two speed nigh, give it a shot. No, no. <laughs> look, I'm gonna tell you, you don't have to. I you ain't gonna like it. <laughs> just to just find out why why that's not really uh, the choice there when it comes to the stances. Here we go, game number three. Spark, we might be in for another quick one at this rate because Vecina and Sack did even better in game two than they did in game one. Now I will say that Ian did have a oh a rough first stock. And he's having it again. Oh, okay. Sack with the side six. Uh, he's sniping these stocks away. Using the side sig really well, and Ian was actually throwing a lot of them out previously to middling success. He definitely had a lot that he just straight up whiffed, but he also had some that picked up both members of the red team. He had some that lead to KOs, but he also picked up his own teammate in a few of them. I believe he even took out his own teammate's stock at least once or twice with that side Spike, sig as well. Speaking of friendly fire there, that cider comes through. I don't know if Zach touched stage. Okay, he did. Pogo from Ian. Can Vecina make it back? Yes. Okay. Zach goes in for the support, and so far they're both making Again? it back here. Oh, that could be a huge reversal on Ian. Ian does get through with the recovery. Weapon spawn comes through. Axe picked up and no strong hit. Means Vecina gets more and more extra credit. Sack and Vecina just barely countering each other. And there's that neutral second. That's... That one had the setup. That was the setup. That's where that move is like a million times better than oh, in singles. Yeah. Um, because it just lingers for so long that you'll catch that knockback. And at the same time, Zach and Vecina go down, but at the efforts of their uh, recovery and helping each other recover, they got an extra stock to boot. And now it's four stocks to three, and Ian already damaged, meaning that blue team's on the verge of getting knocked into the elimination bracket. So looking at one of the big difference makers from the last game was Ian's second stock. It was deleted almost immediately. Yeah. Meanwhile, this game, he's doing a better job, not quite as good as Sack and Vecina, but oh. he's staying ahead of Vim Tank Kilo in the damage taking and stock losing process. Well, and that, but that could change very quickly here, depending on the team combo that they get, right? Ian uh, going down to that side stick once again. Sack dashing forward, dashing back, gets the Nair. And Vecina just staying centered, throwing out the axe recovery to catch anybody jumping too high unawares. Uh, and they're pushing this lead further and further. Vecina's the one most vulnerable to going down here. And because of that, Sack is just taking the aggression onto them. Dodges that dare. Guz get hit by the side oh. air. Vecina's still living. Ian is doing his best. Ooh. There's the one he wanted. That's the neutral air that's going to spike straight down. You got to hit it like that six o'clock position in order to get that straight down hitbox vector. Oh, down sig dodge and a landing cannon there actually is what's used to punish that. Sidelight Sider does not hit. 
Uh, but the second slider comes back onto the stage. Down tick avoided. Vam Tequilo and Ian doing a great job here. Edge guard scenario for Vam. Does the down tick come through? No. Sack just really wants to land that side sig. Blue team's actually doing a really good job here. They took away that stock from Sack. Yeah. They have the 2v1 opportunity here. Oh, this could be it. They're going to grab two hits. They're going to put Vecina into the orange. Ian's doing a pretty good job surviving. Same thing for Vim Tanquilo. Oh. Finally hits the side sig, taking Vecina out of the game. This is 100% winnable for Sack, but the blue team is absolutely in this, and they need a victory here if they don't want to take a trip down to the elimination bracket. Right, let's just see yet. if Sack can do what he did in game one. He technically won the the Well, he just he ground pounds right through everything. And Vem with no recovery gets hit by the dare. And in the 1v2, Sack makes the amazing comeback of, well, getting six knockouts yep. the entire game. I mean, Vecina, great job playing support. But really, that whole set was Sack. Uh, game number one, Vecina recovering back. Sack gets the double knockout. The ground pound, that's the spear player's dream right there. Hitting the ground pound at two different angles, either side of the stage, getting one knockout and going for the edge guard on the other side. We see that pogo right there. That's enough force. Your queen, nah, you're going to get that knockout with spear dare. And they're going to move forward into the winner's bracket in the top three. I do really want to give a lot of credit to Ian there, even though his team caught the L against Sack and Vecina. Looking at the PRs between these players, there's a stark difference. Sack coming in at five, Vecina coming in at eight, Vim Tankilo coming in at nine. So they're all kind of in that region. Yeah. And then Ian coming in PR 19 with $800 in earnings. He's a three digit earning player compared to all of the four digit players that is everyone else in this game. And this was a uh, similar story in singles uh, last weekend as well, whereas we were getting to that top eight and we knew all the names and we we're looking at Ian and we're like, okay, let's see what's going to be happening here. And Ian brought in his own uh, style of Qatars with the Asuri and is now also doing the same going into uh, this double championship. So that is going to be their time in the winner side of the bracket. They're going to be going down into the elimination and we are going to see we are going to see uh, Sack and Vecina versus Lores in Kaina. But before we do that, we want to take a quick break. While we are on break, make sure to pick up the Winter Championship packs. You can get all of the goodies in the game. You can see it right there, available on all platforms. You're going to get Mammoth Coins. You're going to get Blasters. And you are going to get more. Those Blasters look really nice. Those might be uh, the new main for me. I'm going to pick up that Winter Championship pack when I get home. Mm -hmm. You better pick it up right now. We'll see you in just a few moments with the rest of this bracket.
And we're back getting into the elimination bracket side of things here in South America for the winter championship. We just had a remarkably fast uh, winter semifinals there on the top side of the bracket with two three O's that just went by, I mean, Good goodness, I was talking about how I thought there was four teams here to really look out for, but it does really look like it's just the two at the moment. And it might just be the one if Kaina and Laura's are continuing to play as hot as they were, but I could not I could not draw any conclusions from that. That's gonna be a fun winner's final as we get to it, but we have to go through the elimination bracket first. Sparky, give me a little bit of insight on the teams that we've got coming up here. We have Ailzo and Minexo versus Lily and Junior. Then after that, we're gonna see Nagi and Maxi versus Wes and and power seeing Wes and power down in the elimination bracket this early is a little bit of a surprise we were expecting this to be the return to form from Wes and power that we hadn't seen since the autumn championship at I, the end of last year i am interested if they ran into uh laura's and kaina or zach and piscina i mean i can give you the answer yeah, right let's now take a look at that in a little bit but that would be the only reason where i'm like now it doesn't surprise me why why they're down in there what do we got what are we seeing no, they lost to Ian, Ian and Van Tenkilo. Tenkilo. That's actually a very good win for Ian and Van Tenkilo. That's then. huge. After, after the, the match that we just watched, I, I, I'm curious what the uh, disparity of the teams are going to be here in the elimination bracket, if there's going to be any at all. I know that today we've been kind of like confirmation bias spoiled that all bracket matches are going to be 3-0s yeah. while we're casting. But hey, there was a game five in Europe. And maybe there will be some game fives here today in South America as well, uh, because this head to head, I in particular don't really have any strong feelings either way on who's going to win. If I look at it, I mean, Wes, I, I tend to just default to, but I'm really interested to see how Nagi and Maxi play out here because Nagi is somebody who I've seen do well in twos before. I'm not certain that they were teaming with Maxi in the past. Uh, but Nagi and News. It was News. Yeah. That's the name. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be having this top eight elimination match coming up here right right away, game number one. Now, we don't have too much information on Nagi and Maxi here other than two tournaments that they played in 2022, about mid to late 2022, was the Summer Championship and the Autumn Championship, both of them coming in seventh place. So inside of top eight, we have two Argentinian players. And Power, of course, is also from Argentina. So normally we talk about how Brazil is running South America, and for the most part, they are running South American Brahalla. But here, we're going to have three Argentinian players in this game. And then, of course, we have Wes Haley from Brazil. Nagi might be hailing from the top blast zone the way Power was hoping to send him Ooh. up there. And we've got some legend picks that are classics here. The Taros coming out from Nagi um, and then Power uh, on the John Cena. But interesting to note, um, the uh, Alucard epic crossover for Ezio uh, is something that I have not seen picked very much at all, honestly. Uh, it, it, it's kind of interesting to think about when it comes to sword and orb in general. Orb, one of those funny weapons where in singles had only one player representing it in top eight and it was the player that won North America, right? That's uh, raidish. Uh, yeah. So, so it would be cool to see if there's going to be more orb in double since then. I know that in the, in the in the past there was a ton of Thor, but honestly, I just kind of feel like that was because of high defense hammer. I, honestly, I'm thinking Thor could make a return. Yeah. Now that we're seeing more hammer, I think it's going to take a bold player to actually choose to go on to order, which is something most people aren't doing. But Maxi yeah. trying to do his best out here. They're definitely oh. behind oh, here. The but this could be huge. Pouch. Maxi, no fear, dips all the way up to the right side of the stage there. After leaping down, goes up for the down, the ground pound, and gets that knockout. Makes it back here. And all oh, the gravity cancel neutral stick doesn't get the distance, doesn't get the wall touch, and the blue team steals the lead right back into their favor. This is going to be power, of course. You saw that he's dominating. That means three KOs. That means he's picked up three KOs on his second stock, but he's barely even orange. So that means he's taking yeah. next to no damage throughout picking up mighty three stocks from the red team. He's starting to take a little bit more here, including some team damage. Side light, side air. That turned him red. He sent over onto the edge. Nagi, they immediately swapped places, and Nagi was looking to clean up that stock from power. Yeah, Maxi goes in for the side stick. It's punished by Ser. Down air hits, and Power actually dodges the down stick, but the second swing sends him flying. He holds onto the stock just barely because of that defense stance, but there he goes, flying off the right to that Ser. And Maxi, putting up that down signature, doesn't get the right read. West flying right through with the side stick, and Power with the, the nice punish with that side air. That's going to be the stock from Nagi, and now it's a 1v2 where Maxi's going to get hit by... Okay, <laughs> West was just kind of like... <laughs> hey, he was he was there to assist the power. I was like, nope, I got it. He grabbed it, canceled neutral light, and then literally put his hands on the yep. controller. He was like, okay, fine. 
It's, it's, like, a, two ahead, it's, a, it's a two player game. Go ahead but. and take this one, Power. You, you got it, brother. I'm going to throw out a neutral light so that I, I can pretend I'm doing something. He's he's the little brother with the controller that's not actually plugged yeah, in. Here it is. And you're playing a one player game. And then he just goes down. He literally just does <laughs> it. He just no does it movement coming out from Wes on that one, but a very confident victory coming out from Wes in power, picking up solid mid 500 damage numbers coming out from both Wes and power. Yeah, really great game uh, one from them. We're gonna see on the graph here, actually, uh, that's a different game. But if it was the graph for them, we would see that West and Power started off with a little bit of a weak start. Maxi had a really clutch early knockout with that ground pound off the right side of the stage. Um, and then they just took complete control over the game. And now we're seeing a complete uh, legend composition swap coming here with the Bryn and the Orion for game number two. Shout out to EU, right, with, it, with this setup here in Classic particular. Classic EU pick coming out here. Yeah. Maxi hoping that his oh. axe can be as disastrous as some of the axes that we've seen from Bren players today, use being one of them in South America, though hopefully it'll West fare so a little good. bit better. But Wes, of course, that down sig, we saw it in North American 1v1s from Stingray. Of course, we expect it from any great Orion player, oh, especially one like Nagi Wes. Oh, on this new stock all the way off the right side of the stage. Yeah, uh, Wes had a down sig that hit both Nagi and Maxi uh, at the same time and just Barely didn't knock out, uh, well, honestly, credit to the, the current balance patch for that, but he still gets it with the second one uh, coming through, just has to uh, adjust those uh, instincts of his for when it's going to knock out with damage. And now we're back to a game where, uh, well, we'll see, Sparky. Can they get any of these stocks here? Oh no, Maxi, that was that was some rough that was, fire. That was interesting because Power, I guess, saw Maxi coming in and he immediately retreated back to the main platform, fast falling to get there as quick as possible. And Maxi still ended up hitting his teammate, putting some more damage out on him. Wes is going to fall. That is a full wipe on the blue team. But Nagi and Maxi are both very much in the red. Little two piece coming out. Let's see, of course, that down signature. Oh, that's so setup. devastating. <laughs> yeah, he ends up hitting another one, of course. Yeah, it, it, it was actually an interesting situation. Wes noticed that the platform on the left-hand side was currently in its raised position. So he's just kind of like, well, you don't have the jumps to make it back up there. You're going to have to land anyways. You might as well just keep spinning the win. And that down stick does hit on the second hit. And now it's four stocks to two. They're doing a good job putting out some damage onto power. You're seeing the D-Sig from Nagi. Unfortunately, it was from the wrong side of that if he was looking to send over into the blast zone. There's going to be a great pickup from Wes. Hits the neutral signature. Going to be tough to come back from. Oh. Wes getting caught under the stage. Maxi was not afraid, was not tunnel visioning back over to the wall, looking for self-preservation. He also found the KO there. Yeah, great job with that knockout. Weapon toss up into the sky. Let's see if we can get anything else off of that. Nagi using those down airs over and over. Okay, that's huge for power. Maxi get caught, gets caught towards the top of the stage. He goes down. And now Nagi going in with that side air. Okay, 1v2 potential here. Let's see if West and Power can set up for the team combo. Of course, they can neutralize into Sair. West might switch over to the spear just to be able to finish the next neutralite with a down sig. Uh, no, Lance in hand the entire time here. And that's Nagi going that's down. That's it. Taz, are. are are we continuing yeah, 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 the 3-0 curse? The I, way it's looking so far, I'm thinking we are. That was uh, a really dominant win coming up from Power Ranger and West. And even with the platforms on the map, we can see right there, he went for gravity cancel sideline of all moves. Uh, covered a lot with that down signature. And in fact, we saw from Power and West a really cool maneuver where they were just like unarmed neutralite, uh, spear neutralite, sword neutralite. West was just over there being like, I don't care how much damage they have. I'm going to down sick. And he sometimes they even caught both of their opponents there uh, with those maneuvers. So really well played from Weston Power. And they're going to be going up 2-0 in this set. And with one more game on the line, they could just 3-0 their ways further into the elimination bracket. Now we're seeing Maxi swap back off of the Bryn over onto the Alucard that we saw previously. Maybe that's just the more comfort pick coming out here. Maxi thinks he has a little bit more gas in the tank with that than he did with the Bryn. Yeah, we're now on Demon Island over here. Let's see how that works out. We haven't seen too many of these side sick finishers coming out from Nagi that Orion players will tend to like to go for. But yeah, I like going back to the Alucard. Um, really well played last time with the orb in particular, which is what I want to see more of. It's just a matter of if he has that synergy with Nagi here on the Orion. This is the one team composition we haven't seen them do just yet, and it's their final gambit uh, in this particular set, and in the tournament. Yeah, I feel like I haven't seen any major moments, and I could have just missed them from Nagi and Maxi. Nice. I mean, like, really, really tight follow-ups. There was the Orm Gay play on the right side early on in the set that we saw previously that you called out and praised so heavily. 
But other than that, I feel like we haven't seen too much follow-up gameplay like we've seen from Wesson Power, like we've seen from Kaino Loras, like we've seen from Wesson, er, uh, from Fiend and Use. Man, Wesson Power are so good with their setups. They did a thing where Power Ranger, or Power went for the spear down air at the same time that West did the down sig. So they were covering the stage and the air at the, at the same time. And if you mess that up, you just get caught by the down sig, right? So they, they prepare for those edge guard setups and they end up getting a knockout because of that. Now they're looking for a team combo setup here and they can't quite get it, but they're still in the lead with power still on all three stocks. Downlight neutral sig, what a classic coming out there from the Atori. And I mean, they're just running away with this lead, Sparky. Oh, the D-Light ground pound coming out from Power, but Max, what? he completely Nagi? disengages, puts out some pressure onto Power, relieves some of the pressure. It's onto Nagi, a GCD sig up in the air. Shades of Stingray coming out on that one. Maxi, yeah. the signature off stage, missing wildly, but he doesn't get punished, so he's still in a decent spot. If they can get a stock on West quickly, they're not going to be in the worst spot here. There's sometimes where, with how West is good at landing the down sig, I'm just kind of like, this should just be the only move you're using after a certain amount of damage on your opponents. Like, he's just landing in between all of them. He's been able to get these to connect. Maxi has to down air and run back to stage, and that was smart. Power hits the down light and then realizes Wes could potentially get punished if he goes for it, and he could get punished, so he dodges down and then gets the recovery. And Nagi goes down to one stock. Maxi, it's the same case. And now they're going for the team combo on Nagi, who's struggling to find a weapon. A little bit of team damage coming out, so they aren't able to find any major combo onto Nagi while Maxi is spawning back in. They get the stock onto Power. Can they clean this one up from Wes? The side air is going to do it. They're in a good position here. Yeah. This is the closest it's been. Yeah, this is great. Oh, but the downline side oh. catches both of them. And Power goes in for the pivot neutral signature. Still tons of damage coming through. Neutral lights onto Nagi once again. Maxi jumps over the neutral light with the orb down light. Gets that punish there, but no extra damage. And Nagi is at risk of going down to one solid team combo. Hell, one solid signature. Uh, to put this into a 1v2 scenario. Nagi swinging, doing the best he can to put out as much damage as possible before he falls. No, there. Dare again. Oh, Maxi's so damaged as well. Down nice grab. Air. Oh, but at the same time, Nagi goes down and the weapon thrown to down air means Maxi is. No way. That's going to be it. That's a good game, and West Power are going to move up. 3-0 over Maxi and Nagi to move forward into the elimination bracket here. As once again, Sparky, we are just seeing the, uh, I, I mean, even though West and Power are in the elimination bracket, it's not totally crazy to me that they're going to be 3 0 their way through this, but but man, oh man, that was that was convincing. Even when it got close, it was like, I still feel like this is convincingly in, in their favor. Definitely. And I mean, uh, I put them in my top three, so I would have expected them to put out a similar performance like that, given that mm. they are in round one of the elimination side. No disrespect whatsoever to Nagi and Maxi. The viewer vote, yeah, of course, it's Whoa. West. It's West and Power. We talked that about is it. the most. That is the the most one sided. We so talked far. about it in the pre show. Like yeah. Acno and Blaze were running EU two v two. Wes and Power were running South American two v two. They won seven of the eight tournaments that they entered together. Taza, that is incredible. Their streak was only ended by Fiend and Use, the team that they are about to face. Yeah, and so the one team, I wanted to see where Vem, Tenkilo, and Ian landed. So they landed on the other side of the elimination yes. bracket. So that rematch, if it happens at all, will be happening for fourth in the uh, lower semifinals. Uh, and that will be interesting to see because out of all the teams that knocked them down in the elimination bracket, that was not one that I was expecting. Um, and they're playing pretty well. Vem has been doing, he's been getting more and more of a household name in South America, both in singles and doubles. And now Ian might be joining that that group too, if he continues to perform as well as he's been doing in singles and with Vem. So I'm excited for the possibility of that rematch. Um, but yeah, that's all I've got on thoughts for that. So let's move on over to our analyst desk to hear some more in-depth analysis coming out. Take it away, Remy. Wes and Power came through there looking excellent. Wes, always a consistent player, always looks good on that Orion and any other Lance character he plays. Power, on the other hand, really came through on that Hattori. That high move speed, that old fabled signature kit, he was putting them out there and it looked really good. So let's get right into this replay here. I'm going to start it off with a play from the red team. This orb gameplay, it's not something you see a lot in twos, especially not on the Alucard Ezio crossover. It is really nice here. We see that first ground pound come back and I'm going to play it again for you. The end sig from your teammate sets you up for this nice down sig. And it's what he does after. It's the aggression, the continuation 
of that downward angle. He continues. He knows Lance has to charge up that ground. I mean, that recovery to get back. And he says, all right, if you're going to charge up your recovery, I know exactly where you're going to start it to get a good angle. And I'm going to get down there and punish it precisely. It was one of those hints of glory from that team that made you think, okay, maybe they can't do this. Maybe they can't push forward. But the blue team shut it down almost immediately. Power Ranger was everywhere he needed to be. He misses that follow up there, but it's not the end of the world because he does retaliate with that down, uh, that down air on the other side. And then his teammate West is there to close up that last stock. They play like a well oiled machine. Power Ranger, like I mentioned, is all over the place. The side light stops in his tracks, gets a double chase dodge, gets the end sig on the turnaround, and continues on that pressure. You can see his attacks never stop. As soon as he gets that end sig, he's already weapon throwing, setting up for the side light, down light, Sarah gets that knockout on both of them, and he looks great doing it. Continuing on into this position here, you see this team combo come out, and it's great. It's some early damage. It's going to be hard to follow it up completely, and they don't even mind. They immediately set up the next one, back-to-back -back team combos, adding on a bunch of damage. You can see the red team already ends up in the orange here, and it's when you're that much of a deficit, the down sig doesn't KO, but it might as well have because you guys have nothing to work with on these stocks. Continuing on, Power Ranger, like I mentioned, just really good awareness, really good knowledge, using his signatures really well. And it's a position like this where you know that, okay, my teammate's in danger, I'm in danger from behind, I've got to slow it down, i got to stop. He pulls down the recovery instead of going immediately for it, and that gives him some time to actually get the KO on Nagi as he goes for that punish. Really good stuff from Power Ranger. He was running all over the map that game. That's what Atori does, and he's using it really well. So. Thank you very much, Remy, for that expert analysis. As always, we're going to be moving on into our next set. We are still in the elimination side of things. We are on elimination round one still. The other set of that, and that's Elzo and Minexo versus Lily and Junior. So some of these double-digit PR players are really making it into this top eight. If we look at some of the PRs of these players, we have Elzo at PR 16, Minexo at PR 20, Lily at PR 10, and Junior at PR 12. Couple no. that with the E in PR 19 that we saw earlier they're pushing these prs further than the numbers would dictate yeah ian i see very soon uh getting above that pr19 spot and in the same case because there's been so much chatter from other players in the region uh same case for lillian jr here i expect them to be getting into that top 10 pretty darn soon if they continue with this and this might be the performance that they need to push that pr even further right uh getting into this winter championship getting into top five if they can get this win, but they have to go up against Elzo and Minexo, who are also pushing that power ranking and just that standard around their name to be a new standard team. I believe I've seen these two team together before. Um, I know Yuki used to team yeah. with Elzo. I can't remember who used to team with Minexo, but we've I seen Minexo I've on seen, stream I've seen before. both players, yeah. yeah. So this will be an interesting pairing coming from them. I want to see what team composition they've got so far because we've been seeing some very interesting picks. Like the fact that three out of four winter, winter side matches had, wait, yeah, that was three Queen Eyes. Dude, I yeah. can't. Three, we had three Queen Eyes. Do we have more Queen Eyes here? Hold on, let's look. No, we don't. Is that Nash? But it seems like we still have the Fiend effect is in full effect. Is that Nash? As we see a Nash did on the just screen. Like, did, did, <laughs> did Fiend just take the entire region under his wing and say, here's what you do to win? I mean, and he says, yeah. pick Nash and Queen Nye, and they all went, okay? I mean, you, you're going to look at one of the best in the region and try to replicate what he does. That's what uh, I do as a Blasters yes. player. I look at the best Blasters players, try to emulate that. People do that Holy with Fiend cow. as well. He is setting the stage for what happens in this, wow, in this region. Junior and Lily are looking really good starting this one out. 40 seconds in now, and they've already gotten two stocks from Ailzo and Minexo. Yeah, Junior and Lily having a great start here. Junior playing the uh, the standard Grim in doubles that you'd expect to be seeing. Based, any, any player of any level of any skill could capacity in any region could pick Olgrim and I go that makes sense it's a, it's something that I have just learned that it's like in doubles you can never complain about having an Olgrim on your team um, uh, Axe and Lance just provide so much for being able to get confirms and also team combos and his signatures just kind of cover the perfect angles Meanwhile, on the other side, of course, we have Lily coming in with the Nash, like you pointed out earlier. Hammer is getting some love in the way that pros are playing it in the 2v2 meta. Mm -hmm. Of course, Spear has always been getting love because it's such a strong weapon. That goes double for right now. So it totally makes sense. You add in the signature kit, you add in the high movement speed that Nash has as a legend. Not a bad pick by any means. Yeah, it's just a matter of whether or not you really value the dexterity uh, on Spear and Hammer. 
uh, that stops, I think, a lot of players from, from picking up Nash. Um, Science that comes through there, no amount of decks is gonna, <laughs> gonna change the force of that hit right there. Lily uh, going in for sure. That's this also something that the Nash brings to the table is very high strength and solid signatures. You may not be able to get away with all of them in ones like you can in twos. What a devastating Dude, finish it, from it, Juneror. It, it's not even like, they're, they're not even taking their time taking these stocks out. Like Juneror went out there and just was like, I'm taking you down with me with this ground pound. And I mean, I'm absolutely certain that if we let that game go one second longer, Juneror would have been in the blast zone too, but that's just what uh, he was willing to do there to, to get that last stock. That was, that was incredible. Um, Maybe I'm wrong, Sparky. Maybe it is just the rain of, of, it of might trios be. again. Like, look at this. But, oh. Lily doesn't finish it off, and Juneror is just kind of like, oh, my I'll turn. <laughs> he, just, Yoink. he just goes, and he's not making it back with that. It doesn't matter. And it was last talk scenario. They put out wow. almost double the damage that the red team did. You can get lost in the sauce. We've talked about that this weekend, but it seems like Lily and Juneror, like they're, they're two pigs and they are just bathing in it. Lily is doing an incredible job today so far, forcing Aelzo onto a character swap, forcing Minexo onto a swap as well. Okay, so this is the first Katars. Well, okay, I'm being so mean to Queen Nine by saying this is the first Katar. I just, I don't know why when I think of Queen Nine, I don't think Katar legend. <laughs> That's just my problem. Yeah, this is the, this is a, Queen Nye isn't a Katar legend. Queen Nye is Queen Nye. This is the first time that I've seen what I consider a singles pick yes. coming into into uh, into doubles here from Elzo onto the Caspian. Uh, Minexo goes down very quickly, and Lily, she's doing a great job here on the Nash Falls. That sider goes in for the other sider, and that side stick doesn't get, I think, it's like interrupted by a side light. So Lily's still holding onto her, her stock here. Uh, and Minexo, well, trying to clean up the fact that he went down so early on. Ooh, it's a good recovery start. off the top from Anexo and the weapon toss down. Aelzo trying to put pressure onto Juneror as Lily is spawning back into this one. She's looking for a weapon, picks it up. There's the spear in hand. She's getting handled by Manexo now, who's found about five or six hits, just barely falling away from that down signature yeah, that Elzo threw out. That spacing was too close for comfort. Uh, uh, Lily played around it very well, but I was like, wow, you are very confident uh, to, to not get hit by that, because that move can knock you up pretty early on. Ooh. I, today I learned. Yeah, that, that, that reaches up there. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 I, I will admit, I don't see a lot of Nash, both when I'm playing Brawlhalla or watching Brawlhalla, so that's quite a surprise to me. That's awesome. Nash players know that hit, uh, and then uh, non-Nash players don't expect that to hit. Yeah, that is something else. I mean, I understand with the hammer, right? Uh, the neutral stick for sure is there. Um, but here we go, back into the game. Evened up in terms of stocks. Juneror could go down pretty early on here, and that could be a huge change for Elzo and Minexo. But Lily with that scoop comes through. Oh, that ground pound could top. be an early knockout, and that's going to be it. Elzo goes down. Juneror securing the lead. That weapon, the weapon toss stopped the Axe Neutral Light from, from hitting, which was quite funny. Uh, and Juneror does go down. Very close game here, Sparky. A little bit of a bonk from the weapon toss on the head of Manexo. Lily, nice. she's chasing off stage. Nice alley. Complete disengagement. So she just gets back oh. onto the main stage. Again, devastating neutral signature. Yeah, the neutral signature here from Lily on, on the Nash, on Spear, on Hammer, both. Has been doing so great. Sidelight comes through. Manexo has to recover back to the stage. Ooh. Pogo stuck recovery. I think Manexo's just done for. No, had all the jumps. Gets back to stage, but Sarah on the way through, and Elzo falls off the bottom of the stage. It's a 2 0 lead for Lily and Juneror. They're speed running this bracket. Where the, let's, uh, South they, America is on PB Okay, phase. yeah, yeah, because I was going to say, it's not, it's not just Lily and Juneror speed running the bracket. It's right? everybody. Like we are. We are cruising. I mean, it's just we're, we're in this really interesting uh, state, at least for Europe and South America, where the teams that are better than the other teams are very clearly better. <laughs> That's, yeah, we're, it definitely we're, looks we're, like one team is fighting a different class of player. Yeah, and, that, and, and we're moving forward, and then and then we get towards the top three, and it's just this crazy exchange of game fives, right? And that's and that's really exciting to see. Lily and Juno are playing so hot. So Elzo and Minexo. Another chance to come through here. We've already seen that Elzo is willing to bring out counter picks even after a single loss. 
Uh, zero damage dealt with the gauntlets there. There was 59 oh, damage yeah. unarmed, so it was all Katars and then uh, some early stocks. We can see in the graph there towards the end, Elzo was just falling short uh, really early on, mostly to the down airs and X ground pounds coming out um, from Juno Roar. So we have a Kaya switch up coming up from an Exo here. Elzo still sticking with the Caspian. So PR as a metric is always kind of a loaded metric because it takes into account so much of a period of time. And then we also yeah. have seeding that comes into play here. So that's going to explain a little bit where we talk about the different class of player. Lily and Junior are coming in fifth seed compared to Elzo and Minexo coming in at 10th seed. Mm -hmm. Elzo and Minexo have already outplaced their seed by making it into the top eight. So an incredible effort so far from them. They're looking to push it further. They need the victory here if they want to push it to a game four and possibly grab the W. Minexo, do you like ground pound? Junior was there to save. Oh. Couldn't quite get it in time. Do they get the double here? They're not going to find the double, but Elzo Could is ready. Junior Roar's trying to make it back. Elzo had that edge guard there. Sides it gets it. That will be the knockout. And it was a delayed hit, but it is technically a double there. Oh, dodges up into the ground pound. Lily gets a second oh, ground that's... pound. Lily off stage with the hammer is fantastic. Junior Roar gets the finish and it boxes Elzo into the stage. Weapon throw forces the dodge and Lily onto the edge guard with Junior Roar here means that Elzo has no chance to make it back. Gravity cancel down, sink through the sky, can't make it through. And Minexo already in orange here in game three, Sparky. It was looking so good for this red team. This was going to be the fight pounds. back that they needed. This was going to be the momentum shift, but it all of a sudden fell Side apart. Sick. Look, that oh. in orange shit off recovery. screen. Lily was looking for another one. D-Light, side light, doesn't get the recovery out from okay, Elzo. Lily. Lily's Ground been lost pound the sauce. from <laughs> Junoror. Oh my god. That was literally only six for about 10 seconds. Yeah. Oh, and the They're weapon. Done. Oh. <laughs> Pinball happening here on Apocalypse using the stage to just completely bounce pass to the left side blast zone there on the bottom. All right, Juno Roar and Lily uh, celebrating a little bit early here against Elzo. Let's see if they get that team combo uh, set Jazz, up I, here. I don't think it's early. I'm looking at four stocks uh, from this blue team. I mean, if, if Juno Roar just keeps stutter stepping for the next two minutes and Elzo takes the, the 1v1 against Lily, look at that. Gravity cancel side sig, down sig over here, ground pounds into the weapon to get the nair. Elzo kind of playing crazy. Look at that. I mean, I know I'm being hopeful here, but like, if he's not, like, that's two side sinks that he has sniped now at this point. I have seen players self destruct or worse. <laughs> that is true. I, okay. Down to coming through. Wow. Juno Roar's just going to let Ailso pick up a three piece there, but there's the stomp into the neutral sig. You're seeing the fist come up from Juno Roar. That is going to be a 3-0 as they are moving on on the elimination side of this bracket, Taza. Yeah. There you see the kerfuffle that happened over on the left side. Ailzo going to end up falling. Yeah, there was a moment where Lily, after she hit like the fourth hammer ground pound, she was like, oh, we've got this in the bag. Recovery comes through. Juno War goes back up and Lily was like, what are, you, what are you doing? I need to get down here and stop all this. Throws the weapon down, hits it, and then is that gra yeah, gravity cancel down, sig, chase dodge right back up. That was an amazing edge guard there. And then Elzo going down towards the end, uh, a little bit of a matter of time. Although Elzo had a really great uh, two side sigs there. Stomping the neutral sig was going to be the knockout there. And we could just see how incredibly early Minexo went down in that game. And even Elzo, if you look at the peaks of all of those stocks, ended up losing them at about the same time. Let me do a little bit of quick math here. Elzo took 485 damage. We're going to divide that by three here live on the broadcast. Yes, we're doing math, ladies and gentlemen. It. That is 161 and 0.6 repeating, of course. So that's just when they were turning red. That is incredible. See, yeah, you see it right here. Those peaks are about, you know, relatively speaking, around the same height. So that's yeah. an average of about 160 per stock, which is fantastic efficiency. I love we can see just Junior. how much damage Caspian Science does. <laughs> you can see, like, right there, the moments where that signature yeah. hits. That's it's, it's the exact same thing yeah, yeah, yeah. each time. It's a huge There's jump. The, if you the look at these, hit, the first hit and then the second hit. It's wow, like Cas twice as big. Caspian hits really hard. That's like the reason to pick Caspian. You take Caspian, counterpick to Brawlhaven in singles, and then you're like, ah, side in yellow. <laughs> There's my knockout. Well, we got to see a really fast 3-0 there uh, for the fourth time.
But we're further into the bracket now, Sparky. We're going into top five here. So the next matchups, we're getting teams that we've seen win on stream at least here on twitch.tv slash Brawlhalla already. It's going to be Ian and Vemton Kilo going up against Lillian Junior, and then also Fiend and Yuz versus Weston Power. I can't believe that's a, a fifth place match. Yes, yeah, it's just that's a bummer. I mean, seeing, it's going to be fun, but seeing Weston Power go down 0-3. Yeah to Ian and Vim Tankilo is a massive mm. surprise. That's why Fiend and Yuz versus Wesson Power, a grand finals match from the past, is now all of a sudden down here. It's it not does. on the winner's side of the bracket. It's not in the elimination finals. It's not even elimination semis. It is round two of the elimination side of top eight. Yeah, that's going to be crazy. And there's a chance that after how Lily and Junior War played, that Vem, Tinkilo, and Ian don't even get the rematch against Weston Power. I'm excited to see how that's going to be coming up here. So the next matchup we've got is on the uh, the lower side of the elimination bracket. It is Fiend and Hughes versus Wes and Power. We're getting the head-to-head -head here. Gold medals galore. Silver medals galore. Look at that. that the, the lifetime record coming out from Fiend here. In fact, all four of these players are uh, relatively high-earning players and use one of the more recent to join that group despite yes. being PR2. Um, it, it's been like within the past about year and a half yes. that I'd really say Yuz has uh, uh, installed himself as just a staple player in South America. And we've got the, uh, all right, that's right. Yeah, we, we've got the Queen Nye and the Brin coming through here against the uh, Orion and Hattori from Power and West. Really excited to see these two go head to head here. Uh, loser of this is eliminated at fifth so really high stakes here coming from both teams and we see four spears coming out every oh, yeah. single character on screen doesn't necessarily have a spear in their hand i mean uh, two of them do but overall we have four spear legends on the screen d sig from use he's been using that a lot to clean up stocks he's been using it to great effect so far in this tournament yeah that's how you know that this is fiend's region right when it went from being the only spear player to everybody is a spear player here in South America. The first knockout goes over to the red team. Power goes down. West tries to hit back. The neutral sig does some friendly fire there, but nothing that's going to be too damaging just yet. And that side air could be an edge guard for West. West really tried to get that LU. Uh, didn't get the timing right. Goes down instead. And now it's six stocks to four. Use coming in now. We have double spears coming out from Fiend and Use. We have a spear from Wes as well. You know it's in his hand, not by looking at it, but you can actually tell by listening because you're going to hear the down signature, and that's a good signifier Ooh. that he has spear in his hand. Fiend in sweat beads, but is able to touch and reset those jumps. We did see Fiend fall from wall slip previously. I think Fiend just exchanged three jumps for recoveries uh, right there with how many spear recoveries that I just heard there. Uh, we don't talk about it too much, but... Maybe it's little known. You can use multiple recoveries instead of jumping. And that is sometimes a very good thing to do, depending on how good your exhausted recovery is on certain moves. Like blasters can be pretty good at recovering from yes. the size of the stage. But with the spear recovery there, even though it's exhausted in terms of the distance that you get, it's still pretty good when it hits your opponent. It's still going to be a move that hits yeah. above you and hits on both sides of you. And it hits pretty hard. than like a Nair would. Yeah, I think it hits harder than Gauntlet's Neutral Light, honestly, now that I think about it. <laughs> well, I mean, virtually anything hits harder than Gauntlet <laughs> Neutral Light now. <laughs> that is true. Uh, back into this game, Power holding on to the second stock for a long time, but just stands by and watches as Wes gets double Neutral Light recovery, and I'm pretty surprised Power didn't jump into the fray a little bit sooner. Uh, to interrupt that attack there. As Fiend and Yuz, looking at the state of Power's uh, health, was just kind of like, wait, we can ignore you, and you yep. will just accidentally get clipped by something, and that will be your stock. We can focus on your teammate. And Power, so worried about his own uh, stock there, I really think gave up the momentum in this game one. He really wasn't doing very much. He was playing extremely defensive, and that's always been the case in 2v2 is, like, you can't really play defensive because yeah. a smart opponent is going to say, yeah, dude, go ahead. Hang out over there on that side yeah, of the stage. Yeah. We're going to 2v1. We're going to man advantage your teammate, and it's actually going to be in our favor. Yuz is going to fall there, put on final stocks. Fiend in the 1v2 over on the edge. Fiend. The down air not immediately going to okay. KO, but it does eventually KO as Fiend doesn't have enough in air. I was a little bit surprised back. that Fiend didn't just Qatar dare right at the bottom of the stage, just try to get back to the stage sooner, but uh, still gets there. Ends up picking up a spear, weapon throw into pickup means that Yuz has a little bit of the pressure taken off of him. Uh, falls into that near and Fiend with that diagonal chase dodge off of the sidelight repositions pretty quickly. And Yuz has been doing a good job covering when Fiend gets hit and vice versa. Oh, the combo, huge! Deal light side air and oh look at that, we got to see a little bit of a, a DI yeah. there. You uh, saw Fiend end up going up and you saw Yuz end up going to the left. Nice split there, but that 
team combo likely wow. like they, it straight up did it straight up gave them the game because they picked up both members yeah added up the damage, even the damage up, and then took it past, and then all of a sudden, blue team had the lead just like that. That is a tough loss for Fiend and Muse. I, I up Look until, at the top right, Tazza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, up to this moment, I gave the, the game into Fiend and Muse's favor. We said the Daylight Sider get there, they cover the landings there, and West and Power very good at following up of each other's combo starters there. Daylight Side Air, and then he waits out for the dodge and gets the recovery. That was the most gauntlets-looking spear combo I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm Side talking about. So wait. I landed the wait recovery. Turn around yeah, recovery, yeah. Yep. yeah you, you wait for the dodge, and I'm like, what? Oh, all the other apocalypse, is he going to think about that? But yeah, look at the graph there. The entire time, Fiend and Use completely miles ahead of where Wes and Power are with the damage that they're taking. And then at the very end, um, Wes and Power just never took damage again. That was, that was really, really well played in terms of the adjustment there. Because in stock number two, despite how long Power survived, I was heavily criticizing the fact that he wasn't getting into the fray and helping Wes out. But they managed to bring it back and get the win. And you can see the influence that Spear has in this region. Every single player did more damage on their Spear compared to every other weapon in the game. Was that the case for Yuz? Because Yuz looks yes. like uh, he's got a completely new uh, outlook on yeah, this matchup Yeah, he is here. completely swapping off of that. The damage numbers was four. Uh, 407 on the spear to 145 on the axe, but okay. now he's going over to Jay Young. Gonna share none of those weapons. Go for the bold greatsword pick in two, something we very, very, very rarely see. Yeah, I, I, I have not really seen this have too much success. I, I think the North American region would be the first one I would go to to look for somebody who's like, oh, right, I have my greatsword two combos really prepared. But uh, here in game two, West Power versus Fiend and Muse, I'm curious how that's going to play out. D-Light and Decider gets interrupted by Fiend, and that side does catch power, but he, he still survives. I am massively impressed that Yuz not only managed to survive that long, but get the first knockout as well. Great downer air onto the recovery, and Fiend and Yuz take the lead in game two once again. There's the recovery that comes out. Going to swap over onto the sword. Goes for the little three-piece 2v1 combo, ending in the signature. That's going to give a nice little damage addition if that would have hit. But Yuz knew that that stock was pretty much winding down. Now he's coming well, back onto the greatsword here right away, and he opened it up with a two-piece. Did, did Fiend, like, fly into a light attack and then his knockback just stopped completely? I was like, oh, yeah, okay. That down thing somehow doesn't hit. Fiend, can he make it back? He can. He's surviving for so long. Any hit he gets here would be miraculous. Okay, Cider comes through, Yuz lands with a down air and just gets the heck out of there. Using those recoveries to dodge out of those weapon throws from Wesson Power. Waiting for Fiend to get a weapon. Perfect spawn comes through and the sword's picked up. Neutral light comes through and Ooh. that's unfortunate. That could have been really bad for the blue team. They are thinking they're lucky stars. They didn't get caught in that combo. I'm a little bit surprised mm -hmm. that signature didn't reach over the corner and making contact with power, but Yuz must have been far enough back that there wasn't a technical line of sight. I do feel like I'm interested in the damage numbers after this because I feel like Yuz has been using the greatsword just to like fly around the stage with the recovery more than hit them. But uh, power goes down after that neutral sig, and I might be just completely wrong on that case. Wes opens up the down stick, accidentally hits power for picking up a weapon. Uh, and if West goes down here, that's four stocks to two. This is okay. This is a much harder comeback to make possible from game number one. Yeah, Fiend and Yuz are doing a great job bringing this one back. Oh, beautiful! He went for the D light, and then he got around behind, fast falling down to the ground, and then throwing out the side light onto power after Yuz didn't find the follow up. All the pogos on the Fiend are fantastic. Yuz was trying to go down for the save, and the pressure from West was just too high. Down to catches him with one of the laser beams. Can he make it back down to the ground? He does end up getting hit by that spear, which was still active. Weapon spawn goes over to Fiend. Power waiting for a spawn in. They want to take down Yuse here, at least bring it to an even stock scenario, but Power so damaged already. Let's see. Oh, this is this is a, a difficult game to go through. Okay, Yuse goes down. Fiend very good at not getting caught in situations like this, especially with the spear. The Nair basically covers his head completely, but he's not he has no jumps. Landing covered by power with a neutral light, but that's about as much as he can do right now. Yeah, now, Whoa. okay, I was about to Is say... the neutral light finisher from his combo on, on West that it hit power? It seemed like it was. We're going to have to see the replay on that. I was wondering what power was going to do, given that he was getting towards the end of his stock. Was he going to play oh. defensive and just kind of hang out all by himself like he did before, which wasn't successful? He tried to go oh. in, ended up getting taken out. Wes, here in the 1v2, he's not in a terrible I, spot I wonder how wise. this must, like... 
because Fiend is experienced playing with Wes and against Wes. This has got to be very stressful. He knows how explosive Wes is as a 1v2 player here, and they just got to really make sure that they can control his aggression. Neutralite finally knocks that Lance out of his hands. It's going to be much harder for him to get a weapon here. I lie. I stand corrected. He gets right through punches, gets that down signature. That could have been the alley -oop, but Fiend doesn't let the Sair rip, and now Wes makes it back to the stage, clashes, That's and it. the neutral sig will catch him trying to retreat to the platform. Well played by Yuz there onto the Jayun swap, and we get out of that 3 yo curse that we've been experiencing so far as we're further along the bracket. This is the matchup that I would really like to see go the distance. So you were wondering about those damage numbers for Yuz's Jayun pick, and it was about even right down the middle. It was 261 on the Great Sword to 226 on Sword, okay. though the KO options were definitely on the Sword, I, specifically the neutral signature. I totally missed the... Uh, if it was the neutral light finisher or not, because I look at the stats. Oh, yeah. But I'm sure it was on the replays there. I, I'm pretty sure that was the case. Uh, as we look at these damage numbers over here, we can see that Fiend and Yuz did not give up the lead this time around. And that's why after that game one, despite Wes and Power Ranger really clutching that and making that comeback, um, I am not too surprised that the result of that game uh, two went over in favor of Fiend and Yuz, even with the uh, swap over uh, for the Legends, because Fiend is no longer on the Nai, is on the Hattori, but Fiend is very much like a player who I feel like has three characters that he plays really, really well. And, well, and then there was the Sentinel pick in singles. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but, 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 like, so it's like when I see Fiend on Hattori or Queen Nai, I might as well just be like, same player, same game, just going for different stats, yes. different side weapon. Now he started off taking a lot more punishment than we're used to seeing Fiend take early on. The spot dodge means he doesn't go into that neutral signature that Wes ended up chase dodging through turning around. Neutral Light sending Fiend almost off screen, but not going to be the stock yet. The blue team is looking really good starting this one off, largely due to the fact that Power is still in the yellow, despite also being the same defense as Fiend. Oh, he jumps right over Power. So gets sick. the side sink, gets the knockout there. And that's a risky move to go for in doubles because it's like you have to like go through the whole animation of summoning a boulder and cutting it in half like it, it you are really making sure that your teammates covering you when you connect with that and he does power still on three stocks like you said the least damaged person on the screen and also the only one with three stocks great team combo delight slider double recovery to nair means that fiend is sweating to get back to the stage again use using that so neutral good. signature 2ko i feel like we don't how often do we see that taza not often at all. Okay. And it's one of those moves where I'm like, it, it's sort of like Queen Nine Neutral Sig esque, where it's like, this is something that you can replace your bread and butter, like, follow up with and use instead. Um, but from Jae Yoon, not too much. And Yu isn't even using it as like a follow up. Oh my god. This whole time I was talking about it, Yu just got batted left and right. Oh, he's still side getting air. hit. Oh, and Fiend. Oh no, Fiend has nothing. Oh, and West. Yu has to save him. Are they going to be able to punish this landing? You're seeing the sweat beats. He's done. He's not oh, done. He's not done. Gets no recovered, way. Gets snared. Fiend still. Finally, after like 30 seconds, touches the ground just to get pogoed off again. West falls with the Sarah on one side. Looks for the Sarah, the dare on the Fiend. I can't believe the red team is surviving as long as they are. But that downline sider will finally take out Fiend's second stock. And Yuz gets clipped by the down sig, trying to fade away from power. And now West is dominating here in game number three. Now he's also seen the turnaround from the blue team as well. Not just having the lead here, but it's Power Ranger who is the more damage on this team. And West, who is still in the yellow on second stock. It's not like Power is that far behind to where it's a detriment to the team. That's just how far ahead West is compared to everyone else. Power Ranger is going to fall there. Ooh. This is huge. They absolutely needed that clutch moment to keep themselves in that. Capitalizing on that 2v1, the man advantage to bring themselves back into it. But Fiend, taking a lot of punishment, is in the orange. All right, recovery coming out from Yuz there. Tanging up some damage. Fiend gets sent off the right side of the stage. Oh, and that Sarah comes through. Yuz, you have to go out there for Fiend. Okay, the dodge comes through. Fiend tries to turn around with a double dare and a power. He recovers underneath the stage and Yuz single-handedly holding both power and West at bay, but well. only for so long. <laughs> he took, I mean, he was doing it. It, it was just. <laughs> Towards the end of it, he started holding them at bay by like getting hit. <laughs> well, he's, he's just getting beat up over there. He's like, oh, are you recovering back, Fiend? I'm doing my best over here is he gets punched in the <laughs> face, burned by a lance, stabbed with a spear. And then ultimately tossed off the top of the stage and lost that stock. Yeah, we can see right here. Yep, that's that was literally what was I happening. I got him. <laughs> Don't worry, Fiend. I got him. That was tough. And then he just lands with the Sarah, and it's that's it. Wes uh, fishing up the sideline side air. There in a way, that's kind of like 
the the way that players have been have been playing with lance and doubles is very reminiscent to me of old x side lights there where it's like yeah it's not true but also i mean i guess it was true it you was know, true, like, positionally where it picked yeah, up. Yeah, it's a, it's a really tight dodge window. You can't jump out of it. And honestly, it's just... That was always a really guess strong. for Holy the cow. player using it. Look yeah, at what look, West did on the second star. Look how star. flat that is. That is major extended periods of time where West is taking no damage whatsoever. I think whatsoever. he came in and then took all three of those stocks right away out of the graph. So we can see, like, right here the moment. I can't, like... I don't have, like, a, if I had a ruler, I might be able to prove this. But I know that there was a point in time where after he got a double knockout, it said it was dominating. So really well played by Wes. Um, and then Power and Wes both just did not get damaged towards the end of that game as they yeah, finished up the stocks from Phoenix. It's News. probably, it's either Wes taking this stock or this stock and then taking both of these yeah. in order to be dominating while he's on that second stock. It's yeah, probably really well this played. one. Um, we now have a situation where, no, okay, I thought Fiend and Yuz would switch something up, but I think that the Jayun and Hattori have been the best against these two so far. Yes. Western Power, though, made a very strong argument for a 3-1. Let's see what Fiend and Yuz are able to do here. I think there was some unfortunate happenings there towards the center of the game where Power and Wes were able to just get, like, two combos onto Yuz and Fiend individually that brought them into orange that if Fiend and Yuz can deal with uh, a little bit better this time around, we could see ourselves into a game five. Uh, let's find out, though. Fiend has taken a ton of damage, and he just got sared. Weapon toss goes out. There's the neutral signature really from Yuz onto power. That yeah, moved power away so that Fiend could recover back to the main platform. He's making sure not to abuse it to where it's still being surprising, but uh, I, I, kind of would, I just want to see it more, honestly. He hasn't really missed the move. Um, goes for the burn neutral light. Oh, and he gets the nice. dare. That was such a great turnaround dare. And that's tough because it's like you sent Wes over there. So if that never happened, then he doesn't end up getting hit You there. don't think about those things. It's, no, no, it's, this, it's this like that, weird timeline like, paradox situation. That's like some what if isms there yeah. that you don't, you don't really want to think about. It's just like you used the position that you were at to the best of your yeah, advantage. Yeah, of course. Uh, of down course. to comes through and everybody goes flying. Hey, save for Wes, who has... Picked up a spear, starved them of that weapon there with that lance, and looks for a side on the fiend right away. Fiend just wants a downlight recovery. Oh, oh he drifts. No! He drifts out of fear of getting hit by power and drifts so hard that West drops out of the combo. But a sword neutral light from Yuse will take that stock, and now they have a team combo opportunity here on the power. That's where those overcorrections can be so heartbreaking. But it didn't shake the red team. Yuse came in, hit that neutral light. Was able to clean that one up. A lot of swords on the screen. We yeah. went from everybody having a spear to three of the legends on the screen having a sword. Yeah, and then the, the great sword as well. So really just uh, tons of blades flying around. And we're even being able to hear the, oh, that side that gets fiend. That's not too much damage, but it is unfortunate. Dare gets the landing hitbox and power just barely misses Yo! the neutral sig. I think he makes it back. No, he doesn't. And Yuse, without a weapon, could go down pretty quickly here if he's not careful. All the weapons being thrown off the stage by Yuse, making sure that they're unarmed as long as possible. Stuff recovery means that Fiend gets the downlight after the neutral light, and they're continuing to make sure that Wes has no weapons to play with. Double at neutral light. He DI, DI straight again. up. That's great. He's, that, that's survival DI in a half. Uh, Wes really making the stock count. It's that cider that's interrupting the recovery from Yuse. Oh, Ooh, just only the, the one opener. Piece. Yeah, only the opener. You're never going to be knocking out with that. Falling side air gets the recovery. Fiend just barely survives. Oh, down Oh, the turnaround. Down air, yeah. Wow, he ended up getting the KO with that as well. Huge. Now Fiend is the one dominating. I feel like we're going to see the exact same graph that we saw on Wes. It's over. Wes and Power were ready to be done with that game. Yeah. Use. Tazaraki, 665 damage coming out from Yuz on that one, showing why he's still on this Jay Young. Yeah, no, it's getting better and better. And uh, at this moment, I don't even blame Wes Wright for just jumping right off the stage. If you're up against Fiend and Yuz and it's four stocks to one, why, why spend the 30 seconds? Yep. It, that, that, that can save you a lot of time, especially if you're at match point in the way that Wes and Power are, where it's like, if I can spend 30 seconds just getting right into the next game and not have to go through the mental anguish of trying to salvage a game that's nearly unwinnable, go right into the next one. Uh, and here we are into Apocalypse, where Fiend and Yuse have brought it to a game five in a really spectacular fashion. I mean, that was a four stock, Sparky. Let's see if they can turn this one around. We are in the elimination bracket, of course, so a loss here sends these players packing. These are both 
top three potential teams, yeah. one of them is going to be stuck, tied for fifth, alongside yeah. the loser of Ian Avimta Kilo versus Lily and Junior. Yeah, yes. Will Will Wes and Power have an opportunity for that rematch against the team that knocked them this early on to the elimination bracket, or will they go down to Fiend and Use here for fifth? We are about to find out as Wes uses that recovery to really trick Fiend, he makes it back to the stage with the inherent momentum of the side air on that weapon. Also, the recovery but, from Yuzu's greatsword oh. came in, and that gave Fiend the room that he needed. He was in sweat beats. He didn't have yeah. too much to avoid. And I can't remember which blue team member was coming in. It might have been power, but it could have been Wes. Was coming in to punish that landing, but the recovery from Yuzu really gave Fiend a lot of room to play with. Wes goes down. Power also on two stocks. Fiend cleaned up. Can they get Yuzu here as well? Down, Sig tries to get a jump in. He's but staying Yuse, away. Yeah, Yuse was like, Fiend, I need you to pick up a weapon before I do anything. And Fiend certainly does. Now Yuse going right back in, gets hit by the side air. All right, he comes back, and Fiend is making sure that he has a safe time getting back as well. Yuse is going to be without a weapon. Spawn comes in onto the soft platform, picks it up almost immediately. A little bit of team damage coming out, but the blue team's not able to capitalize on it. Power goes into the ground pound. Goes with a side light opener to Dare. Recovery will take him down and Fiend gets a side light Nair and he's out of there. Power and West both looking for a combo starter here. And Power, ooh, Fiending for it so much ooh. that he ends up hitting Wes. Fiend is still putting out so much damage on the Power. Unfortunately, he's going to drop the D light into the side air. Yeah. Didn't get the jump that he needed to get high enough to find the side air off of Power there. You still relatively healthy. But this is a tough uh, game state here, where if Fiend goes down early enough, I do not feel like uses health at this point. It, okay, it's power might as well be in the lead, right? This is a dead even game. Sarah comes through, Fiend barely survives. Pocket sand thrown out, and he gets punished for it. Now it might be Fiend's turn. Recovery hits, stuffed recovery. Fiend ground pounds back to the stage. He ground pounds, stops the ground pound, clings to the wall. Sarah through use to take down Fiend. And once again, West dominating here in game five, Sparky. This could be it for Fiend and use. He's going to be without a weapon. Oh, he stops oh! it. That's the risk. That's Fantastic. the risk of that tactic. Yeah, you have that like jump and then the stomp it, there. It is a long time. Like I said, you're summoning a boulder just so that you could stop all your opponents by cracking through it with your sword. Weapon throw comes forward. Dodge is gone. Fiend gets it. All right, this is as close as a game five scenario as we can get. West, Power Ranger, Fiend, use all one stock. Use at risk of going down to an early side sig from either player here, but still a little bit more damage can be taken. Fiend gets hit, gets hit back. Let's see what happens here. Down air, gets started. The neutral light, West. Oh, West. Uh, well, okay. I think he, he thought that the red team was going to jump in to punish that. Yep. And he was getting ready to preemptively stare it. But I mean, that's twice now that he's stared right into Power Ranger's face. If he was able to pick up an opponent and his teammate, he's out on top of that trade. Because Fiend and Yuse are so Ooh. far behind right now, they're getting deep into the red. Fiend is definitely already in the red. Yuse will be there shortly. Oh, and Fiend gets poked out of the way. The gravity gets a side six Sparky and hits him, and Fiend is not the one that goes down first. It's his teammate. And now in this 1v2, Fiend fighting for his tournament life, gets one down light, picks up the spear, but he's sared, and that's game. Wes and Power win game number five. Last stock scenario over Fiend and Hughes to move on into top four here in the South America Winter Championship. Going into that, I really thought Fiend and Yuz were going to be the ones to take that out heavy-handedly. I thought there was going to be, you know, a, like we talked about, a return to form for Wes and Power from running the South American 2v2s. But, of course, I put them in third. I really thought those top two were all but guaranteed to be Kaina Lores and Fiend and Yuz. But Wes and Power are here to shut that down, say that they're back in a big way. Yeah, uh, and they're back in... Boys to have that rematch potentially. This matchup that we got coming up next. I mean, we're looking at the damage charts here and we can really see Yu's had a rough time on that second stock. Whereas Fiend, I mean, that's as close as to like exact, like, he, like yeah. if you have an HP bar yeah. in a video game. I, I feel like that's that we they just copy pasted. Yeah, that. no, yeah, this is this is like, yeah, I have 100 HP per, per stock. These two almost look copy pasted as well. The second uh, stock, especially. Power, I mean, if you look at power it, just spent a second. an odd amount of time just doing, he just didn't get touched. Yeah, there. didn't get touched know. there. Similar thing here for Wes. Pretty crazy game. Yeah, Wes was having some really strong second stocks all throughout the bracket. Um, and they're going to be having more strong showings i'm sure of it as they move forward into top four we've got one more matchup before the top four is rounded out and that's going to be ian of m10 kilo versus lillian juno roar and this is a match i'm really excited for because lillian juno roar were playing really fantastic with the team comp that i wasn't ready to see but now am a huge fan of but Ian and Vin Tequilo, they're the team that knocked Power and West down into the elimination bracket to begin with. A team that not even use and fiend, at least today, 
could beat. That's pretty impressive. So we should have a very close match coming up. You're seeing it reflected in yes. the viewer vote on the screen. Make sure to get your votes in on who you think is going to win this. This is seed five versus seed six. Lillian Jr. are seed five. Ian and Vim Tankilo are seed six. This is about as fair of a viewer vote I've ever seen. I actually think that this like represents how I think the matchup's gonna go, which is like, it's 55-45. I'm gonna give it in favor of the team that, that came from from, you see it right there, 5644. Yeah. You can't hardly be closer, Taz. Yeah, I, I, I'm giving it, it a slight edge to the team that came from winners, but Lily and Juno are playing in a way where I feel like if they're on fire, it's just going to be so tough to deal with. And especially, like, I feel like Nash might as well be as unknown of a character as Tesca, even though Nash has been around since literally the beginning of Rahala. Like, I feel like with original six characters yes. or something. Um, Jess has never been played by anybody other than Fiend, for, for the most part. I mean, the, and defensive and defensive, right? Not in South America, 2v2s. And not uh, very well on stream either. <laughs> but I digress. Uh, really cool that the viewer votes this close because I am also excited for the outcome of this matchup. And I would be very surprised if it ends up being a 3-0 in either way. I think we're in for another game five set and I'm very excited to see it. I would agree with you as well going into this one, though I would give the edge to Lily and Junoror just because Ooh, they awesome? happen to be the team that was mentioned by Fiend in the interview. I don't even know, like, who am I looking at? That is, uh, so Juno Roar is on the Zol, and that's Barasa coming out from Lily. Oh, and now, yeah, okay. And now I know where I remember casting Lily from, because I, I, when I saw her in the Nash, I was kind of like, okay, this is interesting. I don't think I've seen you play before, but no, this is Lily's specific Barasa skin. I, like, this is this is a setup I've only ever seen Lily use. Um, so this is exciting to see going into this this matchup here that Lily's on a character that I'm familiar with her playing, but also it's six to four pretty quickly uh, as Ian on the Hatori is doing well, and Vemton Kilo, who has not switched off the Grim since he's picked it at the beginning of this championship, narrowly avoids a neutral sig, a slide charge neutral sig from Lily. In fact, we're seeing. Um, so many axes on the field. Now we have three axe legends being played in this game. That means the blue team especially is going to be heavy hitting for sure. Nice double knockout there from Lily. Going to even up the stocks. They're not too far behind. Both of them have about maybe 100 damage on these stocks. There's a delight side air from Ian, but there is the interruption from Juneror. Yeah, Lily uh, on the movement speed stance here for the Barasa gets hit by that Cider on the way through. Ian trying to babysit the side of the stage, does get hit by a Sair, so Chase Dodge activated for Lily. Side light and a side air, only it's from them. Tinkilo there gets a double knockout, and it's now four socks to two. Uh, this is a game where I feel like momentum right away. Vem, Tequilo, and Ian hit the ground running, and Lily and Junior have been playing catch-up the entire time. They Lily had to find that, count, that comeback potential. Did grab the double knockout, but that was really only to even up the stocks while they were still behind in damage. Then you oh. take Vem, Tequilo, and Ian grabbing the double knockout. Of course, the double KO actually went to Vem, Tequilo. That's why he is the one dominating. Oh, I Whoa. thought he was going to grab the Sair there. Gravity cancels side light, gets the recovery. Lily's still low on jumps, does make it back, picks up the blasters. That was D-Light recovery setup for yep. sure. And that, uh, well, it's a pretty great setup for gravity cancel down light recovery to see your opponent blasters ground pounding and <laughs> just, just holding it there. That was uh, a really, really dominant game one. And maybe, maybe I was wrong about yeah. that. Yeah. Now, now, hold on, we'll wait and see. Because this was a relatively fresh a uh, uh, legend combination here from Lily and Juno Roar that might change if we go into game number two. That but was a four stock game in favor of the red team. Last time we saw a lead that strong in game one, it was a little bit stronger coming from Kaina and Lores given that they were looking at a JV6 on the board. But of course that was a 3-0 and Tazza, you're pointing at the screen, tell me why. Uh, it's because of Lily and Juno Roar over on the legends that I was expecting to see in game number one. Yes. Right? We've got the Nash and we've got the Hattori to go up against Ian and Vem Tenkilo. Let's see if we have a very different game here as Vem and Lily are just fighting in the sky there near the blast zone and Ian catches the backswing of the down stick so far back that it didn't actually even hit correctly. Juno Roar falls off the bottom and Vem Tenkilo decimated by the side sig of Lily's Nash. Uh, and this is what I was hoping to see here after their spectacular performance earlier on in the elimination bracket. That was about 23 seconds into the game, but there's a huge differential in terms of damage. We'll see how that ends up playing out. If the red team is able to get the wipe onto Lily, they already got the stock onto Junior Roar. They have the main advantage here. 
Oh, stop. Goes for the neutral signature there. We saw Lily get a few of those, uh, uh, or one of those, in the last bracket match. So no surprise there. She does not get the jump, though, after that stomp. Sam, the down take. Friendly fire into Vam getting the craziest wake-up combo that I've ever seen off of getting hit by a dash down take, which is the, the only one. It gets the recovery as well. Junior ends up falling victim to that as a result of that whole exchange of things. And if you really want to get into the what-if-isms, <laughs> that dash down take was very destructive. But... Uh, Going back to the game here, Ian cannot make it back. Will Vem be able to recover as well? It was looking all of a sudden very even, and then all of a sudden it was oh. a huge swing, oh. and now we have the potential to look very even. Charging that one up, Ian came in and gave Vem plenty of room to fully charge that Lance recovery because Lily was there. She was probably ready. At least a weapon toss down would have come out from Lily to end that stock of Vem 10 kilos, but no, Ian was there to save his teammate. Dare goes through, Ian goes in for the down light. Neutral light connects. D-Light doesn't get the stare afterwards. Drops that combo. Nice side stick coming out from Lily, but the gravity cancel. Neutral stick from Vem. Catches Lily, dash jumping over the side of the stage, and oh, wow, what a ground pound. Shout outs. <laughs> I was just ready to call that the rest there because that's the style of, of, of attack that you have to do when you get that ground pound stacked to where you don't even actually get to see them fall through the ground. What an awesome job coming out from Vem there, and we are, uh, at the end of the day, this is just as dominant as game one. I feel like I'm watching the end of The Incredibles, Whoa. where Dash is in the track meet. Of course, he has super speed, so he's like running ahead of everybody, and his superhero family is in the stand saying, whoa, 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 slow down, slow down. Let's everybody catch up. That's them evening up the game, and then all of a sudden, because he's not actually a superhero, the red team doesn't care. They just want to win. That's Dash taking off yet again, and then all of a sudden, we had like the four stock on our hands. Now we have the two stock. Lily is out of there. Be Ian and Vim Tenkilo I, up two. I feel like it's a little unfair. To compare the teams is like, well, one side has superpowers. I'm the, the way they're playing. <laughs> okay. I'm just like, <laughs> and the, no, <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't like this one, Spurgy. And even you're going somewhere, and and I do actually know what you were talking about, yeah. which doesn't usually happen when you spend use wow. movie references with wow. me. But that was closer than it was. Than, than, than no, what I'm, you were no I'm, I'm saying there were parts Look at that. of it. Look how sick Lily is. There was a huge gap, and then all of a sudden it evened up, and then there was a huge gap again. It was like an inchworm moving across a piece of paper. <laughs> I guess is that represented by the damage graph? Let's take a look. Actually. We yes. don't see it right now because we're getting right into the next game. But Vem's graph kind of actually represents that intro move. Yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah, lying. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. All right. We got Western Air Temple here for game number three. Can Will someone three give me a commentator that agrees Will with me more? Will the three O's <laughs> continue, Sparky? Uh, that is what we're trying to find out. Nice little stomp side light. Goes for the three piece. Doesn't get it right away. Whoa. Grabs the ground pound. Lily's looking to get this stock super early. The potential was absolutely there. Already has Vim in the orange. Even though she didn't get the stock, good damage has been put out. 100 plus damage very quickly on the Vim Tankilo. Yeah, that was great maneuvering from Vem around the hammer ground pounds as well. And the set before this, we saw Lily really just get away with hitting four or five of those in a row to the point where she could just neutral stick and side stick to her heart's content. But that cider will catch that landing there. And Vem with the axe here on Olgrim is covering center stage. Side light, down light, great adaptation to where that side light hit, knowing that the Nair probably wouldn't be able to come out in time. And dodges out of the way of one move just to get hit by the one that actually knocks out. There's a double. Knockout coming out from Lily. And this is the switch from Junior Roar onto the Pearl uh, Epic Crossover for Kaya here for game number three as their backs are against the wall. Ooh, Lily's hammer Whoa. Whoa. looking nice and crispy. There was a little bit of team damage that came out from her there. But of course, we are seeing the swap over onto the Kaya. Of course, the Pearl pick Ooh. coming out from Junior Roar here, hoping the bow is going to help a little bit. Down it comes through though, and Junior Roar gets up with that gravity, gets a neutral stick. Great double knockout from Ian. Uh, it's an interesting game state. Lily has been putting out a ton of hits on the hammers we've been talking about, but also it's like it's like, it's been a little self-destructive how she's been going in, getting all these hits, and not having any regard for her own stocks as well at the same time. Down to Orange already does get that knockout, does take Vem down to one stock here, but Ian's got to be careful. Iron on the side gets the stuff recovery of Junior Roar, and Lily looking to see if she needed to save. Junior Ward there, that was a dangerous situation. Ian's gonna fall. It is three stocks to two actually in favor of the blue team here. DI you see the nice. DI coming yeah. out after those back-to-back -back neutral lights because it is the same move on the same weapon regardless of player. Falling down here comes through. 
D-Light into recovery. Juno Roar gets that hit. Side air connects, and Lily, if she goes down here, that 1v2 against Vem and Ian is going to be very, very tough. She's got to be careful with this last stock here. Juno Roar gets right through with the neutral sink, and that was so close to taking Vem out of the game. Falling side air, both players off the side of the stage. Oh, Ian, how did you survive that? Falling air, side air, doesn't get the alley-oop, stuff recovery, and Juno Roar can even make it back. No, he can't, and Lily gets interrupted. But the stock can't go. Lily's been doing such a great job surviving. Dodges through Gravity Kissel. Was that Gravity Kissel sidelight? It was. I can't believe it. Vem goes down. What a crazy 1v2 situation here. Ian gets knocked out of the side, and Lily and Juno War with this switch over to the Kaya have brought this to a game four. It's so close, Sparky. That will do it. Lily going down at the same time as Ian, and I can't believe it. That graph is one to remember. Wow. Uh, Lily was. Uh, surviving and taking damage the whole time. It wasn't like, don't get hit. It was just like, doesn't get knocked out. Like, that was incredible. Lily was built different that game. She put out 760 damage, Taz. How much did she take? <laughs> that graph is crazy. She what took... Juno War and Lily like, just had like inverse graphs. <laughs> like, that, that was, there was like, the, as you get damaged more, the less I can take. That was uh, ideal for them here. As we're going to Apocalypse here, and they're taking uh, their first step in their journey to reverse 3-0, Ian and Vem Tanquilo. It'll be quite a tough task, but they've shown that they're up for it after that game three to get to this game four. I think Ian and Vim Tanquilo are very confident that they can take this one. That's why we moved into this next game so quickly. We didn't even really have time for the replays or to analyze the stats whatsoever. They were just like, okay, go next, go next, go next. We're ready to go. Match that A button. We're ready to get into the next game because we are, quote unquote, the better Whoa. players, at least in their mind. But maybe starting things off here, Ian ends up falling pretty early, about 39 seconds into the game, to the down sink. There's something very stressful about fighting Lily's Nash, I am realizing. Like, the way that... Oh! <laughs> like, like, what is that stop side sink? Who, who does that? The that, stomp hit Ian. Vem was there to punish to try and get behind, and she, turn around. She dashes signature. it and pivots. Yeah, that was crazy. Juno Roar makes it back to the stage. Uh, Lily goes down here. So Juno Roar is definitely at, the, at high risk of going down. Nice job dodging out of that gravity cancel down light. Recovery does take down Vam. Edge guard scenario, stuff recovery. Egan barely makes it back with that Nair. And Juno Roar hits both Vam and Ian with that side stick. Well done. Ian looked like he wanted to press the edge guard. Like, come on down here, let's fight this. I can come out on top. But all of a sudden, Juno Roar's bow came in. That's when we saw the disengage from Ian. Even turning around there to go back in. But no, the recovery from Juno Roar's bow. Whoa. Nice. nice turnaround. That was so quick. Yeah, Junior on to the Kaya here has been hitting every single signature. Really well played. Looking for the landings here on Ian and letting Lily have complete control over Vem here. Ian goes over the same triple pogo. Still not enough pressure to allow Vem to come back. And now Lily and Junior are up four stocks to three. Big. Oh! oh. Okay. Nice ground pound from Vem to at least trade that out one for one. Lily's crazy. But unfortunately for the red team, blue team's still in the lead. Lily still living on the second stock. She's just in the orange. We'll see if next hit turns her red, but I think she can probably take Lily two more. Lily has had complete control over the 1v1 against Vem and Ian here. Just complete control over the game in general. Junior has to throw that weapon up over his head so they can get back to the stage. Ground pound baits out a reply from Vem, and that... I mean, Weapon Toss doesn't even stop Lily from going forward and hitting the downlight side air. I mean, stopped by Vem, but still two stocks here for Lily. What an amazing play coming out here. And, and, and the blue team could bring it to a game five very quickly here. Okay, Lily goes down. If Juno Roar goes down here as well, it's a very doable 1v2. It's I, absolutely winnable. I would winnable. not call the game there just yet. And Vem and Ian haven't shown me, at least against this team, that they have the 1v, the 2v1 combo to seal the deal here. So let's find out. Well, that was a good start to it. But even oh. so, oh, that is going to be it for game four. This is Lily and Junoror fighting back, pushing this further and further into a game five. Okay, and now, at least from, at least for for the preface that we had for this game, I'm feeling a lot better about this. Right? This is this is that this is literally like the most visible visual representation of that 55-45 that I was yeah. thinking of. And we're getting to that game number five where. By all means, um, Ian and Vemtenkilo ran into this with the momentum, with the, the plan to win, and 
Lily and Juno War had to fine tune their team composition to get to this Nash Kaya combination that's working so well for them. And Lily is just getting stronger and stronger every single game. And now we've got Hattori uh, and and Olgrim here from Ian and Ventakil. Oh, that Nair! I can't Ian's believe that. I can't believe that didn't take Ian. I think Ian's <laughs> mad. He's ready to get out of this game to move on in the bracket and keep it going. Doesn't want to be stuck here all the way in fifth place. Wants to move oh. on and fight Wesson Power, but they're gonna have to go through Lily and Junoror. Like you said, oh, I feel the like they've reached final Pogo. four here. The double possibly coming out. They get them. Lily's gonna Lily? fall, and she didn't actually need to fall yeah, there. Yeah, that was interesting. I was surprised. That I, I didn't know how she got there. Ian ends up getting that down. Do you like grab on as well? That is a situation where I thought it was all in blue team's favor, and yet at the end of the day, red team comes out in the lead. The Ser bounces Ian off the ground. He can make it back. Edge guard scenario does not work out, and well, I mean, I guess it does because he got the nair, but then it goes down. Vem. Oh, that if you could go be big. Down, if you go down here, that's that's. Dares all. are crazy. Has the recovery into dodge, and he doesn't even get high enough there, and Ian can't get over the stage safely to save him. He is on tournament stock now, Sparky. That is that is just what what a change of pace here. He's now gonna wait for that weapon. Can't risk it too much. Ian, like you said, you you could see the anger in his gameplay there, but it's not gonna. It, he's not getting the pressure in there to stop Lily from getting the momentum that she's got. And Juno War is just doing such a great job of covering center stage. I mean, batting Ian away there. This is so well played by the blue team. Those neutral six going unpunished, and he stares Ian away, and they're focused completely oh! on Vem. The grab pound takes Vem out of the game, and it's now four stocks to two. But two of those stocks belong to Ian. One of those stocks belongs along to Ian as Juno War, much like in an Impala-like fashion, gets that down to go over the side of the stage, says, you can't make it back from here, and it's team combo time. What can Ian do? It's gonna be so difficult as Lily and Juno War just came back into this game and made it look like that they were never behind to begin with. The reverse three is looking oh so real here for Lily and Juno War. Team damage be darned, it doesn't actually matter in the long run. Ian has to get lucky every single time. Every move he makes has to be absolutely perfect. Then five miracles has to happen. And Juneror and Lily just keep playing the game that you know how to play. There is a team KO here, but there's also a lot of damage put on to Ian. Oh. They're playing a dangerous game. Oh, Ian goes in for that dare. Actually gets the knockout. Okay, is this gonna be the comeback that we're looking no. for? Now stop Sare. What a classic way to finish it off with the hammer there as Lily and Juno Roar make, I believe that was like a one seed upset. I think it was like yes. six, five to six. Yes. Yeah. I believe it was um, five. I, I didn't know who was who. Yeah, what what a crazy. No, uh, that was not there. an upset, actually. Lily and Juno were seed five. Ian and Vim Tankilo okay. were seed six. Okay, that's interesting to me. So I, I guess in my brain it was like an upset from the sense that Ian and Vem made it further into winner side. But from the seed head to head, I mean Five to six, that's about as close as it gets, right? Yeah. Uh, up until game number five there, Vem Tequila and Ian came so close, but they go down at fifth, and that means that Wes and Power uh, are not going to get the rematch that I was forecasting. They're going to be fighting against Lily and Juno War, a team that has been on everyone's radar. Even on the radar, our fiend who, like, before the championship even started, we heard them talking about, like, out of all the teams to watch, this is one of those teams that we're looking for to watch, and now it's just solidified after the winter championship, right? Lily and Juno War getting into that top four. Uh, what a fantastic way to get that reverse three up. They were able to bully Vim Tankilo out of that game so quickly so that they could fully set their sights on to Ian. They did it in incredible fashion. They're moving on, but first, we need a little bit more from that set. We're going to throw it on over to Remy. Very, very good job from Lily and uh, her teammate there to get that game clutched up at the top five, I mean, in the game five spot. It was a very interesting start. They played from behind. A lot of team combos from the red team were putting a lot of pressure on them. And they, the character swaps really uh, helped them out towards the end there. I want to open up with this play here because it showed those shades of Lily where it was like, okay, she's got something cooking here. Just switch back to the character you, you showed it to us first on and it's going to really get done. Those double knockouts were a story of this game in general. And it was in this game uh, three position where it was like, okay, now is your time to do something because if you don't hear, it's gonna get really dire for you guys. And Lily wakes it up with this hammer player. The down air into the neutral air is what we know best, but it's what she does here after catching that dodge there. The GC down light picks up on them and gets that end light true combo, actually getting some damage onto Ian as well. And it just felt like from right there, it started. It was 
a complete runaround of the game. You could see she was on all sides of the map trying to do as much as she possibly could damage-wise, especially in this game here where uh, I think it was this game, it was last game where she held her stock the entire time on that final stock here. But you can see just that pressure on the side, gets that ed edge guard, then trades her partner and continues on onto the top to get this huge damage lead onto Vemtenkilo here. And then it just keeps going off with that downer off stage as well. So plays from Lily this entire time were just helping out this team so much. And you can see the signature uses as well. Side sig into another side sig. She does get punished, but it doesn't stop her there. The downer comes out. And the next one for the double knockout. Double knockouts were happening all across the screen for both teams here. And you could just see that South America is playing aggressive Brawlhalla today. The entire time it's that pressure. The signature kick comes out again. With the weapon throw forces the angle up. You're not going to make it this far on Lance. Not with help and Ian is not going to be there for you so he charges it but he does not make it at the end of it all it's excellent what this team did and especially in a game five we were seeing a lot of three O's today they brought it to game five they clutched it up it's just awesome I don't know Nash is amazing to see I don't know why the casters keep telling you no one plays this character Zakoi has been running around and they playing this character for a while he doesn't look this good doing it though so it makes sense the ground pond is going to close off that game and the casters will tell you what's happening next with, with that performance from Nash, we have now whittled down the teams to four here in South America. Sparky, on winner's side, we've got Kynan and Lores going up against Zach and Vecina. That's going to be an incredible winner's final. And in the elimination semifinal, we just saw that amazing performance from Lillian Jr. Roar, and they'll be going up against Weston Power, who had that upset over Fiend and Hughes, that fan favorite going down at fifth. What an unfortunate happening, but at least it wasn't an unfortunate match with those last two best of fives going the distance each every single time. What a great way to start off the South American Winter Championship. That is going to do it for our block, but we're gonna take a short break and then we're gonna be moving into the rest of top four for the South American 2v2 Brawlhalla Winter Championship. But before we go into that break, make sure to go to brawlhalla.com forward slash winter merch to pick up your Winter Championship merchandise before it is gone. Make sure to also pick up your Winter Championship pack. Taza, anything else you got for us? I got nothing else. We, we will be right back in just a little bit. Don't go anywhere. We've got more Bahala action after the break. Thank goodness. Saves the six stock from happening. It was a horrible game for them. Zero team damage is impressive. Oh, that's going to give them overall stage control. There is a weapon spawn in case they wanted to swap out their weapon. Definitely, uh, on a fine line there. Oh, that's unfortunately. That would have taken Messina possibly out of this game. A very dangerous game state here right now. Okay, he's done his after momentum. That that that's gonna be tough to come back from. <laughs> he can trip down the elimination. Alright, let's see if Sack can do what he did in game one. He technically won the one. He's ground pounds right through everything and Bev with no recovery. Oh, there. There again. Oh Max is so damaged as well. Yeah, nice side air. Oh, but at the same time, now he goes down and the weapon goes down oh. there. He's Max he is no one to pick this Um side to come through there. You know I'm not a dead. <laughs> Every high strength and solid signature. You may not be able to get away with all of them. It's so great. Sidelight comes through. Next best to recover back to the stage. Pogo stuff recovery. I think the next done for. No. And all the stuff. Gets back to stage. Puts Sarah in the way. It's oh, well, it's ground pound. From <laughs> to the roar. <laughs> that was literally only six for about 10 seconds. Yeah. Just, oh, and the one oh. Wow. Juno Roar's just gonna let Aelzo pick up a three piece there, but this is pretty quickly. Hughes has been doing a good job covering when Fiend gets hit and vice versa. Oh, this combo. Huge. You light side air. End up going up, and you saw Hughes end up going to the left. Nice split there, but that team combo, like on the dare on the feed. I can't believe the red team is surviving as long as they are, but that downline center will finally take up Fiend's second stock. And Hughes getting the stage of Hughes single handedly holding both Power and West at bay, but well. only for so long. <laughs> he took, I mean, he was doing Fiend fighting for a tournament life, gets one down, like picks up the spear, but he's stared at that. Up, does make it back, picks up the blast. That was the like, recovery setup for yep. sure, and that, uh, that there actually gets the knockout. Okay, is this going to be the comeback that we're looking for now? Stop there. What a classic way to finish it.
know I should grow up, but I don't wanna get older. It's underrated to be young and free, yeah. Tomorrow may never come, old days I'm running from. Yeah, I should be saving, but I'm spending it all. Yeah, I want that money. I want that money. So give me that money. I wanna spend that money. Just give me that pride and feeling. If I like the weekend, I, I ain't dead and sleeping. I, I don't wanna grow. Four sets left to determine who will be our South American 2v2 champions. Of course, we've got some fan favorites and a little bit of a surprise pick with uh, Team Lily in the bottom side of top four. Yes, and the fan favorites, I did lose one of mine. Everybody loves Fiend and Yuse. I was hoping that to see, I was hoping, I was going to chat with this one. I was hoping to see them take it all, but... It's a difficult region in South America. Before we used to look at, you know, like Power Ranger and West is kind of cruising through, but now here they have returned back to a fight for top three. But that did mean that Phoenix News had to go down along the way. Meanwhile, the incredible story of both Loras and Sack just showing that they are some of the biggest threats in South America continues here because those are the ones we're gonna talk about. We have Kaina and Loras versus Sack and Vecina to start things off here in winners finals. Yeah, of course, uh, no surprise on my part. I picked both of these teams to make it into the top three. And of course, they've earned their places. And nobody's surprised to see Kaina and Loras here. Again, Kaina, an absolutely monstrous player. Sack and Vecina, though, definitely had a couple of surprises. I think if you looked at the winner's semi-match, you would have been like, okay, makes sense. But I think a lot of other teams were expected to be there. I think West and Power were actually specifically the team that was expected to be playing in that winner's semi. See, it's when you say it like that, it's like, man, oh, I was so smart. I am the reason why they're here. But it's also it's just a shot at the rest of us because I decided to go off of fanfare this past couple times. It is what it is. I decided to go bias. It is I what it, it is. But I got I got cooked. But I did think that we'd see Power Ranger and West up here, which also chat. Make sure you uh, you were able to submit that earlier yourself through Odin Journal and is where you can keep track of all the stats and everything else going on with this. So make sure to check out that Brawlhalla extension that you should see on your right side of the screen there. Uh, well. You're right, this is this is your right over here, this side, uh, where you can see the little icon, open that up and be able to keep up to date with everything in Odin's Journal, which is one of my favorite new additions to the Brawlhalla stream. Yeah, it's super cool. Uh, I highly recommend people familiarize yourselves with it. Uh, it's a great place if you're watching and you don't wanna have to open up start.gg and try to follow along the bracket. It's all right there. Of course, like we said, we have those kind of prediction tools, these ways to engage. And there's rumors of more things being added, more pages added to the journal. So I highly recommend if you're at all interested, if you're like watching Brawlhalla, Holly Esports, familiarize yourself with that. True. Also, I am on Team Sparky with this one. We need to make sure Pingu doesn't win. So I need y'all to start actually predicting more so you can get higher points and beat him because we do not want that end of season dealing with that. But also, we're going to get into this next game here. We talked about the stats a second ago. My favorite and, stats. Uh, it's, it's just so many top placements held amongst them. Of course, you don't see much on Loris or Vecina, but it doesn't matter because they're able to get themselves to those top eights consistently. And today, they're already guaranteed to add some numbers to that. Yeah, I absolutely love screens like this where you've got like two players who are holding it down. They've got like the more medals and then, then these two up and comers. And then nobody on the screen has a gold medal, but there's a real possibility of one of these teams walking away with it. We're not seeing too many Queen Nyes. It's just Sack on it. On the other side, Loras coming in with the Kaya. I was brought up earlier on the fact that, you know, Fiend was pretty much the one who brought out Queen Nye, and uh, Toast is definitely the happiest person in the entire building here, but uh, just for good reason. You see Fiend perform well with it. That's one thing, but the amount of coverage range you have on those Spear Six, especially D-Sig when people try to approach, or Side Sig in that case, that got body blocked though. Good Good job getting the save to stop that knockback. Yeah, that was a huge save. That was catching a bullet with your bare hands, but Sack still finds the end sig to take down kind of top of the map. Lores avoids the hit from Vecina. Was on sweat beads a little while ago trying to get back down to the ground. Of course, that's going to be a very easy lineup for a ground pound because you had to go low. And uh, Sack already utilizing these guitars very well. That's going to be a free punish there for Loris. 
good coverage coming out from Kaina and Laura's on this corner. They both have these projectile signatures that they can throw out, both on their down sigs to just like very safely take away space from opponents. But right now it's Zach who is holding on to the stocks. Not too surprised. It's Queen Nye. She never dies. Yeah, we've made the joke 10,000 times, but it's the truth. It refuses to go away. And uh, it's what you need. The recovery will finally take it out. Of course, not too surprising at all to see South America kind of the pioneers of the spear meta, and they will only continue to do that. As we've seen a lot of spear from everybody Ooh. throughout the top eight. And Vecina still gets back thanks to the help of that gravity cancel neutral stick. Actually, a lot of verticality on it, so Sack had time to get underneath and hit him with that recovery. But like you were saying, like South America definitely loves their spears. I think every single set on the South American block has had a spear because there's just been so many people who love to pick up this weapon. Yeah, and there's another side. Uh, that, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me take my focus away from that. Right now we got to double up on this side. Yeah, what do you do? What do you do to get around that? There's so much coverage. Somehow not losing their stock in the midst of that, but Laura is is, uh, is, is suffering a lot in damage. Yeah, speaking of projectile coverage, Vecina and Sack have it in spades as well. One thing that works really well for this red team, high strength. Both of them hit incredibly hard. Yeah, and I did like that attempt before Lores fell there, trying to go for that exhausted recovery with that goal recovery, but it did not find its mark. And Sack still, again, refusing to go down, uh, getting a lot of damage, does get reversal, trying to go for the recovery read with uh, the Qatars, but got punished. Yo, but Vecina swinging away, kind of trying to get this juggle, but Vecina is able to trade out so efficiently again because of that high strength that Amethyst brings to the table. Side air won't be enough to go ahead and get rid of Kaina, but Kaina, of course, very difficult to knock out. That D-Light side air still won't be enough yet either. Uh, this is a very close game, regardless of the fact that Sack had so, such a good defense before. We are down to the wire. Yeah, this still could go either direction, even though there's a little bit more damage. How are you kind of refusing to fall right now, Linda? Oh! It's just going to miss. Are you kidding me? It's a get off me shooting both sides of the aisle. That was so well played, just barely missing. Uh, it, that should have been kind of getting knocked out again. But that was like four different interactions where kind of didn't get knocked out and ends up instead closing it with a double KO. Yeah, he just survived by such narrow margins. And at the very end there, that was he frames. splits the difference. He gets both of them just outside of that down sig, and he ends up getting the KO. That was uh, that was amazing, yeah, honestly. Literal frames off from getting caught by Sack, but instead ends up coming out on top with a double KO. Uh, that was again, that was as close as you could possibly get. Sack had incredible survivability for a while. Of course, you already know. Uh, we talked about the range coverage that. Um, Queen Nye brings to the table, but we were put into a scare fest over on the right with the Amethyst coverage. You have to watch out for those cannon sigs, and somehow, some way, kind of still kept staying alive. So let's see if he can replicate that here in game two. Yeah, despite all the strength that the red team brings to the table, they were not able to find that finishing blow on Kaina and let Kaina come back, get that double to finish off game number one. We'll see if red team can clean up those stocks a little bit quicker here in game number two. As they're going for the jungles, but Kaina with the interrupt. You know, it's this type of play style right here that we're seeing out of Kaina with that combo right there and side switching off the double D light and another follow up. Are you kidding me? You know, Sparky was saying earlier how one day we're going to be talking about kind of in the same breath that we talk about the other greats. And it's this type of play right here that's going to uh, basically bring it to that point. Yeah, I mean, right there, uh, there were so many good decisions, right? Kind of opting for the ground pound as a follow up to try to split the red team. And then Lores with the rotate over knew that a lot of options were burned. So went for the double down light to get closer for that side air and hits the ground pound. Like there's just so many amazing things within that. Look at the coverage they had there again. Laura's had that entire turn basically to themselves. Does get reversed off with there, but probably not going to be able to get. Oh, actually did creep the wall touch in. Laura's is another one. Oh, <laughs> you you got to be kidding me. Lined it up and in the uh, animation already like that. <laughs> don't tell me. This is yet another time where we're close to what it probably won't be a, 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 a whole uh, six stock. But they were doing it earlier to feed and use. <laughs> I mean, they're definitely building to one, but yeah, one hit is gonna take out both of the blue team members, but this is still four stocks to two. This is a massive lead for this blue team. This is uh, very difficult to try and be on the eternal positive note. I do I, I do try to be uh, an eternal optimist in any situation. This is definitely one of the most difficult situations, however, for the red team, especially now as SAG falls. It's a free double up. That's gonna be a big whiff. You already burned, uh, trying to go for that GC sidelight, and you were out of resources, somehow getting back on. Yeah, Vecina manages to get past all of that as Loris was putting a lot of damage out and kind of steals away that one. That was Loris's. Like, he had that. And kind of is like, wait, let's, let me get that Just last wait, 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 that was, that was, was sneaking there. I got I to gotta add to my, my KO count. Hold on, give me, give me a second. 
this is phenomenal. Uh, I mean, you know, talking all about Kaina and such too, but you think back to midseason and beyond, Loris has also been on an absolute tear pretty much since midseason, bringing it all the way up right there. Covering and then immediately target shifting over to the ground pound after going for the D light and the GCD light Sarah. You have to have good awareness when you're noticing that off the right, you are going for a KO and immediately saw the other one. And then right here, like you said, that was absolutely Loris's KO and kind of said, no, that's for me. Let's finish it with style. Dude, look at these graphs. Kaina and Loris basically lived for more than half of that game on their first stocks. Look at how long their stocks lasted compared to how short Sack and Vecina's first two stocks are. It's one of those games where I occasionally like to look over to the other side to see how many times Remy is clicking the screen for replays, and I saw so many times where those potential clicks. That is a showcase, to say the least. Near dominant performances from both games. We are now going to switch over to Demon Island to try and get some room to breathe, maybe. And we're also going to change some legends. Interesting swaps coming out from Sack and Vecina. Vecina over to the Orion. Sack over to the Akuma. That Val crossover. Uh, a, a little bit of carryover, but still uh, not sure what they're looking for with these swaps. There's some team comp. I believe we saw this earlier from Simple and Heisen, if I remember correctly. And it worked pretty well, but <laughs> at the current moment, it's just zone breaking kind of, look at that. He had the dare and immediately jumped out of the way, reset himself a position, another D6 separates him off. Like, what can you do to even hit Kaina at this point? <laughs> uh, apparently nothing. Because Kaina's <laughs> gonna pick up that recovery and get the KO. Right side, Loris wins his 1v1 as well. Uh, things are looking dire for this red team. I feel like they need to start grouping up a little more, but Kaina, he's just still swinging. He's chasing like crazy, had the reach on the dodge away and everything, but that's gonna be a knockout that, well, not on the Kaina. Uh, that is a sentence you never hear. That time finally had to, that charge recovery allowing uh, Vecina to get in, excuse me, not Vecina, Sack to get in position to close it out. Yeah, that was actually really good coverage there is like Vecina kind of showed an entire route that he shouldn't go down and then Sack covered the one option left over. Yeah, definitely gonna help out a little bit. Definitely here on Demon Island might be a big part of what they're Ooh. doing, trying to get closeouts, but <laughs> it doesn't matter. Kind of trying to get what is like a 15 stock winner's finals here, maybe. Yeah, I mean, he just, he wants the, the entirety of the game. He wants every KO in his pocket right now. He is swinging big, but Lores is down to his final stock alongside Vecina. Sack actually still sitting on that second one. So the blue team can't rest just yet. Yes, I will say yeah, the red team definitely looking better after this legend swaps and maybe the stage might be helping a ton too, but uh, that's not oh. what you want to happen. That just missed the bow, I, uh, bow and sig. Yeah, I think Sack actually interrupted that just before it so that Loris' NSYNC doesn't connect, but Sack does find the KO. Sack's gonna fall for it. Still even. All right, we're on last stock apiece here. One good edge guard on Demon Island can make a big difference. Uh, it depends on if you could get Loris off. Uh, kind of completely untouched, uh, but you already know that means kind of gonna play up front and he's been very difficult to hit. Yeah, red team definitely should try to take down Loras while they have the opportunity. Vecina not able to hit the down air. Sack, you can see him actually chasing towards Loras. Sack is just going for wake ups. He wants Loras out of this game. And that was a good spot that's read on uh, Vecina to get some extra damage in on Kaina. However, weird spot to be in at the oh. moment, especially when you have Kaina near you. Team combo lineups, and he's already deep into red, so you can't afford to take too many hits. Some great target swaps came out of Kaina to lead to that KO onto Vecina. It's all left to Sack to see if he can keep the team alive in this winner's bracket. Otherwise, Kaina and Loras are going into the grand finals. This world where hate can happen. He has both of the blue team at just stray recovery ranges, potentially. It depends on if they make a mistake directly above him like that, but that wasn't enough. Ceiling's just a little too high, and the weapon toss hits just right. Loras and Kaina, 3-0 their way into grand finals. That was incredibly dominant on the blue team's part. Game three looked much better, for sure, after the swap. The swap, I don't even say like it was a little bit too late. They just couldn't close it out at the right moment. But that was the big playmaker there. Going for the side, like making it seem like he was going to chase up top, catching him slipping. Not much room you could hide on the bottom of uh, the stage there. And they just continue to show their dominance. Have they? I don't know if they've dropped that game in a while. Let's take a look real fast before we uh, get ready to switch things over here. Let's see. So. Loading. Let's see. 3 0, 3 0, 3 0. Okay, Loading. so I'm already. I'm, Already four games back. I'm already four games back here on three O's. Uh, two O, two O, two. Wow. Uh, hey, chat. Get this. They haven't dropped a single game today.
not one. That's hard to do in twos, considering the fact that you have to rely on both people performing uh, well, but they haven't dropped a single game this entire tournament. Yeah, they are playing incredibly well. And it's not just like the kind of show. Laura's definitely holding his own as well, but I'm sure Remy has some intelligent words to talk about. So let's. I think I like closed my eyes there and woke up thinking this was BCX Grands because that's that's a cross right there, that reminiscent of Boomy very much. Uh, I want to get right into these plays. You can call them plays. I'm just going to call it the kind of montage reel. He was out of his mind. And this first game, you guys were probably thinking something. He was thinking something else because what? The down sig in between both opponents in the red gets them both out of there. And at this point, he needs to go look at all his taunts by the charge up one because you start charging up after this and you take it further into a 3-0. That one looked close. The rest of them, not really. Side sig and then set up for the 1v2 combo. The ground pound was a good option there. And it's what happens after it. Lorez, you guys, the casters mentioned he was playing good as well. He gets his beautiful down lights there, and it's what happens after. Kind of goes for that downer, and he, Lorez, notices up there that uh, the opponent is coming from with the axe recovery. Goes for the ground pound, gets that double knockout, gives them a huge lead on this opening uh, play here, and it continues on even in this 1v2 right here. The amount of pressure these two hold and the respect for each other, the way they follow up on each other just shows so well. The end light comes out, and instantly after the punish is there he goes for the style points he gets that recovery just at the end of the double down light i would have taken the recovery on the spear myself i'm not gonna let someone outshine me like that but he does what he wants to do and uh, continues on even onto the demon island the desperate play here they switch their characters but kind of has no patience for that the side light into the side stick and he thinks okay i finally have some breathing room we picked a giant map come on kind of let us breathe Kinda is not having it. He immediately dashes forward, gets that second side stick, and this time it's the stock completely ripped away from him. Every single time Kinda was on the map, any single time they gave him a bit of freedom, he took it to the maximum. Just this ground pound here again, gets the side light and switches up to the opponent, goes for the down light, I mean, goes for the ground pound and then gets that 2v1 combo, taking them into that game three on a victorious note. They're playing out of their minds. The casters will tell you more about that. Yeah, kind of and Sack, uh, sorry, kind of and Laura is playing out of their minds. Like you said, no games lost today, and we'll see if that can get changed, but it'll be a hot minute before anyone gets to challenge that. Yeah, um, I, you know, like I said earlier, I'm an eternal optimist, try to keep some positive notes and make it feel like everybody has a shot all the way through because there is always a chance. The way that they are playing right now, it feels like it's just a fight for a second because. Not only are they not dropping games, but they're not dropping games in dominant fashion. It's not like every game is close. They are just winning, and they are styling at that. So who's going to be the one to stop them? I have no idea. It could be the amazing story we see right now of Lily and Junior on one side, but also it could be the return of the dominant force themselves. Is it going to be Wesson Power Ranger, maybe, to try and make it happen? We'll find out, because we're going to start in a limb semis right now. I'll tell you, the, the viewers definitely have a lot of faith in Wes and Power, but I'll give you a little bit of bias here, as uh, Lily and Junior actually took out the team that knocked Wes and Power into the elimination side of things, which, via transitive property, gives a little bit of power to this blue team, maybe some faith that they could do well. But we are seeing them start off with the, the teams the picks that have been working the best for them. The transitive property meme is by far my favorite. Okay, so I beat Lily <laughs> once, who where she beat Fiend once, where Fiend once beat Kaino, therefore I am number one PR. And <laughs> right now, uh, Lily and Junior have been making a statement, like you said, and also something we haven't been seeing from anybody really. It shows up on occasion, but no success, not here. Hammer is in play. Yeah, Lily's kind of been the one holding the hammer throughout all of South America, of course, playing that Nash. Junior with a fantastic dodge up, Going to avoid that KO potential from West, but Power does find that slap down. Here's a team combo. And Sig bounces, but it doesn't hit the down Sig from Power. And something we mentioned before is uh, not only have we been seeing Spear all, uh, all weekend, but we are seeing four <laughs> here in this match. Uh, South America just feels so comfortable with it, but West trying to cover a spot dodge with that Nair what? does not find it. Meanwhile, Weapon Toss what? down. Lily closing out that stock. And let's take a look at Power, who currently needs a reboot because he's on the last stock. Yeah, that's a toggle right there. Lily with the edge guard, hit that ground pound and continued it into a KO. But Power, he's gonna back away. Maybe learn a little bit of respect, but Junior is not Lily, so he doesn't have to respect them. Power is currently doing the exact thing you need to do. Uh, turn it off to turn it back on. <laughs> and uh, oh, but what you all you needed was just call West for tech support because West is refusing to give up any stocks at the moment. Uh, everybody's sitting on one except for West. 
Yeah, but I mean, it's still 2v2s, right? There's no stock sharing, so Lily now has the opportunity to force a 1v2 onto power. If they take power out, West has to survive the 1v2. <laughs> they were aiming for it, trying to catch that DC, GC D-Light recovery at the top of the blast zone, maybe sneak one out early. Power's been getting quite a, uh, hit quite a bit, but West's defense at least I think might be okay if they do force that 2v1, because take a look, Lily is also taking quite a bit of damage. Yeah, there's definitely a possibility of West winning that 1v2 or not even having to do it, as there's power gonna fall. Lily's gotta be careful here, though. Like you said, Lily, the most damaged person on the screen. Side Sig is gonna kill. All right, one more opportunity here for West and Power to try and get that W on the board. You could not have asked oh. for anybody better, though. You have West currently in a spot where he just got the KO, and now 1v1. You let him come in, pick up immediate side air, and Junior now has to play the 1v1 against someone who is a little bit more known as a 1v1 player. As we said before, I mean, West just continuing to prove how strong he is overall. But this is uh, this is pretty much the Lance. Oh, so, actually, not, not pretty much. This is the Lance of South America. So trying to play around this can be difficult, but Junior is doing very solid at it. Ooh, but Junior got caught jumping there. Wes, that's the stock, and that is the clutch from Wes to close out game number one. That emote was to let them know that that is in fact royalty. They keep coming out and let you know I am king around these parts as that was absolutely what they needed. Big part of why they were able to even get that game though, of course, was when power was sitting at a very uncomfortable spot, what did they do? They kept poking damage at Lily as much as they could. So that would line up what could work out to be a 2v, uh, a 1v1 situation at the end. Very close at that, too. You look at the damage between both, 1,009 to 1,078, uh, but the big number, 720, sitting over on Wes, getting the job done. Yeah, that was some big damage coming out from Wes. I want to give credit to Junior though. Junior did so well in that 1v1. Like, Junior was, I, I, honestly, I think Junior was getting the best of Wes for a hot minute there, but then Wes hit that one read, that yep. jump read where he hits the side air, and now Junior has burned everything, and he just has to hit that down air to close out the game. Yeah, that also showed me that Junior's bow is also cooking, because so far, it, was, it we've seen a lot of very successful play from the spear, but that last stock showed that the bow is there, ready to go, too, as you saw the damage split pretty much even between both. No, no stage change Whoa. here at all, but that's a big Sarah, then that's the target they need to get. Get rid of Wes if you possibly can. Oh, they're trying to, but they're also taking a lot of damage in the process. Wes still manages to get back up. Doesn't get the read there, and yeah. that's gonna be Wes with the punish. That is a no fly zone. That that part of the stage belongs to Junior Roar. While that's active, let that rock and currently power getting a spot touch. Drew does get uh -oh, the Sarah. Uh oh, Junior Roar! That is a huge. That's the breaks. All right, seemed like everybody's stopping for a second. Back. Is he back? Might be a bot. Yeah, they're all avoiding it. Wait for Junior to get himself back into oh, yeah, the game. He's back in. All right, there we go. The emote to let everybody know that we are good to go. Fortunate, but it is okay. Everybody pretty damaged too, so it's. Uh, yeah, I think it'll be a good it's opportunity the worst. to reset oh, it. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, oh. The, uh, is it? Was it within time? They, it looks like they're resetting. That is a question I do have an answer to because oh. I was not looking at the clock. So uh, we are going to. All right, we're going to wait to hear. Interesting. We're going to wait to hear what the call is from the TOs themselves because you do have a time frame in which you need to yeah. let that happen. Uh, so we'll find out in a second. Let y'all know what's going on. But uh, that is thinking before that moment. We're still up 1-0 uh, in favor of the red team, and that was off of the the back of a very solid clutch. And you saw at the beginning of that game, their their primary target was Wes. Yeah, that's. Uh uh, it's kind of weird how that one ended because, of course, it wasn't within the, the original 10 seconds, but because it's South America, like, they, they tend to homie like that. You saw them all yep. pause. And once they started jumping off, it seemed like, yeah, they were just going to homie it and be like, let's restart. Three, but even two. then, like, there's still this information gain that happens there, right? Yes. They, the blue team kind of showed their hand. They were definitely targeting down west, like you said. Yeah, like you are saying, too, all of them homies, uh, just for full confirmation, they are, in fact, just resetting, there is no score that went to either side because technically once it goes past a certain point, the other team can choose to just take the W. Yeah. But that's not how things are going to work out here. Everybody is very talented and wants to get the dub exactly how they want. And right there, Junior was chasing, not backing off again from trying to throw hands at Wes. Yeah, he definitely wants that one as Lily beats out the you can't see me with that side signature. Wes on the left side has to avoid the pogos, but can't avoid all of them as it looks like a Toys R Us with how many pogos hit him. You know, I miss Toys R Us. Same. Why'd you have to do that to me? <laughs> <laughs> right now, we're going to miss that stock on Junior Roar, and pretty soon Lily as well as that side air is going to go ahead and close it out. Still 
relatively even between the two uh, the two teams. Power just a little bit more damaged. He's on that Hattori as well, so a little squishiness coming out from him. Yeah, it's just the, the movement capabilities of South America is usually what allows them to survive so much longer, even with uh, the low defense legends like this. Meanwhile, Power is still just right in the fray. No fear whatsoever. Does get reverse sided, though. This is a big opportunity for them to get a 2v1. However, Lily ended up getting Whoa. caught in that D-Light. Oh my gosh, Lily with that rotation too, actually helping out Junoror there. And she hits the side air, but Wes gets the turnaround and that's gonna be a KO. Can Junoror convert it to a trade? No, that recovery from Wes keeps him alive. Big play from Wes right there. That should have been Lily's stock oh. essentially, but instead not only does Wes get one, but gets two as he catches Junoror as well. All right, Junoror and Lily on their final stocks alongside Power. They might wanna just take down Power but Wes is the most damaged person on the screen. Yeah, I feel like they're oh! talking. Oh my god, oh, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! <laughs> Everybody going up to the top. It's gonna be Junior who finds Wes in disguise. Of course, Lily, she's pretty much the one who lined that up by going for that chase in the first place. Man, that was some insane juggling coming out at the top of the map. And Wes was the one who ended up falling. Of course, he was the most damaged, so not the end of the world, but still power. Took a lot of damage there. Yeah, Blue team needs to finish that stock, though. And Lily, even though she's pretty damaged, does have a lot of KO potential, so you gotta be very careful about how you decide to approach it. Look at this, everybody is very damaged. That's the oh! first one to go, but entering back, can Wes do it again? Weapon toss out, trying to go for a, D a he's DCD He's good, he's line. good, he's good. Oh, the ground pound. Wes has all that stage behind him. He has the Lance, neutral light, that's just damage. The dodge away, coming in with the side air, waiting it out, recovery! Oh! <laughs> good catch him slipping! Tried to position himself to get a punish onto West, but did not expect West to fully charge out that recovery, and West does it again as they are sitting at one more game away from getting into elimination finals. I swear Junior had a recovery. Could have gotten high enough. It would have been still a dangerous spot because you could always go for that like second recovery that Lance players will occasionally like slip out there. But still, man, right here. Let's see it. Jump, jump, jump. Dodge. Dodge up. Still has recovery, right? Yeah, yeah, you could have just gotten away. Uh oh, it was a late start. Okay. Mm. Yeah, that recovery kind of dips down, and Junior got caught there. Wes clutching up again, winning those 1v2s. All right, now we're here on game number three. Up 2 0 is the red team. Wes already deciding to swing straight at Junior because the previous game, uh, including the game that they had to stall out or where they had to reset, everybody decided to jump Wes. So Wes said, absolutely not. I'm going to swing right back immediately. I mean, he's playing Brahala. He's got plenty of jumps. He can get out of those situations. And right now, Lily has got to be careful. Lily, the most damaged one, getting close to that KO percent, and another side air might do it. Yeah, Lily getting caught up in the frame. Meanwhile, oh. we see a side air sending uh, uh, Junior into a weird spot. Going to go ahead and avoid that attempt at the neutral stick. Meanwhile, Power is just is controlling the side of the stage so well as we see not one but two go into the red team's favor. Really good plays coming out from this red team. You saw them trying to force that split, keeping both blue team members on opposite sides of the map. And then once they were at that KO percent, like deep red, they're like, you know what? It doesn't matter where you're going as long as you're going to a KO box. Oh my God, you know what's crazy? Yes. I was going to say I wanted to see maybe Lily target oh, shift oh, because Wes. power was losing that 1v1 but it is not mattering. West does finally fall to the Sarah, but my goodness, he put in some work. Yeah, I mean, Wes just got so much damage for that offstage play on his Lance. He's looking so good. Here's a team combo, but Power spawns in just in time to interrupt. Jitruer got some hands in on Lily at the same time, too. Lily getting volleyed by everyone away. Uh, does avoid the Pogo attempt up in the skies, but... Oh, Lily! Blue team is hitting each other a lot all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> they got to they gotta calm that down. As you're currently down two games, you can't afford to have that happen. Yeah, a little bit of salt coming out from this blue team. Like, they're starting to swing on everyone, hoping that that might be the answer. Of course, you do a little bit less damage to your teammates. Lily looking for a near attempt. Power has just been winning out. There's that spear DC. Won't be enough to get the knockout on Junior, but it's a free 2v1 onto Lily. Yeah, every time Wes gets those big SIGs on the, the very damaged blue team members, like, it forces these 1v2 power plays. Going to launch Junior. 1v2 opportunity here. Can they take out Wes? No, the GC down sig. Oh my god, he's so hard to hit. Yeah, but Wes did take a lot of damage. Also, a big Lily! opportunity. And a ground pound reversal onto Lily. Again, getting caught, overextending, if you will, trying to go after him. And uh, I mean, I get it. Wes is very damaged, but also Wes has just been baiting and punishing repeatedly as they're currently up three stocks to one. Yeah, just uh, greeted a little bit there for that slide charge down heavy unarmed. Lots of active frames. Just put in prime position for Wes to come down, hit that ground pound, and now Wes and Power are in perfect position to close this 
this out. Yep, GC Sidelight, Side Air, Wes and Power guarantee a top three finish. Yeah, Wes just sitting there right next to Power, letting Power force Junior to burn the resources. As soon as he saw a free opportunity, jumping up, going to closing out that Side Air. Uh, and, and I mean, the danger, yeah, right there, going out there with an attempt to try and catch him but you were already so damaged and you're stuck behind. Feel like the power play maybe over onto power might have been the better idea. Doesn't matter though. Hindsight's 2020. And that's gonna be a 3-0 victory for Wesson Power. Yeah, convincing finish for Wesson Power. A little bit expected as uh, I think even the, the chat vote was heavily in favor of Wes and Power. And of course that means that they are earning their spot in the top three. Again, huge place coming out from Lillian Junior getting a top four finish. Yeah, no, actually, uh, uh, congratulations on that run. They did perform phenomenally, like you were saying before. They did take out the team that put Weston Power into the Olympic side in the first place. So, uh, very impressed. And also taking Hammer all the way back up to Final Four at the same time. But now it's time, which this kind of surprised me, but then I thought about it, some different team lineups. Weston Power are going to be going up against Sack and Fazina and actually have no history against each other. Yeah, a little bit of uh, team swaps. I think Sack and Vecina are, are like a relatively mm -hmm. new 2v2 team as a whole. Uh, we did talk about it during like the South America pre-show when we were transitioning from EU to South America that Weston Power, they've been around for a, a hot minute. They've been playing together for a little bit, but yeah, Sack and Vecina, kind of new bloods. Yes, and now that is the big factor. You're going up against those who have been at the top before, even though they weren't teaming for a little bit there. They still have that history together. They looked phenomenal in that previous set, stopping the run of Lily and Junior. And you just came off of a very difficult L against the winning side of winner's finals there with Laura's and Kaina. How do you rebound is the big question. I mean, one thing that's nice for uh, second Vecina is like, nobody really expects anything from them. You know what I mean? Like the, the, the expect, and that's like, that can be bad in the sense of like, nobody's rooting for you, but also like the worst thing you can do is get a bronze medal when you haven't really been getting medals period. Like that's it. That's a good thing to have. Uh, you are seeing the community vote very heavily oh in favor of Wes and Power. And honestly, I don't, I don't really blame you. Which is crazy considering, uh, chat, I know y'all had the exact same predictions I did because so <laughs> everybody predicted Power Ranger and Wes, or Power and Wes now, uh, to be in third. And all you're saying, nah, get them out of here, get them out of here. They're playing too hot. And uh, to be honest, they might be right. So uh, even with that prediction being at third for many, it might not be the way they expect us to start things off here in Elimination Finals. Well, Sack and Vecina now have to play through West and Power to earn their spot in the Grand Finals. They did come into the top four winners side, but they ended up losing to get their spot here. Yeah, pretty much only by the hands of the people who had just refused to lose right now. No games dropped by Loris and Kaina, but every other game that Sack and Vecina have played have been phenomenal. Oh. And that is a big reversal. Sack is going to get Still the wall touch and Vecina's there with that high coverage. Sack throwing out some signatures. You can see, again, the high force on this blue team. Like, they want to swing big. Yes, uh, that is something, like, even though red team's maneuverability has been pretty good, they do put themselves in the fray quite often, which is going to lead you to big punishes. That was a recovery. Will for a change put West down on the first stock, or first one to lose the stock. Whoa, Sack. What a wild man. Just kind of ran forward and was like, what if I end SIG right now? And Paris like, no. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> no, much, don't do that. That's pretty much how they lost the previous <laughs> game. So don't do that. But uh, at the moment, Vecina holding on to that first stock and getting a lot of the damage. In. Oh my god, going for it heavy. Uh, that would have been huge if they got that on West. I mean, that was still a big pickup from Vecina. Again, high strength on the Zol. Already putting West close to that red damage, but Sack. Happen to avoid this 1v2 for a little minute. The Power Ranger having a bit of a difficulty opening people up so far throughout this game. You see a lot of straight hits, pretty much only that Nair does finally get a couple in a row. Okay, there we go. All of a sudden, Power seems to be waking up. The coverage, the side six coming out. Team combo, Vecina backs up a little bit, but they still convert into a three hit and sig thrown out. Power Ranger is in trouble. Powerful going for that ground pound, but does not get anything out of it. That's going to be a close out there. Good job. And team combo. No, aiming a little bit too far off to the side. Yeah, I'm not sure if power like delayed his side air to hope that Wes could get further away. They still managed to get that KO. Nice second recovery coming out from Wes. Big team combo right here again, and they continue to pressure. Also double jumping directly over the top of that, not getting caught at the side. Yeah, they, they end up getting high enough over that signature from Vecina. Sack trying to take some space there. Vecina 
will put everyone onto their final stocks. There's only so many times you can avoid it. It covers so much range. Here comes Sack, though, with that Seer. Trying to catch Wes with the ground pound, but instead they immediately target shift over to try and get Vecina. Yeah, they saw him hanging out on that wall. Know that he can't avoid too many options there. You see even Power tried to do it again there. Just uh, went for sidelight and then dodged through instead of actually going for a combo extended to try and catch oh, Vecina. Man, he is playing so low on those walls. It's making me nervous, and he's going to let Sack fall because of Vecina has basically been non-existent for the tail end of this one, and Power is going to pick up the downlight recovery. Dad, there was a, there was a window of opportunity where they could have possibly gotten Wes and taken that game out, but Wes was able to clutch it up after taking a lot of early damage, which was not at all the theme of the previous game. But very close down to the wire, the only thing was, like you said, towards the end, Vecina it felt like they were kind of just swinging for the sake of trying to hit rather than having a plan behind the hit. They have to find a way to close that up. Yeah, Vecina seemed scared the second he got into the red. And we're seeing the swap already. Sack is going to go over to the Akuma for game number two. Wasting no time at all. And a good stage to do it too. Val very well known for being, uh, this Demon Island being a haven for them. But uh, this is uh, not how you want to start it off. Oh my already God, in the down. blender. <laughs> the team combos from the red team. Sack is already in the red about 15 seconds into this one, and I don't think Sack's found a weapon yet either. Yeah, even with as good as Akuma is, it's swinging. He's currently only blocking with his face at the moment. This is not looking too good for Sack's start. Meanwhile, uh, Vecina, again, it seems like going for straight hits versus like trying to go in and help. Like, that's the most difficult thing. When, when you, as a team, when you see that, that's a free opportunity to go jump the other player. Yeah, for sure. Like, they can kind of recognize that Vecina's kind of letting them have their way with Sack, and that's just letting Sack take a lot of damage. Yeah, see if they can try and make the adjustments around. The gauntlets are now in hand for Sack, so that's going to be a little bit more fearful for Wes. He can't just jump over for free. And they're starting to get some more damage in on power, so it's, it looks like they're waking up as one does fly, however, though, for Vecina. Oh, Sack burned a lot of movement there. Oh, the no. side airs, oh, the no. side airs, and Wes <laughs> takes Sack down to his final stock. They are literally bullying Sack from the beginning of this game up to this point. It's been very difficult for Sack to actually play Brawlhalla. They're really like, yo, go back to Queen Nine. <laughs> <laughs> yo, get, get off this Akuma, bro. <laughs> Gauntlets, no, go away. But right now, it's... All right, I'm trying to find some positive notes. It's been a little difficult. It's uh, only a one stock difference. It's, it's, it's not the end of the world. I'm still looking at Sack's damage already, though. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, Sack is, Sack is definitely hurting, and he's still kind of playing aggressive. Like, he's still the one kind of diving in the middle of everything and trying to get swings. You saw, like, earlier today, when someone was damaged, they would play that back line. Right now, Sack's still going in. All right. I mean, it, you, I was feeling good about Fasina, too. The biggest thing so far, the biggest strength of the uh, red team is when one of their teammates get, gets hit, they immediately make sure they get a punish. Like, there's no big extensions you're getting. And Sack gonna fall to the GC down sig. Here's the team combo. Down sig gonna swing to the left side. Power wasn't in position to get a follow up, but the Poco, and that's another one in that, the pocket of Weston Power. That was textbook execution on how you do not let someone touch the wall on Demon Island. You saw how he weapon tossed away, forced him to go low. Immediately as he tried to shift back in, he already had the GC uh, D-Light in position to make him have to shift underneath because you can't take that hit. And what does that do? Perfectly vertical lineup to get caught by a pogo. Everything about this final coverage here, as you see after the D-Sig, was incredible. Web toss down, covers, force to go low. You have to deal, you have to dare away because neutral light's right there. But what happens after that? You are now covered by two people on ledge. There's no shot you're making that back. Yeah, that's a, a, a difficult spot to get through, especially again, you're in a 1v2. Like even if you get past one of them, the other one's right there covering. And now we're seeing Sack and Vecina pull deep. Vecina gonna be over to the Sidra and Sack onto the Taros. The Raging Bull has showed up. It has been a bit since we've seen this, but uh, straight hit territory, maybe that's the play. Maybe not, I'm forgetting too. <laughs> Come on, leave him, leave him alone. I wanted to see what they were going to do. Let them cook. But currently, the only ones who are cooking are the red team, and they are eating good. Yeah, they are getting everything. They're emptying the pantry and cooking a five-course meal. And Sack does make it back to the wall, but Vecina's already down to that second stock. Wes, fairly damaged, but Power's like untouched. You see that? Power was, Power got a hit and knew that they were gonna attempt the whip punish, dipped directly underneath, like get that Sarah out of here. And that was now, what, Power's the one for the change who hasn't been hit like at all. Yeah, Sa uh, Power's doing a really good job of uh, recognizing when someone's gonna come in and try to get those punishes. What a combo and a follow up, but they need the KO. Power gets past it.
It feels like it, the, the Eternity meme from Pokemon X and Y where I'm seeing Stomp Stare hit. I'm like, oh, it's been 3,000 years <laughs> right now. There's another one, and, well, that's three in a row that have worked and gotten the K, uh, the, got two KOs out of it. So it seems like seems like Sack's starting to warm up here. Ooh, Puffacina dodges wrong, and Wes has the read with the side air. Sack oh, eats no. the ladder, and Vecina is there to give some reprieve. Sack's going to survive. Sack trying to get a close out here onto West. Misses oh. out on the dare, and West looking for reversal. Gets the wall bounce. Going out there again. Sack, yeah, get back to, just get back to the stage. Side six. Sack gets the stock. It is technically even, but not for long. Yeah, actually, yeah, this is actually significantly closer than it feels like at the moment. Uh, the biggest factor uh, is staring down power, but you can only take so many straight hits from the blue team's team cop. So if they can get to power, they might be able to even this up. My God, it feels like it's impossible to get to him. Look at, look at the way West is just blocking. He's getting in the way, throwing out as many siders as possible. Like, look, you got to deal with this burst. What are you going to do about it? You, it's so difficult to get to power. It's, it's crazy too, because Wes is on his last stock with like everyone else. Like, power is on too, and Wes is still the one being that front man, just like being a bully in everyone's faces. And that's a split, and that's likely going to be game number three. But the blue team, both of them make it back to their walls. They get back over to the other side. They actually switch who the one villains are going on there. But currently, Vecina is missing all of these shots. Needs to get something going. Weapon Toss stops him, but it doesn't matter. He stopped him and said, no, 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 no. I, I, I had something to show you, but you can't see it. As we see another double KO come through and another 3-0 as they are going to send Sack and Vecina out of here. Man, Power and West powering through the bracket. The one team that knocked him into the elimination bracket is eliminated. So now they have nothing left to fear. They win their elimination finals, which means they're going into the grand finals. I love to see this because this is a team that we're seeing come back and we hadn't seen for a bit. So the question marks are there like, hey, do you still got it? The answer is yes. And they're looking phenomenal at that. Not only are they getting the W's all the way through uh, the limb side pretty solidly. That was one of the few performances I've seen that makes me feel like has a legitimate shot to compete up against Loras and Kinda in a second. Yeah, that, I, I think that's a, a fair statement. Like Loras and Kinda are like this scary monster at the end of the tunnel. And now we're trying to see who's gonna be the hero who can make it down to the end of the cave and like fight the dragon that is this team. Yeah, the final raid boss that you have wiped on 50 times over, you're hoping to get the loot for the week, but kind of just laughs as he gets you to reset once again. And uh, I, that's just if you could get through phase one known as Loris. So I, I, I can't imagine what it's gonna feel like when they actually get them do, uh, down the last stock. But we're gonna find out if they have a shot at that in the first place, because we're gonna see with Remy exactly why Wes and Power are back. Do they have a shot at it? I mean, they just 3 0 in elimination finals, so they're going right where they need to be to show that shot off. Wes, Power Ranger. Um, Power has been playing crazy all day on that Hattori. The Orion, Wes is playing, always keeps that consistency going, especially when he can get these reads on Lance that he's been going. Let's see this first clip here where Power Ranger nets his double knockout to close out game one. We've had a lot of close game ones going into these 3 0s. This game one, another close one where a double knockout closes it off. The recovery's picked up at the end, and this read right here after that tail end sees that uh, Vecina is going to go for the aggressive option back to the map, goes for the side, it's immediate GC recovery punish. Basic source stuff, but it's really clean right there how he knows where his opponent's going to move. Both these players have their reads intact. But let's look at this stock here and how it starts off. Sack gets that quick little end light and it immediately turns bad for him. The, the sword end light punish into the side lights there, gets that recovery off, and it doesn't look like the end of the world, but you'll notice that it continues on. Now we've only gotten 11 seconds into this clip and Sack is completely into the red. He's getting absolutely destroyed on this stock. The combos aren't stopping. They're still following him up. The recovery is being sent up on him. And you're just wondering at this point, okay, this stock has no value. Maybe your next one will. Uh, Wes has other ideas because look at these options here. Beautiful pogo from power to keep him low. And immediately after, Wes takes that recovery out of here. And it's what happens next. The Lance combo, we know it so well. Not a combo, but the one there, it leaves him. You know the sweat beads are coming out. No options left. It lines him out on the final hit of that side area there. Gives him just one stock in that entire game to play with. We're one minute into the game, guys. Let him breathe. He, he deserves a chance to play, guys. Come on. Continuing on into this game, uh, the next game, the character swaps do come out, but 
I've already told you how important your first stocks are in twos. It's that momentum. It's that standing ground. If you lose your first stocks, you're playing from a deficit the entire time. It doesn't matter if the end of the game was close because what did you have at the start of the game for it to matter? And this 1v2 combo starts off beautifully. We saw it earlier in their other sets, but they just start off their combos really perfect. Sometimes it'll, you see the Sorcerer come out and the DI will happen, but Wes is always there to pick it up. He looks so clean doing it, pushing into it. Power Ranger, he knew what to do. He closed it off with the double GC. You can't see me. Vec, Vecina actually couldn't see him because he just walked into it. So he looks really clean. The grand finals are ready and set up for you. The casters will tell you all about it. You know, watching these teams reminds me of one of my favorite quotes from Men in Black. It was old and busted. Hot. <laughs> Talking about those teams. And we have basically that right here. We have the classics versus the brand new model. But at the same time, classic cars tend to last a long time. And that might be the case here because Power Ranger and Wes looking phenomenal. However, do they have all the bells and whistles to beat the extremely undefeatable, no game loss so far, Loris and Kaina? It's uh, a big wonderful match uh <laughs> but before we get into it let's talk about brahala.com <laughs> slash winter merch again uh you're running out of time time is running out if you want to pick up that hoodie if you want to pick up that blanket go to brahala.com slash winter merch but this set is so fascinating in this microcosm that is south america because on one hand you have this team that's never gotten a gold medal on the other hand you have this team that's gotten a lot of gold medals on one hand you have a team that hasn't lost a game today <laughs> on the other hand you have a team that's coming from the elimination side of the bracket. It's uh, just a fascinating little just space to exist in. Well, on the other side of this break, we're going to find out exactly who it is will be crowned as the South American champion here for Winter Championship. Don't go anywhere. We got more Brawlhalla right on the other side of this break. Welcome to Brawlhalla Esports Year 8. $1 million will be awarded across the season. And it's starting to increase right now. Down down oh God, God. With four seasonal championships. For the first time. Great. <laughs> four seasonal invitationals. We're trying to read that dodge diagonal down. Yo. And that's the Russian wow. Three in-person land events. lead to BCX 2023, the open entry Brawlhalla World Championship. And he's going to put this one away. The weapon toss from Luna, but nothing else. Down the line, recovery! So many owls for Impala, but it's a dare to crown our new world champion.
on to the grand finals of the Winter Championship. And that's how you know it's intense, because the music made it scary. Yeah, we got Loris and Kaina versus Wes and Power, the old guard versus the new. Who wins it all at Winter Champs? You know, it's this type of play style right here that we're seeing kind of with that combo right there and side switching off the double delay. Yeah, Vecina manages to get past all of that as Lourdes was putting a lot of damage out and kind of freaking out the bombs. Gets some extra damage in kind of, however, weird spot to be in. Depends on him to make a mistake quickly above him like that. That was enough. Just a little too high. I'm just going to shut it off. West power right here. I'm out here. Two monster teams are now going up against each other. Loras and Kaina, Wes and his teammate Power. Neither team has fought against each other before. It is the start of a new history. The undefeatable versus the former dominant force of South America back here in Grand. You couldn't have asked for something better. And so far, it is. It, I, I am just absurdly excited because we haven't been able to see anybody make Loras and Kaina look even remotely stressed. And here we are already starting off with a team combo. Power and West definitely putting some stress out there. They are making the blue team sweat as they're getting teams Team combo after team combo. Love that they're trying to stick near each other. That way they can save each other or set up for more team combos as the NSYNC connects and it'll take down Lorenz. You talked about staying near each other because of power lining up, getting them in position so Wes can capitalize. Even if he hits his teammate, he's fine. And there's another team combo right there. Power Ranger and Wes. Looks like if they weren't knocked in their limbs, we might have seen a very different looking winner's finals maybe. But currently they are performing so well. Yeah, they are ready to take this one. They've got to win two sets in a row. But Lorenz going to get one down light into the end. Sig and Kaina and Lorenz tie it all up. Oh, if this is the precursor to what this Grands is going to look Look like we are in for a show. Already starting things off with both teams swinging right back and forth. Great team combos. Meanwhile, Lores looking to try and line something up, and it seemed like Wes was maybe waiting for a defensive option out of Lores. He just never gave it to him. Yeah, he's, you know what? If you're constantly looking for something, they never give it to you, then maybe you start looking somewhere else. But right now, Lores is looking for a KO again at the top of the map. Right now, that's going to be, no, not just yet. Doesn't get knocked out on the right-hand side, but there goes the power play Whoa. from the blue team. Meanwhile, uh, they're having a conversation amongst themselves. Uh, Laura's hitting kind of, but nothing really matters because kind of answers right back, and that should be Again? another one right there as they get the lead back. Yo, and kind of with the change-ups on that, we saw him with the GCN sig a second ago because the top of the map was closer. This time it's the down sig because the side of the map was closer. He's got options. So right now the red team has the option of trying to knock out both of these players. At the moment, they are deep in the red. Do not get caught by that D-Sig. You will exit the building fast. Good reversal on that recovery. And this might be another one. Just misses that recovery to get it. It doesn't matter because the sider is going to take it out. That's that coverage. West covered high and Power covered the ground. But Power is the one in that awkward spot of being the most damaged on the team. It's so crazy to try and follow up the first act of the movie when it's this good right now. I can't imagine what the following games will be. Currently, who's going to close out this first act? We have power very damaged at the moment, Duke. Yo, how many ground pounds does it take to get to the center of a power stock? Just that one left. And now it's all left to Wes in the 1v2, but we saw him do multiple 1v2s earlier today. That's exactly why I'm not feeling too scared no. right here, but that should be very afraid. It does avoid him at the top, but he had to burn a lot of resources. That's all the resources gone right there, and you absolutely capitalize on that. It is Lourdes and Kaina who continue this undefeated streak, and that was by far and away the closest anybody's gotten to getting a game. 
Dude, so many team combos from this team of Loras and Kaina. You're seeing one right now. The setup from Kaina and the finish from Kaina. And one thing that's really, really cool about this blue team that I don't think we've had the time to talk about just because how how insane the plays have been is that Loras is very unafraid to hit his mm -hmm. teammate. Like, he's like, I, I don't care as long as I hit a red team or an opponent as well. And it leads to a KO, just like that finishing blow there. I think Loras just making sure that he closes out his own KOs because uh, we've seen already Kaina's taken <laughs> at least two away uh -oh. from him. Wes. Uh, that cannot happen, Wes. You cannot have that oh. happen so early. You can't give them this opportunity. And now they have a power play here chasing him out. Power trying to get by. He's got two in the way. Wes gets in the middle of it, but still an uncomfortable spot for power. And Kain is there to give the reprieve to Loras. Loras gets away with it. This is now just a big lead that's going to get bigger for this blue team. You cannot let a team who has been pushing down on the gas pedal the entire day running over quite literally everyone. Again? And they do it Oh. Again. And look at that, he sent them down. I love how he did that because he sent them towards West and you second guess the idea of trying to press a button there if you're powered to try and save him. Dude, kind of right now, he's just like spinning a wheel and he's like, what follow up off of down light side air am I going to do? <laughs> and he's just done a different one every time. And every time it is impressive. Kind of showing everybody, this is why you were supposed to pick cross here in twos. And currently they have Wes sitting on his last stock already. That early game meant absolutely nothing. Duke, they're looking at yet another game where they're up this far. Oh, the one drop coming out from the blue team and power doesn't even convert it to a KO as he had the down light but he was afraid of kind of coming in. Literally, what do you do after a first game where you were so close, and then the next game, you are currently behind, about to be a full stock behind on two parts. That recovery still won't even be enough to get the KO on Dolores. Dude, the blue team, they're, they're just running away with it. They are looking so incredibly strong. Red team needs to convert to a KO here, but they can't kind of too good on the edge guard. Yeah, his defense has been phenomenal. Getting around it and then getting another punish right there. That is West falling power shortly going to join him uh, for sure. Avoiding the, avoiding everything except for the dare. And now that's just all options covered. I don't know if that's what I expected to see in game two after the way game one went, but they are quite literally trying to submit a speed run winner championship category to Game Sun Quick. I don't know if there's anybody who could stop them. Dude, Kaina and Laura's looking undefeatable off of the back of last week's win. It's no surprise to see Kaina looking this dominant, but like this is this is extra dominant. This is this is a whole new level of domination coming out from Kaina and Laura's. And it's one of the reasons why Sparky mentioned that their ranked ladder is like a 6-0 win record. Like they have 400 games played plus, and it's a 600% a win rate, whatever the number it's you understand. What absurd. I'm saying. I've, I've had like, look, hey, math up here hard, yeah. okay? You said earlier, smooth <laughs> you brain. You said six divided by <laughs> one, but you do six. Smooth, smooth it, brain, equal, whatever. math hard, Sparky does. <laughs> <laughs> right, right now, uh, we're going to see some switches, but the thing is, is it enough? Is it going to be enough? Uh, it, I mean, he mentioned earlier, like you said, there's a good reason why they've been so dominant, but you can't. It's so hard to do that as one team. We mentioned earlier about how the Acno Blaze dominance for so many years was so difficult to do, but the way Loris is kind and Kainer are doing it too, they're they're looking like an unstoppable force for a good while. Yeah, I mean they're they're basically forcing all of South America to watch and say, okay, we need to find an answer to this problem. Like yeah. we, everybody has to work together to find out what's going to work well. Right now, Power and Wes are hoping that the double axe, the Olgrim Brin, is going to be the thing to work for him. And it's fascinating that Wes isn't the one who's on the Olgrim. Yeah, that is really kind of throwing me off at the moment. Uh, but Wes putting it in the hands of Power Ranger to get the Lance play out. They have gotten it elite. For one, they're not knocked out yet. I, I am okay, my bad. Uh, <laughs> well, they got the damage at least even to start off game three. That was such a neat play from Kaina, too. He got a gravity cancel sidelight and did a jump ground pound and just knew that it was going to work out, that it was just going to hit power on the top and get that KO. And they're trying to close out that KO on uh -oh. the West, but instead it's going to be a double KO in going in the favor of West, so that Axe coming into play. Yeah, this is what the, the red team was definitely looking for, is the swap over to double axes and uh, maybe just take a lot of space, have a little bit of extra survivability as well with this Olgrim. Power with the side swaps, man. He's hitting side light, chase dodge across, side light, chase dodge. It's working well for the red team because we remember, you know, you think back to winner's finals, they also switched to axe for the sake of, I hope that these hit and try and slow them down. At least for the red team so far, it has been working. Yeah, the axes are looking good. 
the wake up from power. GC and Light as Lores was coming in. Nice follow up from Kaina. Blue team starting to remember, you know what? Those team combos we did, kind of swaggy. That's, I mean, their positioning is always optimal. They're always next to each other, but that side there won't be enough to get rid of that knockout. Of course, you got Lores holding on for a good while. That high defense legend just kind of chilling. And look at that defense again, still refusing to get KO'd by Wes. Yeah, Laura's just hanging on to this stock, but doesn't get the follow-up. Wes, again, picking up an unofficial double. Actually, I think technically Power took out kind of there, but that side air was real close look, to doing look, it. Look, 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 look. If it it's a like home it. run derby, that's yeah. four home runs in favor of Wes. That's the way we're putting it here. No foul ball. He has been on point with this ax, but here's the bad part. Side is going to come through. They are now even, and you think back to game one, there was a point where the red team had a lead, and it disappeared quickly. They got to be careful. One neutral light from Kaina could lead to that combo that's been so devastating against this red team. But you're seeing them try to play a little bit of offstage. The Pogos from West. Kaina's over there trying to help out as Powers is just kind of watching. Yeah, Powers is like, you got it. You got it. <laughs> I believe in you. I don't want to get in the middle of that as Power is taking a lot of damage. It's reset on the soft oh! platform and the reset allows him to go back up for the recovery, Duke. West now has to do the 1v2. He has to try to keep the team alive, but it won't matter as the team combo comes out. Kaina and Lores undefeated to win the winner championship. Literally untouchable. No games dropped through the entirety of this winter championship run. The impossible task to do sometimes, but they did it. This is a very stacked twos region. This, Sparky mentioned earlier in the pre-show as well. It's not just Lures and Kaina. You talk about the other teams and they're dominating the global leaderboard. And they were able to take dominant forces like that and make them all look like they did not know what they were doing at times. There were multiple times they almost had six stock games and they get to sport the very first championship of the year. Yeah, that's kind of getting the double. You got the 1v1s and the 2v2s. Laura's right alongside him, and Laura's definitely doing his part. He was looking yep. real good on that Kaya, hitting those edge guards. He edge guarded Wes in the 1v1 and the edge, uh, the off stage, obviously. Um, but like, it, it's just, it was just amazing plays all around. Yes. Whenever we have somebody who is on the come up, when you see their peak performance, you wonder, can they replicate it? We looked at Radish at one point in the early beginning of the year, and he was absolutely able to been to Flores since, got two championships. Laura showed up, performed very well midseason, continued to do that from the rest of that point. Kind of said, I like that, and I'm going to take you as my teammate. And now I am very fearful for literally anybody in South America to ever try and hold that first place. Like you said, it is now study theory craft time. The entirety of South America has to band together to try and figure out how in the world do we beat this team? Yeah, this is, um, I'm trying to think of an, an apt analogy. This is like uh, Cell just came down and murdered like an entire town. And now everyone's like, uh, well, snap, we got to. We gotta start finding them Dragon Balls or something. We gotta figure Look, something out. <laughs> I, I feel like the the, st the 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 angel statement of the enemy my of my enemy is my friend is currently the theme because even though you are all against each other, you all have to come together to beat this final boss. The raid team must get together. Everybody must meet on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays and go and wipe over and over and over and over again until they get that W. But for the meantime, it is Laura's and Kaina who are sitting pretty at the top. And not only are they doing that again, they did it in dominant fashion as they are holding this championship today. Huge congratulations to, of course, the winners, uh, Laura's and Kaina. Congratulations to the sec play second place team of Wes and Power. And then, of course, you saw the third place team, Sack and Vecina, go down uh, not too long ago. And just before that, the fourth place team, Lily and Junior up here. Yep, like you were saying a second ago, they pretty much went full Ultra Instinct, which you could also look just as powered up with that winter merch. You have literally no time left. We are not kidding. You have, what, I think one or two days left? Less, than, less than a day, one day. I think, about. One, one, well, yeah, less than a day. Whenever we are done tomorrow, do not miss out for Hala.com slash winter merch to get access to the exclusive hoodies as well as that blanket. Do not be the one to miss out on that. They both look phenomenal, and it is, once again, a limited time. Yeah, you want to pick up both of those objects. Of course, the Winter Championship Pack also still available. And there's all sorts of merch. You can actually pick up this if you go over to Brahalla.com slash merch. There's always good stuff. And there's that Winter Championship Pack. I was talking about, you get those blasters. Um, also, uh, there's something else, probably. I don't know. Follow us, <laughs> tag us, whatever. You know the drill. Duke X Fam, Ajax HQ. 
Yes, and also hashtag BH Esports to let us know what you thought about today and also to let us know what your predictions will be for tomorrow because remember, we are not done. We have North America coming out tomorrow and tomorrow's going to be interesting because not only do we have the very different meta of North America where they're pretty much kind of, I believe you said, firm in their ways earlier today, but also a surprise return of another classic team. Yo, you get, you get ahead of the pre-show. You, you're you're hey. sad you didn't get to be on the pre-show. No, I wasn't even going to talk to Toast about that. I wasn't going to say the names tell, of it. We got a third chair. I wasn't going to say the names of it. Tell Toast. You can be on the pre-show. You know, I'm just I, saying. I you, like, you got stuff I, you want to say? I, it's I, fine. I could be. I do have to be awake early enough for that tomorrow because I'm on first. <laughs> so that could be a thing. We'll find out because we got the return of the Kings tomorrow. Boomy and Sandstorm. Make sure you get ready for it. It is time for us to leave for tonight. We will be back tomorrow with the North American Winter Championships. You will have a beautiful rest of your night. Oh, are you kind of refusing to fall right now? And that oh! is just going to be kind of with the interrupt. You know, it's this type of playstyle right here that we're seeing uh -oh. kind of with that combo right there and side switching off the double deal. Cena manages to get past all of that as long as he's putting a lot of damage out. And kind of depends on him to make a mistake directly above him like that, but that wasn't enough. Seedling's just a little too high and the potential from West, but Power does find that slap down. Here's a team combo. Ensign bounce. But Jin Roar got caught jumping there. Wes, that's the stock. Dodge away, coming to inside air, waiting it out. Recovery! Meanwhile, Power is just, he's controlling the side of the stage. So One v2 opportunity here. Can they take out West? No, the GC down sick. West did take a lot of damage. No, so big Hit that ground pound, and now West and Power are in perfect position to close this out. A lot of movement there. Oh no! Oh no! no. Missing all of the shots. He needs to get something going. Weapon Talk stops him, but it doesn't fit in our situation amongst themselves. Kind of, Laura's hitting kind of, but nothing really matters because kind of answers right back. And that should be another yeah. one. That free time it is impressive. Kind of showing everybody this is why you were supposed to pick Cross here too. And currently, they have West sitting on his last stock already. That early game. Oh, uh, for sure, avoiding the, the, the avoiding everything except for the there. And now, I don't want to get in the middle of that. As Power is taking a lot of damage. It's reset on the soft. Now has to do the 1v2. He has to try to keep the team alive, but it won't matter. It won't matter as the team combo comes out. Kaida and Lauren 